enemy lines be deleted. Competitive Halo has a legacy, a golden era, so impactful that it shaped our gaming industry and esports as we know it. Today, over a decade later, Halo is back again, and with it, a whole new era in competition. If you're new to Halo esports, you might be wondering what's so special about it. What makes Halo unique? What makes it stand out as a competitive shooter today? You know what? That's a damn good question. Let's break it down. In competitive Halo, two teams of four face off in arena combat. Balance and skill is everything in competition, and Halo achieves this with what we call even starts. Every player enters the fight with the same equipment, a battle rifle in hand and two grenades. The foundation of Halo's multiplayer experience is the combat. In Halo, we call this the dance. It's a short but calculated exchange where players use skillful movement and gunplay to break through their opponent's shields and land a finishing blow. Your shields are your lifeline in Halo. They deplete when taking damage and recharge when evading gunfire. Breaking your opponent's shields takes several well-placed shots. As long as you hit the target, it doesn't matter where those bullets land. The moment you break the shields is the ultimate test of precision. Land a headshot for an instant kill. With a battle rifle, three bursts to the body and one to the head results in a perfect four-shot kill. And trust me, pull this off and it's pretty damn satisfying and with shields and in position to get into the base and then pick that flag and throw it out the front. Oh, lovely shots from APG. Defeating your opponent puts them on a 10 second respawn. This advantage is important, especially if you take down the whole team at once. With your opponents off the map, your team has time to control important positions and power weapons. And this is the true key to winning in Halo. Power weapons spawn in contested locations throughout the map and teams need to work together to earn and control them. Your classic fan favorites like the Rockets and the Sniper are back in action, alongside new weapons as well. My personal favorites are the Mangler and the Shock Rifle. In the right hands, these weapons, they're kind of deadly. So look at this, Cloud9 looking to mount up a comeback here in round two, and it would be a statement from them if they were able to close it out. Oh my word, Lucid! Not only the first one, but the second as well onto Stellar. Penguin, do not peek! No. Lucid! And that's not all. New to Halo Esports is equipment. Limited use items that spawn in specific locations on the map, and this has a drastic effect on the game. The grapple can be used to make quick map rotations, escapes, or to take you right into the fight. You can also use it to pull things towards you. Just don't forget to say, get over here, when you do it. Or the Repulsor, the ultimate defensive tool. Time it right and return projectiles back to sender. You can jump with it too for a devastating angle of attack and let's just say that's not all it's good for. And now Ola, maybe thinking about a play ball, maybe <gasps> thinking about sending someone for a swim, it's a play ball. All of these elements, the even start, shield system, combat, the sandbox, they all come together to create this balanced competitive experience that requires teamwork, strategy, practice, creativity. The result is the ultimate form of skill expression, and it's just exciting to witness. And that, to be honest, is just a fraction of what makes Halo so great. So, welcome back to Halo, and good luck in the arena.
The HCS is presented by Astro Gaming, AMD, and the Marines. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Halo Championship Series North American Pro Series. And welcome to week number four. It's going to be the last one for quite a while, so strap in. We're going to have one hell of a ride today on Halo Infinite. I hope you guys are ready for it. My name is Lottie Van Prague, and I'm going to be hosting today. But I do have three of my very good friends joining me, as per usual, on the desk. I have Bravo, Onset, and Clutch. Fellas, first of all, I'm a very lucky woman to have all of you joining every single week. I love watching Halo Infinite with you guys and watching the best in the business do what they do. And with that being said, Bravo, first of all, you know, I understand you've been to Hawaii. You had to have that reset from all that intense Halo Infinite action did, you've been yeah. watching. How was it? It was great. I tell you what, double the temperature uh, back in Seattle. So uh, absolutely been fantastic. But that said, we also had some fantastic results week after week. C9, of course, on top and largely a race for second place. And what's exciting is the fact that we have really that same point total. Only about 3,000 points separating those teams around the second, third and fourth spots. So this week, number four, definitely going to determine seeds for Anaheim, without a doubt. It really will. And with that being said, I love the change of temperature you've had, Bravo. But on set, there's going to be a change of temp, hopefully for some of the seeds. Who is turning up the heat today? It's going to be a very, very interesting day. We have the Cloud9 story, right? Well, they can potentially sweep the entirety of the Pro Series back to back to back to back. That is a ridiculous run if they manage to get that done. But then, like Andy mentioned, you've got a race for second seed as well. You've also got Sentinels in the mix. And if they can bump themselves up some seeds, and that's going to be huge as well, because, of course, whoever finishes in eight seed is going to be in the same pool as Cloud9 in Anaheim. So there's so much to play for for these teams today. It's going to be a very, very fun day to watch. It is indeed. And Clutch, I always come to you with Cloud9 questions. And my biggest question right now is Cloud9, they are so far ahead in terms of points. They have obviously been extremely dominant. Surely these lads right now would be having a, a bowl of popcorn, watching all the action and not really participating. But no, they're here right now and they're in it to win it. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly surprised that they didn't take the angle to just kick back on the couch and watch the, the Pro Series go down on this big 70 inch screen, right? But. Cloud9, I think they do want to make a statement here today. I do think they want to sweep this Pro Series with four straight wins, making it a fifth with the additional of Raleigh. And, and just go into Anaheim with the ultimate confidence and honestly putting teams with the ultimate fear that they are still the team to beat. Right, and obviously this is all leading up to our NA Regional. This is where it all counts. We do have Anaheim coming up in a few weeks. We have 16 teams participating and all the teams will start in pool play. So seeding is where it is at. Now we do have our champ bracket coming out of pool play as well. And eight teams actually qualify from Raleigh. That is right, we have eight teams qualifying there and our eight teams also from online in our open bracket as well at the end of this month, which is actually basically this weekend. So I'm really excited to see who those other eight teams are going to be but we do have of course our point system as well now with our points there's a couple things to note here and a few storylines there is a couple of races happening race for second seed is actually underway right now and bravo we have a pack who are also in that race uh, phase optic and eu what do you think the chances are here for each of them yeah, what's really cool is the fact we came into week number one of Pro Series saying these three teams right now are really the three they're going to be fighting for. Who is that second spot coming off of Raleigh? And it's pretty cool to see the fact that that is still the case. And these teams are separated by only about less than 3,000 points between them. So FaZe Optic and United, their performance here is actually going to determine who gets the seed in Anaheim. And I'd have to say, based off of what we've seen with teams like swapping in, swapping out, I'd say any of those three, without a doubt, could take not only second place, but maybe even give Cloud9 a run for their money in week number four as well. Indeed. Now, of course, we do have another little race happening at the bottom. That is, of course, for that seventh seed. Now, Onset, talk to me about this, because why is seventh seed so important if you're at the bottom of the pack? Why don't you want to be in that eighth seed position? It's like I mentioned a little bit earlier, right? If you're in the eighth seed, then you play Cloud9 in pools. And most teams are going to want to potentially avoid that because C9, not only pretty good online at the moment, but they're even better when you get to that live event environment. So uh, avoiding that eighth seed is going to be huge. I think Sentinels as well will want to do uh, something today just to kind of find a little bit of form ahead of Anaheim where they say themselves that that's where their season's going to start. 
It is indeed. Now, we need to talk about teams to watch out for here because obviously we have the races happening, but we also have a team who are pretty relaxed right now. They're obviously going to give it their all today. Uh, they want that victory, but it is Cloud9. Now, looking at Cloud9 Clutch, obviously they are just way ahead of the curve here. They're not just three-piecing, but they're really creating that super enormous you know, point gap that is really unreachable at this position. So talk to me about this roster. Why are they so damn dominant? What are they doing that others just make them so far out of their reach? I think it starts with their mentality. I think when you think of, when I think of Cloud9, I think of the most confident players we have in the game as of today. And their play style follows suit. You can see it in their aggressiveness and the way that they dominate the map, they pressure teams immediately off spawn. It's because they're so confident, not only in themselves, but as a unit, as, as an absolute team, to have trust in your teammates that they're going to make plays, they're going to create openings for you. And these players are some of the best in the game. So when they get those openings with the mentality that they have and the teamwork that they have, I mean, you're only gonna see the results that they've had. And that's a current 4P. I think it's difficult to judge anyone outside of Cloud9 at the moment. They're kind of on a, a platform of their own, it seems. And the thing that always sort of stands out to me looking at this Cloud9 roster has always been that thing, right? Online versus offline. Offline, we've known they've been brilliant, but the fact they're playing so well online is, is even more impressive for me. It is indeed. Now, obviously, a matchup that we've seen quite a few times this Pro Series where Optic have taken second place is, of course, Cloud9 versus Optic. And talking of the green wall, Bravo, you know, they really started their season on a high note here. They were really the C9 at the beginning. They were first seed heading into Raleigh. And after a bit of a wobble, of course, at LAN and the start of the Pro Series, they've had back-to-back -back second places. They're really trending in the right direction now. But what is the next step for this team, do you think, in their gameplay to get back to beating C9 like they did in the first part of the season? Yeah, I think Optic Gaming is, is right now back on form. You might notice there, they have more online wins than Cloud9. That tells you just how dominant they were in the opening months of Halo Infinite. And if you're, uh, you know, back coming back to Halo for the first time in January, it might be really surprising to see numbers like that. But Optic really was on top. I think they're back in form after some travel weeks before and after Raleigh. I think they're now ready to strike. I think it's going to come down to uh, mentality a little bit, like Clutch said. Just the fact they need to be confident in their game. This is some of the best players in the world as well. They need to be confident not only in their game, but maybe look at a few specific game types as well how they match up against other teams and there's no reason to think that we couldn't seek uh, optic in the finals once again and maybe even giving cloud nine a run not only here in week four but also in anaheim yeah for sure and i think we all know we've seen it happen that this formula does work and i think that's the biggest thing going for optic right now the formula does work they have had success at the start of the season it's about now building upon that success and trying to be a better team than some of the others catching up now looking at another matchup here we have also had a rivalry formed and that is, that is of course, Sentinels versus Optic. We do have a matchup record for these two teams. They've had this rivalry on and off the sticks. You've probably seen on the timeline as well. Now, on set, looking at Sentinels on this side of things here, you know, I've actually had a direct quote from the team. Obviously, they've had a bit of a shaky season, but they've actually said, our season starts in Anaheim. On set, what do you make of that? It's a statement, isn't it, from Sentinels. Royal 2 will be back with this lineup. And a shout out to Formal, who you can see in your pictures right now. He did everything that he could for the team back in Raleigh and really did propel them to some upsets, you would have to say, over the likes of Optic Gaming, given the circumstances that they had to go through. So there's a couple of things to look at here. One, this is an opportunity for Formal to put himself back in the shop window, right? For other teams who might be looking around thinking, hey, who do we need to pick up to improve and really put ourselves on the map as we head forward in the Halo Championship Series? But also, for Sentinels today, they've got to get that seeding spot as well. I'm sure they will want to avoid Cloud9. I'm sure that they want to get to Anaheim and put in the best run they can with Royal 2 back on the squad. So once Royal 2 is, uh, is back free again and back on this roster, I think they are going to be one of the teams who we're going to be talking about for quite some time. I think they will indeed. But I'm excited to see how they do perform at LAN and also today in the Pro Series as well. Now, another team that I really want to talk about here is FaZe. They're obviously in that running for the second seed. I don't think anything other than second seed at this point is going to be good enough for this squad and they've been consistent with placing right but gameplay isn't necessarily that consistent you know they struggled a little at raleigh but they did get third which is a fantastic result but it's the same with the pro series you know highest placement is second but last week they went game five with g2 which was a little bit unexpected clutch where does this team's consistency lie right now you know are they piecing it together in the right way so that they improve and don't hit a wall I think you said it best, Vlad. I think when you talk about this team's placing so far, they've been solidly consistent. But like you said, I still think their their gameplay can can it can build so 
much for them. I think that they're still finding their identity as a roster. And when they find that identity and they get comfortable together and they start clicking, I think this phase roster will be able to compete for championships, even against the likes of Cloud9. I do think that they're still working out the kinks and you're going to see that the ebbs and flows of series going the distance against teams that maybe they shouldn't go the series or the distance against, but they're also going to create upsets. And I cannot wait for that first time this phase roster creates that upset against Cloud9. I think it's coming. I'm not sure if it'll be today, but this phase roster is getting better and better and we can expect that to happen throughout this season. It, it definitely is. And I think it, in terms of growth, this roster has just been absolutely amazing. And I think some of the better parts of, of potentially going to those close games to unexpected opponents is a learning. You learn from your mistakes and hopefully they're going to be getting better and better. Now, talking about a matchup with FaZe, we have E United on the end of this one. We saw this kind of matchup in Raleigh to try and get that second position there against Cloud9 in that grand final. Now, with this matchup here, obviously, Bravo, E United, you know, this is such a tough roster to talk about at the moment because they're not going to be happy with four seed going into Anaheim and I think they honestly consider themselves as that second seed team overall but the question is can they cement a better seed at this opportunity here in this pro series you know going into Anaheim what do you think this team need to do here? Yeah, I think they need to just continue to play their game. I think you put it perfectly. I think they're not looking at the seeds right now. And without a doubt, they are among the teams that would consider themselves in that number two seed. The points difference is close enough where they're certainly thinking of themselves, not only as a team that can be in the second seed, but a team that is deserving of the second seed. And I think as we've seen from them, we've heard from them in interviews, they're not even going to be happy with the second seed. This week, they want to put up an even better fight if they can, not only against the opponents we've been talking about, but Cloud9 as well. E United's a roster, I think, where, where we certainly have not seen, uh, you know, the last of they're they're a team that as we'd heard from them so many times they have their eyes set on first place they certainly do uh, and i think honestly i love this kind of pack right now that are really racing for that second seed position because it makes the pro series extra exciting today so i'm really excited to see exactly what unfolds but before we get into the pro series i want to quickly show up a, a few stats here because we actually do have our map records this season so far and on set looking at this overall right now you can obviously see the dominance of cloud nine but notably the dominance that optic gaming also have here in their map count talk to me about about these numbers and what it tells you it's interesting isn't it when you when you highlight those two teams and their performance so far this season optic obviously had a very dominating start and that probably contributes to their that the record that you can see in front of you cloud nine is the is the outstanding one though right 62 and 26 absolutely ridiculous i mean online offline it doesn't matter for cloud nine at the moment everyone else kind of even across the board but i think uh, what it says to optic is that they have the ability to beat every single team that is on that lineup including cloud nine and i think Optic are going to be looking at today as an opportunity to beat Cloud9. If they can do so, not only does it kind of, you know, give them the confidence they need to think going into, into Anaheim that we can beat Cloud9 when it gets to the big stage and, and under the big lights, it means that everybody who's on that list can beat Cloud9 because that puts us in the best position, right? Everyone playing against each other, all splitting maps. And I think Optic has a big say in what's going to happen as far as co team confidence and how they think they're going to be able to perform uh, come the event in just a few weeks' time. This is the temperature shift I am talking about, Mark. This is what I love to hear. Now, on another kind of uh, side of things here, Clutch, is FaZe. I think a lot of viewers uh, might be a little bit confused about their stats here because obviously it's heavily in favor of them losing maps. You know, wh why is this? You know, wh what does this tell you about FaZe right now? Yeah, I think this is the journey that FaZe has been on. And, and this record shows to me that the success that FaZe has had recently Looking at a 38 and 48 record, you would think there's no way FaZe has been able to have quote unquote success, right? They have a negative 10 record. No, recently they've been able to create, create upsets. They've been able to win close series and they've been making the difference in their gameplay. Obviously they, when it was early in Halo Infinite, they struggled it seemed and they didn't have the placings that they probably wanted. But ever since they've been able to turn this ship around, get on the right path, they started to win series more often. And that's why they're building towards a more even record as we look on that as we look at the stats here in a month or so i expect phase to have a, a dominant winning record compared to the record that we just saw on screen it'll definitely be nice to switch those numbers around just a little bit and reshuffle that for phase and definitely the way that they've been playing recently that's kind of the story that it's telling right so we need to talk about though the top eight teams potentially from the qualifier this weekend now if you guys didn't actually qualify in raleigh don't worry listen up very closely we do have our anaheim qualifier happening this weekend of course and our top eight teams will be set out of this qualifier as well so you can actually register right now as well go to that link on the screen and you could 
hopefully be on your way to California too. So really, really exciting course. We're having 16 teams in total in Anaheim. This is how it works, of course, as well. We have the top eight teams already qualified from Raleigh. They're not going to be participating in this open qualifier so they are already there they're already sealed the deal so you guys actually do have a chance to battle out yourselves and place top eight as well to head on over to california as well it's a one day qualifier so make sure you bring your a game that's all i can say now of course we do have our na pro series that is exactly why we're here we're here for week number four i'm really excited to see how this is going to be actually transitioning into all of our seeding of course because we are here for the seeding we're here to see who's going to end up where in pool play and and which which team's honestly going to be falling short in that 8C position as well. Uh, but if you want to know how the format works for the Pro Series, I do have one very capable young man who's going to explain it for you. Bro, please, go on, give me a break. Yeah, it's exciting. Like you said, it's really a battle for the seeds this week in week number four. I think Onset put it best. This is the last stop before Anaheim. This is your last test. Of course, we're going to have some scrims and such, but this really will be our last battleground ahead of Anaheim. You've already got those top eight teams that are already set, all of them playing here today. And really, it's going to be a choice of which teams are able to just leapfrog each other just a bit to maybe sneak into a better pool, maybe get a better seed heading into Anaheim. And uh, 16 teams total, double elimination bracket today, of course. It is indeed. I enjoyed that break. Thank you so much, Bravo. I really needed that that breath. Uh, but I'll tell you what, though, something that's really exciting, of course, like you said, is the seeding. And we will be updating you guys throughout the broadcast of where people are at and what it kind of means going into some of these matchups as well. Now, let's take a look at the bracket, because if uh, if you're new to the Pro Series, we've actually had quite a few series happening uh, behind the scenes. It's already been started today, and we're going to be ending up in our semi-finals on your screen very shortly. But as you can see, our quarterfinals have happened. Cloud9, two one against space station that for me is a little bit oh okay hold on a second maybe the boys do have the popcorn out and they are kind of chilled out uh because obviously space station taking a map here i think is a little bit of a shock to some people however they end up in the semi-finals with e united who take down pioneers opti gaming push sentinels down into the elimination bracket they find themselves with phase who did take g2 esports two to zero let's check out the elimination bracket though to see what's happening in our safety net here in the hcs we do have our elimination round three underway currently g2 versus Sentinels, they managed to beat Fnatic, knocking them out of the tournament so far. Xset and Space Station. I've got to say, Space Station right now, they're on the come up. I think uh, Ace getting in that oxygen chamber has done something for Space Station today. They've taken a map of Cloud9. They beat Oxygen, obviously Oxygen. Again, whatever you want to say, air chamber. The pun is there somewhere. Uh, but incredible stuff out of SSG. I'm really excited to see how they're going to do against Xset as well. Now, gentlemen, next up, the one that's going to be on our screens is going to be Optic versus phase that is going to be our winners semi-finals and this again of course is that fight for second seed so there's a lot in this one a little bit of a rivalry here bravo what do you make of this matchup i mean this is this is what we came for right those two winner semis are the exact teams that we've been talking about all january long and as we said earlier it's pretty fantastic that here we are in week number four and the answers are still not here of which team is the best which team is right now giving cloud nine the biggest run and i think these winner semis are going to be fantastic and, and what what a better series than optic phase to start things off with yeah i think uh, i think both of these teams have a, a lot to kind of play for here especially against one another who are in pretty much the same position uh, but these points are going to be super super important i cannot wait to get into this winner's semi-finals your na pro series starts right now Here we go. It's the winner semifinals. We got Optic and Phase, and I feel like every single time, no matter what game these two orgs are playing, this is always a lights out matchup. Bravo. I mean, it's only a best of three. It's going to be decided very quickly, but these two teams, I mean, they're starting to create a rivalry against each other with how often they're starting to match up. They are, and it's great to see. I think these are two teams we absolutely want to see in this type of a highly contested rivalry. As you said, Optic and Phase, the Green Wall versus Phase Clan, 
uh, a long storied rivalry across many, many games, shooters certainly included, and it's great to see just how tight these teams have been. As a reminder, FaZe right now narrowly has that second seed overall in the Halo Championship Series. Optic Gaming not very far behind in third place. So really it is a battle of the points here and whichever team is able to take this, you have to think is going to be a little bit heavily favored to advance through the winner's bracket, but we got to take a look at the game types as well. Yeah, as we take a look at the map layout for this best of three, it's going to be Live Fire Stronghold starting game one. We know Optic Gaming has that dominant record on Live Fire. They have started to lose individual maps there, however, so maybe not as strong as the undefeated record that they started Halo Infinite with. And then you're going immediately into a recharge slayer. So game one, Andy, I mean, how important is it to win that objective especially if your phase able to take down optic potentially in game one i was going to say the same thing i mean phase absolutely needs to take this game number one uh it's too risky as you just saw i mean the space station by taking the slayer from cloud nine it's too risky to drop that game number one especially when you're talking about live fire against optic it'd be, it'd be too easy for optic to just 2-0 in that case so if phase is able to steal this game number one it's gonna be a pretty big deal for them yeah absolutely i mean it'd be a not to the confidence of optic and i think that that's a very important thing because when this optic team is starting to heat up when they gain their confidence we've seen the damage they can do we've seen the records that they can go on it's very important for optic fans that the green wall start this one off hot and they couldn't be happier to see that live fire strongholds to start this series out because this match could very well determine who gets that second see we preface that in the show opening, but I cannot tell you how important it is to get that second seed and to go into Anaheim confident that your team can compete with Cloud9. You want a shot at them later on today, but you have to go through phase first. And this phase plan has gotten better and better every single Pro series we've watched. Will that be the same case today, do you think? Yeah, that's the question. I mean, we should specifically talk about that game number one. Number one. We already know Optic has 100% win rate, 4-0 and recently on Live Fire Strongholds. Phase though, struggling. In Live Fire Stronghold specifically, they're two and five, 29% win rate there for them. So gonna keep a very close eye on that. But here's their all up matchup record as well in terms of these two teams battling it out. 4-0, favor of Optic Gaming. A lot of those results, of course, coming earlier on in the lifespan, but still just look at the Raleigh maps, the online maps, Optic certainly in terms of these two teams and their specific history has the upper hand. I think a lot of these matchups are gonna come pre-Raleigh, if not at Raleigh, right? So if you're yeah. FaZe and you've had the incremental uh improvements that you have over time since then i think that you're looking at these stats and saying maybe they're a little misleading for mm -hmm. the current time in this current matchup right but gameplay speaks louder than words and gameplay and current games are going to speak louder than the history of these two teams i think phase clan are right are going to have a justified right in this series i do not think that we can say that this matchup is as dominant as i would think that a 4-0 matchup would would be but that's the path that's gonna have to be determined by the players, right? If Lucid yeah. comes out hot here in this series, it could be over quick. Yeah, certainly a little bit of a historical bias in those numbers for sure, I agree. And I think anyone who's seen uh, Halo Infinite since uh, early days in January have seen a very different FaZe Clan. It's a team that we talked about coming off of. I think, first of all, in Raleigh, there was a lot of questions about FaZe, right? Is this roster ready? They've picked up some X factors, and you know, especially in the likes of Bound. What is this roster gonna look like? I think Raleigh, they answered a lot of questions about that. And through January, as we talked about, they have continued to be on the strongest trajectory out of any team that's coming out of the early days of Halo Infinite. They are still not only the most feared team, but it's earned them also right now, narrowly the second seed. So I think right now they have a lot to prove in this series as well. And uh, I think the one question for me, when you look at this specific matchup is, do the likes of Snipe Down and Bound, do they have what it takes to shut down Lucid and Trippy? We continue to see games where Lucid and Trippy or Lucid and or Trippy are going off are oftentimes the games that Optic win. So I'm gonna be keeping an eye on those two players and specifically if FaZe can shut them down once again. I like that you pointed that out because I'm on the other side. I'm looking at Bound and Snipe Down and how they're going to yeah. perform in this series because Trippy and Lucid, you're right. They do typically main slave for this Optic Gaming roster. When you're looking at the other side, Falcated has had an unbelievable start to his Halo Infinite career, playing yeah. lights out. Booba Dubu can pick it up. I believe in his abilities as a great support player, but it really is Snipe Down. I've been asking myself, when are we going to see that tournament where Snipe Down takes over? When is Snipe Down going to hit that mode on a weekend where we mm. just get to like we get to be in awe of what he's capable of because every single halo snipe down provides one of those weekends pretty pretty often i i think and he's had a, a not so quiet infinite career but it's he just hasn't had those moments that were like yes yeah, snipe down's here to play so i'm very excited for another opportunity to get the 
get the screen on his point of view and see what he's capable of because I mean, when he does it at the highest level, I mean, it's going to be so difficult for anyone to try and compete against him. But then you're talking about Bound as well, and that duo really has the potential to compete with even the best of Cloud9 when they're heating up. I'm with you. I, I think quiet is actually an okay and it's appropriate term to talk about Snipedown's gameplay so far, and I think Snipedown himself might even agree. I mean, you and I have known Eric a long time. Snipedown has had a comparatively quiet start to Halo Infinite when you look at his success in past Halo titles, his success in Apex as well. I mean, the guy can fry, he doesn't miss, he puts up insane numbers. I don't think we've seen anywhere near the best from Snipedown, and his skill ceiling in this game is, is certainly way higher than we've seen so far. So I'm excited to see when we're finally going to see Snipedown unleashed, because I don't think we've seen it yet. Yeah, I think there's a difference between saying like he's playing bad and like snipe down plays great, but then there's like snipe down mode. Yeah. And we're all waiting for snipe down mode to take place. Could be this series. And I honestly think FaZe needs snipe down mode if they want to take this whole pro series today. And we may just get it because I've been paying attention to snipe down in his stream, been watching him in scrims, and he's been getting better and better and better. And for snipe down to begin, continue to get better at this age, at this point in his career, I mean, that's just a testament to the hard work he puts in and the talent of an individual as he is. Yeah, absolutely. And he, really also the veteran leader on this team, right? The team, I think, yeah. you, you look at Boo Boo Falcated and Bound, uh, especially with uh, Boo Boo and Falcated, lots of Halo success on main stages for those two players. They know what they're doing. Bound, of course, uh, new to, to land environments, but he's been stepping up in a big way. But all of that true, Snipedown really is the veteran leader on this team. So not only I think our FaZe fans looking for Snipedown to step it up in the stats department too, but also I think he needs to make sure that he's keeping everyone's heads on the same page, keeping them cool. They've done so well to stay composed through some rougher patches earlier on in Halo Infinite. And I think a lot of that is testament to how much, you know, experience you do have on that side. But I'm looking to snipe down. I mean, if you look at what he's able to do, his in-game comms and past Halo titles, the way was he was able to IGL and Apex as well. The guy knows what he's doing in-game. He knows how to compete. And I think the more he brings to that, excuse me, the more he brings of that to this team, the better you will see FaZe do this season for sure. I also think he sets a tone with his gameplay specifically, right? When he's going off, everyone notices it right it's yeah. it's night down in the kill feed over and over and over again and when you see that as in your team when i see my teammate going off and his name popping up continuously like on a killing frenzy like that makes me more confident that gets right. me hyped that makes me play better and for snipe down to be able to lead with this play that's going to be a key to phases victories going into this series as we're waiting for this game to get unleashed though we have to talk about the two players, honestly, we haven't referenced yet, and that's APG and Pistola. And we want to talk about veterans. We want to talk about people that can do it all. APG and Pistola really impressed me in our last pro series. I mean, Pistola has really started to find his edge in Halo Infinite. Talk to me about the uniqueness of Pistola's play style and then what it means for this Optic roster for him and APG to find their foot and, and create the space for Lucid and Trippin. Yeah, I think they've been two of the most consistent players without a doubt for sure. And as we also take a look at the game types, as a reminder, Slayer Recharge and CTF Bazaar are going to be games two and three. We'll talk about the stats of those uh, in a moment, but just to get back to your, your point, Clutch, uh, I think Ola and APG have been really the consistent rocks of that Optic roster. And I think it's, it's, it, the same can be said. I think we're seeing great stuff out of APG. I think in the first few weeks APG of, of Halo Infinite, APG was finding his footing in the game. And I think now he's certainly found that and he's considered putting up great numbers. He's doing great objective work all around play from APG. With the case of Ola, Ola is very similar to Snipedown, right? Where you see great plays from these guys. Very rarely do you see bad games from a player like Ola or a player like Snipedown. However, the opportunity for them to go off the, 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 at any moment, really, they can put up huge numbers. And I still think the same thing is for Ola. I got to talk to Ola on the phone a little bit ago, post Raleigh and into Pro Series about how they're feeling so much better. They feel like they're back on form. As I said, they had just some busy weeks with holiday travel and things like that that got in the way of some scrim schedules. But Ola, I think, is a player who we also have not seen the best Halo Infinite from. And I mean, in terms of right Ola mode, and just like you said about Snipe Down, Pistola has been playing great, but I think Pistola is a player who can pop off as well. But about to get here, into this game number one. We'll have to see what it has in store. It's going to be Optic Gaming versus FaZe. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're kicking today's Pro Series off. It's the ACS Pro Series 4. We have the winner's semifinals match. We have Optic Gaming, the Green Wall versus FaZe Clan. Going down game one, live fire, strongholds. And already, 
getting to hop on board with one of my favorite players of all time i got your pistol and making his way outside the green and it doesn't look like phase wants anything to do with this b stronghold started off and that's going to allow pistola and company to transfer this over in their favor oh wow that plasma oh, yeah. actually takes him down he he can't repulse it b does get acquired but what a nade from that apg does find the snipe however lands a body shot can he land a second yes he can APG showing you he can snipe with the best of them too. And those kills are gonna allow Optic Gaming to get early control. Wow, what a start from Optic here. You see very, very quick rush over to B. APG stays alive from that nade, uh, but look at the kills in the category already, right? Six kills already for Optic to two on FaZe. You saw a lot of players and even more just dropping on the side of FaZe. We didn't get to see it because we were just taking a look at B, but a lot of kills already on the board for the side of Optic. They continue to rack up those kills and very good control from them off the rip, but a big push coming in here. Yeah, I want everybody to pay attention to APG's, APG's positioning there. He picked up the snipe on sandbags, ran all the way back to bridge so he could watch both B and C. Now that he's been able to help control B, he made his way over to C, understanding that he had to rotate over here, finding himself with both Snipe and Heat Wave, a wise decision to back down, stay alive, reposition back tower. And look at APG's positioning wow. so far throughout this lifespan, still yet to die in this game. APG on a four kill spree, but most importantly, the three assists not missing a bullet so far with the Snipe, I think. And with that, Optic Gaming already out to a 60-point lead. Huge lead, huge start for Optic. APG not done yet as well. Goes horizontal for the killing spree. Still the only player not to die so far. That'll be oh. five kills in a row. Finds a Mangler, though, from Falcated. Falcated will win that trade. He's going to grab the wave and the sniper. But what a start here in both the slaying and the scoring department for Optic Gaming. What a bit of a blunder in positioning there from APG when you have that B stronghold. He wanted to make a play. Nice Oof. shot from Falcated on screen. Drops the snipe, picks out the Mangler, drops the Mangler, finds himself a double, trying to compete for this second camo coming up. And the last player brought the gaming is going to be Trippy. Trippy shuts him down and denies that camo from going over. So even though Falcated did such a good job finding those first two kills, the opening wasn't enough for FaZe to find the camo control and trippy doing it all right now after helping his team secure camo is trying to convert a but he's getting pressured off falcated off his spawn falcated with that big 1v1 win gets the reset apg tries to get there with camo but he's a little too slow and now he's got to start to recapture this and this is a difficult decision for him because he finds himself by himself in a stronghold with camo that's typically not what you want to do interesting back and forth there already such early tug of war you saw a trip cap coming in for phase and that brings the game just like that within within 30 points instead of it being a 70 point lead for optic gaming however even with falcated winning that battle back a apg with that camo wave push make sure to regain control for optic so they will continue scoring here 78 38. Great job by APG here to find himself a kill, stay alive, make sure he doesn't overextend, and still has the snipe in hand, still landing body shots. The damage that he has been able to accomplish here early on in this game is outstanding. He needs to play his life in this situation, re-challenges that angle, but with confidence. You can see yeah. how confident APG is playing when he's no shield. Even he has the confidence to knock these players down. Trip cap for Optic once again. C's being contested, but APG right away, take a look at that. Just pre-aiming on Ness Bridge, knowing where those spawns are coming in, knowing Snipe Down would be there. Also knowing when the only one player alive, just collapsing on B. Great stuff here for Optic, and they really extend their lead even further oh. now. As they hit 115, the shots on Boo Boo out of APG will control A and maintain control. Triple cap again for Optic Gaming. I mean, when APG catches fire, he brings your team so much opportunity. And right now we're seeing him win every one-on-one and land every shot with snipe rotate perfect play his position and his life perfect and this is what optic gaming need if optic gaming want to win this tournament it's going to be on the back of everyone stepping up and apg leading by example here with his gameplay already starting to catch fire 140 to 40 right now phase find themselves down 100 points do have control of a and b Falcate is going to try and help his team get back into this game denying this a stronghold from being pushed from optic gaming but you want to see falcated reposition because right now it looks like optic has their eyes set on b great numbers out of everyone on the optic gaming side let's see what lucy can do the wave all shots in the spread connecting it's not every day that you see a heat wave connect every single shot in the burst from that distance to pick up the kill immediately it's gonna be another reset optic will begin scoring once again but look at this 11 and 4 from lucid 10 and 7 from chippy apg is still 10 and 3 in this game big numbers from the side of optic they will control a once again but nope it's gonna be snipe down that flies in and gets the reset there that's a massive kill from snipe down to get the heat wave 
out of Lucid's hands to get the reset on it to keep control. And now look, ABC, it's all in control of phase. It's a total control. Snipe down knows exactly where Optic Gaming is spawning. He's looking to press these spawners with this heat wave. Knows APG's under under tower no shield able to find that kill able to help bound get a trade there as well he needs to stay alive here however lucid coming off spawn able to have that opportunity to take down snipe down but fortunately for phase clan fans booba dubu in a position to deny c from being transferred and right now phase is doing a phenomenal job of getting right back in this game that trip cap has now only put them down by 30 points and now phase have some momentum to work with yeah, gotta be careful here. Of course, two players dead momentarily for face. So Boo Boo knows with this top mid control, he needs to try to stay alive going down early. Gonna repulsor jump back up. Heat wave comes back out, but doesn't find anyone right away. So he's gonna have to retreat. But like you said, this game far from over. Almost hits the second one. Trippy though, another double kill on the feed. Not the first time we've seen that. So he's gonna take the repulsor ride up top middle himself to try to get up top. But it will be Optic continuing to score here as they get to 171. Uh, that was a massive kill from Falcator right there. If he doesn't take down Trippy and Trippy actually gets that kill in exchange, it would have been all four dead for phase it would have been total control going back into optics favor phase did not just climb back in this game wow. to give up total control a nice repulsor heat wave shot from falcaden and he's showing you why he's one of the best young players in the game that we have right now down 50 points falcaden knows that the game has a lot of responsibility in his hands for his team unfortunately he gets double teamed taken down with that heat wave and apg with the snipe in hand again we've seen the first time around what he can do but the second time it's denied phase do a great job of making sure apg doesn't dominate for the rest of this game they get the snipe out of his hands but Dubu tries to repulse her up but finds a lucid in his sights and unfortunately this is an absolutely phenomenal play the jump the finesse booba dooba with the movement the double kill going back tower does lucid no yes he does finally gets taken down but not without doing a ton of damage over at sea Man, you just see how different Halo Infinite looks here already in January. If you think back to November, you were not seeing those trick jumps from bottom pillars. You were not seeing all the repulsor jumps and players just try to challenge back C in unique and different ways here. This game's still not over yet. B still being contested. We'll finally go to the way of Optic, so there'll be 191 to 142 still back and forth here. It'll be interesting to see how Optic plays this, right? APG stuck in between a rock and a hard place now, knowing that C is being lost in phases manner. APG maybe should have gone A there, but tries to decide to compete for A for C. Unfortunately, snipe down gonna get the better of him there. Ola knows that there's a player around him. Unfortunately for that player, Trippy spots him out, takes him down, and Ola able to transfer over C back into Optics' favor now, scoring points up over 50, 198 and counting, 149 for FaZe Clan. And FaZe Clan starting to run out of time here in game one. Need to make a play and need to do it fast. Optic showing their winning record and, and why they maintain control not only of this game, but also historically have been so successful on this map and game just really in the driver's seat for the entire game. Got to still talk about APG 17 and nine right now. We started the game off with his POV and he has not slowed down at all. Trippy trying his best to stay alive. Actually does stay alive. The cavalry, it's arrived. APG helps Trippy win that one-on-one, -on -one, turns it into a 1v2. And because of that, they're rewarded with this camo. A very smart play for Optic, knowing that they have a lead to play with. They go for camo as a unit. And because of it, FaZe actually split. Had to go for B control. Had to try and compete for camo. Three go down for FaZe. In the meantime, though, an Optic look to push these spawners they're going to be over at tower oh bound's boy. not going to see trippy at all and unfortunately bound gets immediately removed from the fight snipe down now has to play his life but unfortunately you're seeing on the screen multiple members of optic pressuring c getting the reset and now 225 and climbing Opto optic look to close game one it's a big camo play there. As you said, Bound coming off of the tower. Maybe could have waited for teammates there. Thought he had the ability to drop down on C. Does not expect the camo there. So just like that, 15 points away is Optic from taking game number one, keeping the undefeated record in Strongholds on Live Fire. Okay, these three kills for FaZe could be massive. They just had three dead for Optic Gaming. They're able to get C. A great play by Pistola. Who better than Pistola to be just hiding like a rat back B. Able to find Snipe Down. Able to get him to no shield. Needs to figure out a way to find that kill. Somehow APG or Ola and Snipe Down both live in that situation, but both are immediately taken down. Lucid, the cleanup crew, they've arrived. You know who's going to get the sways. He finds a double. And now Trippy and Bound and probably the most important fight right now bound Ooh. chooses to stay alive i actually love that by him yeah he says it's a 1v1 no it's not i know i have teammates coming great comms great teamwork out of phase bound plays his life around the box doesn't even have to shoot his gun they get the kill and now phase in control and have no room for error from here on out but they do have control for now 
Oh my! Bound heating up, hits one, hits the body, and taps it for the double as well. Not done just yet. Losing C for just a second. They will need that reset. A will go the other way, so they're not scoring just yet, but... My gosh, what a play for Bound if he can win this one as well. Now all eyes on B for the moment. All it takes is missing one shot, and you're going to lose a fight against APG, especially how well he's playing right now. And Bound losing that fight could have been big, but right now, look, total control for FaZe. They're climbing 222 with three caps. You're seeing C, B converted in the hands of Optum, but Trippy with this camo, making a brilliant play to let that player pass him back. Bound once again lacking the camo eyes he needs to spot Trippy out. And because of it, Trippy able to find that kill, but unfortunately, That's the trip cap is still in place. 248. FaZe are climbing. They take game one. FaZe out of nowhere are able to hold the trip cap and push that and not only that but they take Optic down on wide fire stronghold something no one has been able to do in tournament play so far and FaZe are now up 1-0 in a best of three to push themselves to the winners finals against Optic Game. What a comeback 250 to 239 I believe the score was something like 220 to 140 and the trip cap you saw what bound had to do from nest bridge players are spawning dummies they both come up to see he hits the headshot in the first bodies the other one finishes it gets a double at c that paves the way for the trip cap they also get the resets on b and they also sweep through off screen a to start that trip cap taking a look at the stats here what a comeback it is from the side of phase giving optic their first ever loss on strongholds recharge there i'm honestly Excuse me, strongholds live fire I'm honestly a little confused right now. Like, Trippy, after you get that kill on bound top middle, you're, you're still being trip capped. You have to get into a stronghold as soon as possible. And his decision to drop down bottom middle is is a losing play. Like, you you have to figure out a way to get into C or into A and, and stop the bleeding. At least stop that scoreline from dripping in that trip cap manner. And unfortunately, I'm not sure if the awareness level was there that the game was about to end and, and it looked like it was going to be optic gaming the entire time. But FaZe out of nowhere, like you said, with a hundred point comeback, absolutely unbelievable by them. But you have to think if you're optic gaming, maybe you were playing a little bit like too assured that you had more time. Absolutely. And in the end, I think FaZe knew every single piece of the puzzle that they had to pull out in order to win it and what they had to do. Heatwave, such a big part of that game. You saw it time and time again, hitting different in this game and absolutely connecting and really creating huge openings in the game. And like you said, I mean, just look at the board right now. Just Optic outslaying heavily. This was a big play here for Boo Boo just to keep the game within reason. And keep in mind right here, you're at 180 to 140. Still a sizable lead. And as we said, lots of trick jumps, lots of repulsor jumps all around back seat. But look at this play here from Trippy on bound. This should have been all she wrote. Look at the scoreboard. It's 220 to 165. Yeah, no. Watch this play Here's the play, Trippy. Though. He gets the kill, sees that his teammates are over in C. I guess he expects his teammates to be able to finish that last player and knows that he maybe has time to go make a play somewhere else. But assuming... We'll get you killed is what's something I learned as an officer back in the day. And they're assuming we'll get you the loss in game one. And unfortunately for Optic Gaming fans, they now find themselves behind in this best of three. And looking at a recharge layer to turn things around, it's a best of, it's a first to 50 kill race. And you got to be at the start if you want to even try and think about getting to a bizarre CTF. And as we said, Stronghold's live fire for Optic Gaming, 4-0, 100% oh, win rate. Not what we expected to see. And to be honest, 80% of that game was all Optic all the way. FaZe somehow squeaking out the last 20%, but with the trip cap. And that will put the points on the board. As a reminder, they were 2-5 and five on that game type. But somehow, it's plays like what we saw from Bound on the Nest to hit doubles like that, to really open the game up, could be the difference maker. Now, we head to Slayer on recharge, and this could be the opportunity for FaZe to send Optic to the elimination bracket, bracket, excuse me, if they win here, they will 2-0 and they will advance on. Yeah, remember what's at stake as we go into this game too. These two teams are competing for that second seed going into Anaheim. This series would be a massive opportunity to get a leg up on the other to try and determine that second spot compared to a third or a fourth seed going in. And Optic Gaming do not want to lose this series. I promise you that. So we're going to have to see them pick it up. And who better to start on? Then Lucid right now is he tries to make his way to be able to combat this camo player. I do believe they were able to make them burn camo for a second, but Optic Gaming look to control the map. Trades going across Lucid with a nice two shot melee and the player jumping up. And already Optic Gaming up on a one kill lead, but Snipe Down making his way to the shock rifle could spell danger for Optic Gaming.
could be disaster indeed. The question for me for Optic for this game is how do they not only slow things down and get back in control, but also maintain that driver's seat? Because they were winning the entirety of game number one and they crumble in the end, allowing a trip cap to extend to a huge comeback for the side mm. of phase. So the question for Optic as APG tries to go bat ledge, but gets punished there by the cat ears of bound. We saw how how effective, how efficient Optic Gaming were able to be with those camos in game one. A phenomenal job this time around. Bound looks to have his camo glasses on. He's able to find that kill on the APG. Remove that from the map, and that's a massive kill from Oof. Bound. This shock rifle doing work from Snipe Down's point of view. Unfortunately, the sword beats the shock rifle up close, and Trippy doing it all with the sandbox right now. Shock rifle sword in hand, able to find that double kill. Trying to spot spawners over towards the elevator. Does know the Snipe Down's down there. Can't quite get the reticle placement to find that kill, but a great job and a position here from Trippy to give his team not only a four kill lead, but to run away with it as Ola finds one in the feed as well. Interesting positioning here from Optic. You don't see typically players yeah. multiple push through this doorway. It's a very dangerous, easily nadable spot. Boobadoo is going to slide right in. Forgot about Sword. Boobadoo did, and Trippy finds that easy kill. Kills do get traded out, and I like this for phase because when optic is in control of the power ups or the power weapons like that you think that they're going to extend their lead if phase is able to trade a couple kills out maybe switch hands of some of these power weapons they can find themselves right back in this shows you just how important timing is we did take a look at the clock and be watching bottom mid as well but moments prior to that optic did have two players on pipes and the second the second player leaves pipes is when phase makes that push to top yellow to take down the sword player so good coordination good timing there from phase however they still find themselves down by five make that six here they can look at the stats already. Lucid with seven kills, three deaths to his name, but who better than to step up a stick from Lucid even makes it an eight. A phenomenal nade over here as we hop on board with him. He's gonna have the Mangler in hand. And we've seen what kind of work Lucid can do with this Mangler. He just needs to close the gap, not necessarily a long range gun, but Lucid can hit shots from just about anywhere on the map. I love this play by him. Spot sniped on dropping out the window. Wisely doesn't shoot though. Doesn't give his position away immediately, but forced to shoot at this point because Boobadoobo has spotted him out. Now he's looking for snipe down all around. Does get away with his life. And look at that. The awareness to look back at his teammates' top goal to find yep. that kill is phenomenal. Back down Falcated, who has that shock rifle in the pipes. And Lucid not only gets kills, but gets so much information to his team. Like knowing now that Optic Gaming have to deal with Falcated with this shock rifle in pipes, they're going to be much more aware of the angles Falcated is going to be looking to snipe them from. And now Optic Gaming are going to have to formulate some kind of strategy to push. And it could be off the opening kill right here from APG. Make it a double with Sword, baby. APG getting a few kills is going to create so much space. And now they spot Falcated. They want to get the snipe out of his hands immediately. Just like that, it's a nine kill lead for Optic. And I was just about to say, Optic, based off of what happened in game number one and how much experience you have on this team, they are not going to be content with a five kill lead in the Slayer. They're going to keep their foot on the gas through the whole game and make sure they do not let the end of the game crumble like they did in that game number one. Still a 10 point lead, Lucid. Amazing plays off these last few exchanges. Take a look how he moves into control with that Mangler. Commands everything from control. Forces Snipe down out bottom middle. Like you said, helps on the top yellow angle. Then shifts over to A. Really running this map right now still a nine kill lead yeah it's such a great job by him to get this damage over towards control able to help his team get one kill boobadoobo should go down as well multiple members of optic looking for him unfortunately the nade doesn't come through for lucid but they do secure camo and it's all off the back of that anchor position from top goal apg was able to back some players down create some space bottom middle for lucid to sneak in get that camo successfully and now Camo Grappler Mangler, I feel like we're in due for a highlight reel right now because Lucid has everything to work with in his hands. No more grapples, but trying to sniff out these players from phase and they're doing a good job of spreading out and not being easily located. Right now, Optic Gaming playing for information. Not quite sure where these players are, but that's gonna Oof. do it. The Mangler one shot, Booba Dubu gets taken down, ripped immediately and the opening for Lucid to push in is here. Unfortunately, doesn't check his corners and Snipedown gonna get the first couple shots. Snipedown with a massive kill, sniffs out the flank and Camo eliminated off the map. It ran out. Snipedown gets a Mangler out of Lucid's hands and FaZe, even though they're down 11, that kill could be the pivotal. Oh, Boo Boo just trying to peek and gets punished for the peek. APG though will die up top control as well, but just like that, 38-28, this is the home stretch for Optic Gaming. We haven't seen every kill on screen, but certainly a huge run from them, and it looks a little bit too similar to game number one. They know they need to close this one out strong. It is an 11 kill lead, but they're gonna need to get the kills on the board to make sure that they close out strong to send us to a game number three. Lucid 14 and six, 
Trippy 13 and 8 right now. Yeah, this 11 kill lead looks pretty solid right now for Optic Gaming. They want to take this series the distance, push it to a game three. Bizarre CTF, it's one of their best maps as well. Phase, unfortunately, haven't had too much success in this Slayer as of yet. Snipe down, trying to figure out a way to not have to trade kills because Optic Gaming so far throughout this game has put themselves in such good positions to trade out. The great teamwork of three people being in long haul is going to help them secure yet another kill. And now only eight kills needed for Optic Gaming to close the door on this Slayer. You're seeing so much control come out of them. Pool? The sword player, the first swipe, it doesn't connect, but snipe down wisely gets the second one. Great job by him to take down Trippy. And if FaZe can slow this game down with these power weapons, snipe down to bring his team right back into it. But Lucid has other things in mind. The disruptor oh damage is so strong. They spot snipe down out, they take him down. And even though you're seeing Lucid get taken down. It's such a priority to make sure Snipe Down gets taken down when he's in that position. A triple kill from Bound gets them steps closer to tying this game up, but unfortunately, only five kills for Optic Gaming to close the door on this game. It's going to be perfect Halo required from FaZe to come back. 37-45, not impossible, but that 46 kill might be one of the final daggers, 47, 37, only three kills to go now. So take a look at Trippy also flying into control. That'll be 48, only two more to go, Clutch. Two more to go, 48 to 39 right now. Trippy spots Falcated. Falcated is going to be taken down. The stick doesn't come through for Trippy. It looks solid. I like the idea, but unfortunately he gets removed too. And now at 49 to 40, you're gonna see Optic Gaming with every opportunity to tie this series up. They spot Boobadoobo in a very tough spot to get out of. Unfortunately, Bound gets taken down before. And with that being said, Optic Gaming get the 50th kill secured. They tied this series up. And like every Green Wall versus FaZe Clan match, we're gonna go the distance here today. We're gonna go see Bizarre CTF for game three, and it's off the back of a stellar recharge slayer from the from the boys in green. Optic Gaming knew they needed to perform in game number two after a heartbreaking loss in game number one, a game that I think they themselves would say they folded in, allowing that trip cap to come through for such a long duration in game number one, but they show up in game number two and in a very big way. It's 16 and seven from Lucid. I mean, 64% accuracy, guys shooting lights out, 16, seven and five. You asked who needs to step up for this Optic Gaming team to really reach their, their potential. And I mean, we prefaced it before the show, right? Trippy and Lucid, 17 kills, 16 kills, O and APG creating space, having great plays of their own, but it really is the slaying prowess of this dynamic duo that makes this Optic Gaming roster roll. 50 to 40, your final score, and even even felt more convincing than that throughout the entire game. It really did not feel like we saw anything from FaZe in that Slayer whatsoever after the game really hit that 25-15 mark. It was really just a walk in the park, as you see. Optic starting to get hot a little bit early, but it was really plays like this one, just able to walk right in, pick up a second as well for Trippy. Game starts to open up. Right around this point thereafter, you start to see a little bit of a gap emerge, 12 to eight, things like that. Here was a solid push from FaZe as they were able to push pipes and control, but after that, it felt like all Optic Gaming all the way. Yeah, it felt like Optic Gaming was in the driver's seat pretty much the whole game, right? And I think that that goes on the back of the sword and the shock rifle control. So often did we switch to a member of Optic Gaming and they My had God. a mangler or a sword, Boom. and they were able to just play with these situational advantages right and because of it they're able to win these one-on-ones and when you win your one-on-ones you create a numbers advantage space just so much opportunity for the rest of your team trippy and saying leading with those kills created so much of an opportunity for not only game two of this series but to stay in this series and bring your team to a game three ctf bizarre and i feel like we've seen these two teams both have very high level CTF Bizarre matches. I can't be more excited to hop into game three, and it's gonna be all about the rocket and the overshield control because so far we've seen power-ups and power weapons dictate how the pace of these games have gone so far. And once again, we're gonna see that early and often on Bizarre CTF. Absolutely, Optic right now three and three in this game type phase six and nine. So the win rate's only about 10% different between the two. And uh, what else would you expect? What else would you want to see between Optic and FaZe? They go to game number three in a game type. They're, they're essentially neck and neck in their win record here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the opening rush. All right, Luce is going to try and work his way out of this tree situation. Got Pistol with him and no better player to probably have with you. Unfortunately, you saw multiple members of FaZe make their way out of bar. And because of it, Snipedown able to secure the first overshield, find the first kill of the game 
and creates so much space for his team. You're seeing Falcated on that side of the map being able to pick up Rockets. And already, FaZe look to be aggressive in this situation. They're going to have APG coming off spawn, finding the perfect kill. Great shots from Snipe down. Starting to heat up with a double. Can he find the triple? He oh. finds the triple on the trippy. What awareness, what communication, and what shots out of Snipe down. You wondered when you were going to see Snipe down mode. This could be the game where it all clicks for Eric Rona as he runs the flag out of tree up in front of his base understands that he probably needs to slay one more time to continue to advance this flag but phase could look to take the game early with this flag run it's a little bit of ticks there on the door the first dynamo doesn't go second one does he'll continue to get the ticks also gets a flag touch there like you said a triple kill snipe down so wise to use that overshield right away don't wait in hut do not let that go down instead he uses it in those battles now he's through the double doors as well I love this. He's going to drop the flag for his teammate. He's going to turn around, try and deny this grapple from going into Trippy's hands. Does end up getting a trade. No one actually continuing to run that flag, though, and Bound. He's going to have to come back to his base. Two members of Optic are on the return. Bound slides in, gets the touch. Falcated right there with him, but the double kill comes through. And I believe it was Pistola with that double, able to stop this flag a little bit. And now just two members of FaZe trying to punch this one in. And the rest of Optic Gaming starting to collapse on them. Olaf finds a crucial kill on the snipe down. Booba -doo -boo takes the perfect route to punch that one in. FaZe take the lead, but are under heavy fire right now from Optic Gaming. Wow, and you have to wonder if Boo didn't pause the way that he did and hit the perfect little slide to get the cap. Might have been even more chaos if someone else had to get back to that flag. Tough to say with only the one POV, but if Boo doesn't hit that and he gets an overshot off the back of it, if Boo doesn't hit that, that flag might not go home. Phase though, up one to zero in our game number three. What a oh clutch flag run from all of FaZe. It took about a minute lifespan to get that flag from when it was grabbed, punched into their own, but they made it work. They made it happen. And sometimes it's not about being pretty. It's about getting the job done. FaZe getting the job done early on. And now we'll see if Optic Gaming can respond here. Trippy, he sees his flags being taken. He's got the shotgun in hand. He's going to overextend. Falcade is going to have Trippy's flag now. He's looking to score take a 2-0 lead here in this game Falcated not even getting scratched as he leaves his base but he is going to have multiple members of Optic Gaming overextending now and they're going to have to figure out a way to get control of their own base before they go up 2-0 he knows he's going to have to eventually like you said drop and shoot and he does just that opponent's still around the bar though so right now might be an opportunity to push this in especially with that help from Boo Boo as well what a back smack from Booba Doo Boo, able to get behind Lucid somehow, get that easy kill. And now it's all up to I Got Your Pistola in the bar, who wisely backs down, knowing that multiple members of FaZe are going to be focused on him. They do secure Rockets, but a 2-0 lead on Bizarre CTF this early in the game smell, spells disaster for Optic Gaming. FaZe are clicking on all cylinders, and you can bet that it's going to take Optic Gaming playing amazing halo for the rest of this match to try and get back in this one kills being traded out there are rockets and you have to think trippy certainly wanted that rocket back bounds able to win that one against him and not even fall himself and now optic has a long road ahead like you said clutch you do Ooh. not expect to see great shots great double from lucid you do not expect to see a team down by two flags this early on in a bazaar especially when you have phase with the losing record historically in this game type but right now they're leading two to zero and if these results hold, they will find themselves. Look at this, not done though. Lucid not ready to give up just yet. It's a double kill killing spree for Lucid as he puts some big numbers on the board as well. Three go down for phase, three go down for optic and it's up to Booba Dooba to try and secure this overshield. It's a trippy one-on-one. -on -one. He wins the one-on-one, -on -one, tries to get to the overshield, but bound coming off spawn also does. He gets shut down and trippy doing, or I got your pistola, I'm sorry, doing everything he can to get this overshield secured for his team. And Optic Gaming need this overshield to try and get into the base of FaZe because right now they've had a lot of struggle oh trying to push in. Unfortunately, the overshield is immediately erased. A great job by FaZe to understand the situation, get control of their plasma pistol, put it to work on the overshield player. And now I got your pistolo. Mangler in hand has no overshield to work with, but can still do heavy amounts of damage with this Mangler if he decides to push. Unfortunately, doesn't expect Eric Rona to push low. And because of it, Snipe Down finds one. Snipe Down almost finds two on the Trippy. But Trippy finally finishes that kill, pushes into the flag, and he may be able to get a flag run if he can take down Booba Doo Boo. 
Trippy able to get away, allow his shields to recharge against Boo Boo, but Boo Boo is going to be the one that flies in there at the end. And a few misplays from Malkut there. I'm surprised to see Ola push bar still when he saw that Boo Boo had the plasma pistol pointed at the bar doorway. He flies in and the overshield gets melted. Just after that, as he's thinking about pushing bar, you saw team nades are coming in as well. We need to see a little bit more communication, a little bit more coordination from the side of Optic Gaming if they want to get back in this game. It really is. It, ha it really has been Optic Gaming pushing solo, pushing into the base. Whenever FaZe is pushing in, notice how many of them are swarming in. Rocket's not coming up for another 25 seconds. Snipe down in control of Optic Gaming's bar. This is a very dangerous situation for Optic Gaming, especially when Eric Rona doesn't miss shots. He finds himself a one-on-one -on -one in an APG, finds a double kill on an unsuspecting player as well. Not only that, but Eric Rona playing objective right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Rona has shown that he can not only be the best slayer in the league, but that he can do it all. And this is his second great run of the day. I love this out of him. Ooh. The slides to close the distance, to cut the angles off. And this is going to be phase going up. <laughs> Three to zero. Optic, try to stop him, but you can't stop Eric Rona. He also hits the home plate slide all the way in after hitting both the bar stairs and tree stairs slide jumps across the way. Didn't hit those on the first flag run. And Booba will get the overshield behind the flag run. So you had pressure from Optic Gaming onto Snipe Down's cap. However, that opened up the overshield. So FaZe gets a free overshield as a result. And just like that, it's three to zero. And FaZe really making everything click in this game number three. Like you said, some great objective work from Snipe Down as well. I mean, when Snipe Down's running the flag and swaying at such a high level, I mean, you just create so much for your team. This FaZe team really is clicking here in this game three against Optic. And what a better time to do it than to solidify the second seed for your team a great kill by bound wow. unfortunately he's taken down and right now i'm looking at optic gaming who's gonna step up because right now it feels like every single situation we see them in is a very difficult one to try and deal with they're having to try and deal with the pressure that they are putting on them and right now it's just too much the grenade comes through and ola who thinks he's playing his life wisely i mean it's just a better grenade from phase and unfortunately sometimes when it rains it pours when the nades are good they're great Ola loses his life there and now Snipe down fighting for control of his base trying to deal with Trippy does look down and it's just such great awareness from all of FaZe here to finish off each other's kills unfortunately Trippy is looking for him able to take him down and now it looks like Trippy and Lucid are going to have control of FaZe's base for the first time this game let's see if they can get a flag run three dead momentarily there for the side of phase and maybe an opportunity but you have to ask yourself is there enough time on the clock Optic Gaming has let themselves dig or rather uh, find themselves dug into a hole here from the side of phase it's already three to zero four minutes on the clock and the math would suggest that they're with the way the phase is playing there's simply not enough time to bring this game back it's it requires so much perfection out of optic gaming to try and crawl back into this it's so difficult to cap flags on a map like bizarre ctf especially when all a team has to do is focus on defense look at this bound trying to push in oh I almost tried to get a back smack there but somehow bound with <laughs> has the grapple able to just cut the difference between ola getting oh that God. back smack and now look the slays come through four go down for optic gaming bound getting a few assists grabbing the flag immediately and my favorite part about every one of these flag runs andy is that FaZe have been so quick to pull these flags while they're getting kills not after but while the kills come through it limits the amount of slaying they have to do and now FaZe punch the fourth flag of the game on the board and give themselves a dominant lead here in game three. My God, I mean, and during that run, they killed three players of Optic once again. You talk about the players that are doing it all in this game type. Snipe down certainly one of them as he wins that battle in tree as well. This could be the final flag coming in. Two dead might be three in a second. Three dead. The fourth player is trippy. He's likely not in a position to get this stop. We'll have to see, but Snipe down right now, 23 and 13, bound 17 and 11. Boo Boo 20 and 12 as well. Huge numbers as they are running what could be the look, final flag. Look at this route by Boo Boo He's playing chess. He, he's the one oh that was running God. the flag, runs all the way into the enemy base, runs all the way down, up the tree. And as a perfect flank, it was Boo 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 with a killing frenzy that just was taken down finally. But damage was done. Time has been stalled and we can't reference it enough. Two minutes and 25 seconds on the clock to score four flags against a team playing this well is a monumental, is a giant mountain of a task to try and ask of Optic Gaming. And unfortunately, Optic Gaming still trying to get off their spawn and it doesn't look like Snipedown's gonna oh let that happen God. either. 
Trippy there, you think he'd win that battle with the thrust. I think Trippy thought he'd win it too from the back of the base. Snipe down wants no part of that. The man is not missing. 26 and 14, not done. Also clearing out the hut. Stepping up in a huge way now 27 and 14. These are enormous numbers from the side of FaZe completely outslaying and dismantling Optic Gaming. I mean, this is the FaZe clan you wanted to see show up today. They've been getting third. They've been getting second. Can they take it all? People are asking, well, if they can play at this level consistently, if they can put on this kind of a performance, they can compete with Cloud9. Look They've at given this up. bound, given being up. able to get the kill. Optic Gaming, they don't want any more to do with this bizarre CTF. That's it. And Bound running this flag front his base is going to take his time, but he's going to be able to punch this one in. Nobody from Optic Gaming is going to have anything to say about this fifth flag going in. And FaZe Clan are going to do it. They're going to punch their ticket to our winner's finals here in the Pro Series for today. FaZe Clan have done it they've created the upset they have taken down optic optic gaming two to one and off the back of a phenomenal performance by no one other than snipe down let's not forget they had to have a massive comeback win in game number one with a hundred point run and with a triple cap to even get here they lose game number two by a huge margin and they destroy in game number three i don't know the last time that we saw anyone stop playing around the fourth flag cap that early like we saw Optic Gaming, you saw players just holding down, running around in the corner, knowing that the game was over. Very rarely do you see that, that at this level of competitive Halo. The final stats, though a few of them padded just a bit, 29 and 14 from Sniped Out. When I saw this phase roster form, I wondered what their ceiling was going to be. I think we may have just seen a glimpse of it in that game three. That was an yeah. unbelievable, dominant performance. And if you're Optic Gaming, you got to go back to the drawing board. You got to wipe this series off the slate of your mental game because you are going into the elimination bracket now with an opportunity to still secure that second seed, but it's going to be on the back of an elimination bracket run that finds themselves probably in a rematch against FaZe later on. But, I mean, that was a dominant game, and there's a lot of things that Optic need to fix, and they have to do it quickly. Look at the objective efficiency from the side of FaZe. Even off of the opening flag, you saw Snipe Down had about a quarter overshield left, and he used it to get that first triple kill. You're now seeing another multi kill that came in as he was just dip, dodging, sliding all the way when that third flag went in. And at this point, Optic's still trying to put up a fight, but like you said, Boo Boo playing checkers with the routes that he was taking against his opponents. Even though this flag went home, the fact that he's able to just loop all the way back around and almost still get this touch against this lucid return i mean at this point in the game boo boo has 21 kills snipe down has 24 just enormous numbers i mean the biggest thing for me like i said it's it's the fact that not only was phase dominating in the slays but they were always on the flag in order to pull it as soon as the slays were coming through it wasn't like a delay like all four dead right. three seconds later someone's there right no phase prioritized being in a position when they get the slays to pull the flag, that limits the amount of times you're going to have to kill the enemy team. That means we only have to kill the enemy team one more time before we can punch this flag in, potentially. And when you're able to have that kind of a recipe, when you're able to play that kind of objective efficiency, I mean, it's it's amazing what you can do with the individual skill paired with that gameplay. They yep. show you just there what they're capable of in that game three. And we talked about it. How important was that game number one for FaZe? They needed to steal that live fire to have a chance. And you have to think, as we bring everyone back in, 250 to 239, if that doesn't happen, if that collapse doesn't happen for Optic, that's a quick 2-0 for Optic Gaming. So Lottie Nonset, pretty wild to see the results of our first series of the day. Yeah, it, it was pretty nuts, to be perfectly honest. The fact that, you know, if they had lost that, that first stronghold, they wouldn't be in this position right now. And that's kind of nutty, isn't it, coming into the Pro Series? And that's exactly what you can expect from two teams that are gunning for that second seed position. Now, you guys absolutely crushed it with the fact that, you know, FaZe had such great support from their team, knowing exactly what they want to do objectively on each of the maps. And we kind of saw that in strongholds because, honestly, without that objective efficiency, because they were so heavily outside they were outside by like 19 kills in that first map the fact that they were able to hold that triple for such a long time in order to take that first map was crazy and again with the flag pulls how clean those flag runs were as well and then being able to cap it with ease in their base as well as getting all of the kills around those flag runs absolutely amazing on set you know that kind of efficiency we're seeing from phase right now when they're clicking is that the kind of efficiency you want to see matching up against cloud nine 
that's the kind of efficiency I wanted to see from FaZe full stop. It's something I think has been missing a little bit, is that little bit of aggression, right? Recognizing numbers. Now we go, now we push the objective. That bizarre game was perfect. Like, that's the yeah. best bizarre game I've seen played yeah. full stop. Yeah. And Ever. the amount of times yeah. that we saw them, you know, pull a flag after two dead, but then immediately kill the final two players or the respawning players. And it was just unanswerable for Optic. Every single player did their job and, and absolutely perfectly. And I, I, it's a strange thing to have to say, but the only misplay I would say wasn't even Boo Boo's fault. He made an amazing play, runs through the, through the base. Unfortunately, he was denied by a box of bananas, which is something I never thought I'd say on broadcast <laughs> as a grenade was thrown yeah. down. But, you know, it was just perfect. It was genuinely perfect, bizarre capture the flag from FaZe and aggressive, which I love to see from them. Yeah, I think another really quickly a thing that they did so, so well there, especially in Bazaar, is the fact that they were able to completely deny all the power positions from Optic. I mean, according to, you know, the way that this map is played, you know, you really need to use that sandbox and those power ups before you. And the way that they're able to just totally and utterly wipe every kind of aid on that map from Optic, which we know are so good at using, uh, was absolutely, uh, absolutely incredible. So let's actually talk about our AMD power performance, though, and it's going to be your boy Bound. The guy who has had the land under his belt now, but has been doing exceptionally well in the Pro Series as well. You can see the damage dealt, my goodness, those numbers, they're hard to compete with here. I mean, Bound has been such an epic kind of, uh, you know, person to have on this roster for FaZe, and he works so, so nicely in this squad. Uh, Clutch, talk to me about FaZe and, and Bound and, and how he really works here as a team. Yeah, for those of you that don't know the household name of Bound, well, welcome to the show. Bound is going to be one of those guys this season that comes out and breaks out. We talk about the youngest players in the game, the new faces that we're going to see in Halo Infinite. And yes, he was a good Halo 5 player, but never went to a tournament. And now it seems like this is the position that Bound's been waiting for. This phase roster gives him every bit of opportunity to showcase his skill set. And it, it, he can do it all. His aggressiveness, he's known for his movement. He's known for just being in your face, playing aggressive, and just being such a nuisance. And when Bound's shot is on, he can be one of the most influential players in Halo Infinite. And that's what I think we saw a little bit of here in this game three. He's always going to be in a position to run the flag because he's always being aggressive. He's always in your face. And if you pay attention to his movement, his routes, there's something special to watch. There's a lot to learn from a player like Bound coming into the scene. There is. I honestly don't think we've seen the best of Bound yet either, which is even Absolutely. more exciting. So uh, I think Bound is just is growing with this roster, and I'm, I'm very excited to see what he has in store for us the rest of the season. Let's take a look at the brackets, though, and see exactly where things are at. Of course, we've just had our first semi-final, and as you can see, the second one has been going on behind the scenes as well. Cloud9 do take down EU United 2-1. See, there's a little bit of a trend here with Cloud9 right now. The Slayers, they're just sitting back, they're kicking back. They don't mind dropping a Slayer as long as they keep going through this winner's bracket and phase do take down optic two to one and optic will be falling down into the elimination bracket let's take a quick look as well here at our safety net e united versus sentinels is going to be the quarterfinals here sentinels take down g2 esports so that is going to be a really exciting rematch that we've seen really honestly from the beginning of the season so very very high competitive here and then optic is waiting for the winner of exit and space station gaming as well we're gonna head to a break folks i hope you've enjoyed it so far we've had one series it's been really really awesome i can't wait to see what our next one's gonna involve and it's actually gonna be our elimination quarter final we've got e united versus sentinels this is gonna be a big rematch folks and we'll catch you right after this Searching for meaning in a relentless world. 
always connected, but somehow alone, trapped by illusion. We offer another path, where the battle to belong begins. Awakened by a calling, united by the cause you fight for, no one can take away what it means to be among the few, the proud, the Marines. One thing has changed since the uh, break, for sure. And I'll talk about it in a sec, because Mazzy's about to go off, apparently. Oh, and he does! I'm Madison Madzi Stone. Uh, I've been competing for about, uh, been like 10 years now, actually. Yeah, I'm a country boy. I grew up in a little town called Thierry. Been living there for way too long. I worked in the mines for a few years, and yeah, I just came in full time. Uh, well, I first got an Xbox uh, for my fourth or fifth birthday. It was Halo 1 on the original Xbox. And yeah, just ever since I've been, I loved it. Uh, probably off the top of my head is my triple kill against Divine Mine on recharge. So I was pushing tower one and I seen a guy in front of me. I beat him in a gun battle and then I sent another player going for sword. So I shot him, he fell off the map and then one came up behind me and I outbeat him as well. So I, was, I got a triple kill. I think a, a good reasonable goal is top eight. Yeah, ANZ's never broken into the top eight, which yeah, would be incredible to just get ANZ into that top eight. And me individually, just just grinding as much as I possibly can, honing my individual skill, just uh, make sure I'm up to par. Oh, obviously nothing beats a win. Uh, it feels pretty good. Compared to a loss, it's it's more of a learning curve, you know, like what can we do better next time to get that win? Yeah, we just want to do the best we possibly can and try and put ANZ on the map. Shout out to all the ANZ community for cheering us on and supporting us, really appreciate it. Welcome back, folks. We're here for the HCS NA Pro Series. It is week number four, and we just had one of our semi-finals. And up next, we do have our elimination quarterfinals to get through. But, Clutch, before we do get into that, I want to quickly talk about another region who has been making absolute moves. Now, obviously, a lot of our regions have those dominant teams, and I'll tell you what, the Chiefs have four peated, you know, of course they have. They've been absolutely incredible, but they have four peated and they are clenching the championship title as well of four Pro Series tournaments in the ANZ region. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. And obviously before the break, you kind of saw about ANZ's Madsy as well or on the screen. But Clutch, you know, with this amount of dominance and this amount of winning power that this team have, what does it really tell you about them and, and you know, what they're doing here for ANZ? I think the Chiefs have done a really good job to put as much talent as they can for this ANZ re uh, region on one roster. And I think, led by Barcode, an incredibly individually skilled player, I think that this team has the best chance that any ANZ team has had to, to try and break into that top eight. You heard Mazzy say it in that interview. That's the goal for this team throughout this year. They want to break in. They want to solidify themselves amongst the greats from everyone else around the world. But it's easier said than done. And, and for this ANZ team, especially the Chiefs, they're gonna have a long season ahead of them. And it's all gonna be about how do they can keep up with the pace and the meta that's evolving across the world. And how do they create their own style to, to try and combat it? And right now, I mean, we saw them um, kind of fall short at Raleigh and unfortunately so, but I think it's gonna be a long season. And I think if they put their heads down, they put in the work, there is that opportunity. They have a lot of individual skill. It's just a matter of can they keep up with the, the meta shifting in the ways that it does. I only see that being a more difficult task as time goes on. So the Chiefs have their hands full and it'll be very impressive if they're able to deal with those differences. Yeah, they have been honestly playing top-notch Halo. And you guys, if you have missed all the action from any of the regions at all, you can head on over right now to Halo's YouTube channel. Click subscribe, get that noti bell on. Make sure you review all the VODs so you can have a true opinion going on to Twitter. Uh, but until until you've done that, I'm not going to take anything you say seriously. So make sure you are subscribed to the Halo YouTube channel. Uh, fellas, I'm going to bring you back in here because, of course, we are getting into our limb quarterfinals next. We've got Sentinels versus EU United. I mean, my goodness, what an absolute incredible rematch we're going to see clutch i'm bringing you back into this one one more time because we're going to be kicking back and watching all of the footage before us you know talk to me about this matchup real quick what do you make of these two teams and how they kind of uh, gel together in terms of opponents yeah i mean this is becoming a rivalry right i feel like these guys play each other every single week and it's kind of flip-flopped on who wins the series it really depends on how well both these teams are playing. I think E United, with the amount of practice and the hard work that they're putting in, they expect to find themselves going very deep into this tournament. 
if they're to lose this series, a lot of that hard work and practice might be questioned, right? It's a, it's a difficult mentality to have if, if you're putting in so much work and you're putting in so much time and then not seeing the results, that's gotta be frustrating. But United has seen results and seen a lot of time. It's really up to Sentinels um, to try and see what they can do with this last run with Formal, right? I think this is the Formal showcase that he wants to display to the, all the Halo teams out there. Hey, I'm gonna be a free agent after this and I'm playing Lights Out Halo, somebody picked me up. So he's got a lot on his plate. Sentinels, they wanna step up. They do indeed. We'll tell you what, we'll see exactly what Formal and the boys can do against E United in this run for that second seed, getting out of fourth. On set, Bravo, I'm handing over the Elim quarterfinals to you. Thank you very much, Lottie. I'm excited, Andy. I'm always okay. excited to get into our first series of the day because uh, what better way to spend your evening than watching an elimination quarterfinal with Andy and with me. I mean, E United versus Sentinels. We've been talking about it in the build-up here. A story that has to be told is obviously this is the formal goodbye tour for Sentinels with Royal 2 uh, being back on the roster officially from tomorrow. But you saw our series lineup for just a second here, Andy. We're not, we're not messing about today. We're getting straight into the action. Absolutely. Red and white on your screen here for both sides of the stage, E United versus Sentinels, but only one team decked in red and white will be able to advance on. And guess what? We're straight into game number one, Stronghold Recharge. We are indeed. We're going to start off with the point of view of King Nick from E United. Early on here, going to be Rain picking up a double kill in the feed. So a great start here for United. A couple of kills will be traded out. Frosty, last player alive for Sentinels. There's one player you don't want to leave alive, though. It's going to be that man, Frosty. Spartan manages to get the cleanup, though. Where's that camo? It's in the hands of Spartan. E United with a solid start. Both these teams are with a losing record in this game type. Uh, worth noting the fact that neither team may be with an edge in the stats quarter category, but certainly an edge in the camo shock rifle category right now for Spartan. Let's see if he can put it to use. Yeah, nobody really getting control oh, as yeah. yet. However, shots like that from Spartan might change the uh, trajectory of how this Stronghold's game will turn over. A little jump into the Stronghold just to kind of tease Sentinels here. But you can still see that B hasn't been completely converted. Spartan trying to play his life. Frosty going to challenge him, though. A couple of kills fall either side. Rain should be able to get the conversion on B here. It will be E United scoring early. Not only B and C in their control, but it's a triple cap here for EU. I like how Spartan plays that. Just gets all the damage he needed to. Like you said, just teasing the B stronghold just a little bit to bait a bunch of nades, bait a bunch of angles. And in the end, they still get two dead again off of this trip cap. Losing C, but they might even be able to get this reset. Ooh. If not, though, it's fine because still two dead again. And a little bit of good spawn on cycling coming in from E United. Yeah, that was a pixel away from being turned over to Sentinels there. Just to put a bandage on the wound that has been opened by E United at the start of things here. Still a triple cap in their favor. Frosty has gone down, so a snake bite. So a 4v2 on the map here. E United will be able to hold this triple cap for quite some time here, Andy. This is uh, devastating. Already 70 to 2 here. This is not how you wanted to start if you are Sentinels. You heard Lottie mention that some Sentinels players saying that really Anaheim is where our season starts. Well, Ooh. it's a double kill killing spree for Rain. His game has certainly started. Triple kill actually will be the final one that comes out of that medal there from the other side. Two dead still for Sentinels. But man, if you're on the side of Sentinels, you need to figure out a way. Grapple the camo up. No, Nick actually with a little bit of a mistake there. The grapple does not connect on the camo. So we'll keep an eye on that bottom middle. Yeah, this is uh, Nick's POV. This is not onset POV, just so you know. <laughs> As we do see him being taken down. No, Frosty down again in the feed the sentinels at least managing to get control of b here they're trying to fight for b but you can see there's already pressure on them snake bite doesn't want any part of rain at the moment who's shooting so so well at the moment the reset comes in as well lethal's gonna be one shot and there's gonna be rain picking up yet another kill rain with a fantastic start here nine and three for the man they call rain yeah, look at the numbers on the side of E United and kills already, right? And Sentinels is just uh, essentially letting this game slip away. It's already halfway done. 125 to 9 in favor of E United. I'm not going to lie, based on the movement that we just saw from Snakebite and Whirlpool, it felt like maybe even though we saw Snakebite trying to back out there, I'm not sure if Sentinels is ready to play right now in this series. It's a huge scoreline in favor of E United. Well, Lethal is going to be patrolling the gold pipes here, and this is the first time that we've managed to see them get four dead from E United. So that should be control of at least one stronghold being turned over. Formal has that sword as well. He's playing Protector back of C. And now you can see Sentinels will be scoring. They have B. They have C. The pressure onto A as well. The triple cap has been flipped here. And it will be Sentinels who have complete control of the map. There we go. And I'm very happy to stand corrected there as we see things swing around. The question will be how long can they hold this B already going in the way of Ryan Noob, who's nerding just like that at B. He will finish that. So the trip cap will end, but not before Sentinels get 60 points on the board. C should be turned over here to E United as well. That's a big kill from Ryan Oop. Making sure that Snakebite can't stay alive and contest the 
Approach on to C. Frosty going to make a play here onto Pipes. You can see Rain is going to be there as well. Lethal cleaning up that kill that he starts. So Frosty going to have to play this one nice and slowly. Maybe work with the teammate here to try and get the conversion onto B. There is Rain, though. He's going to be playing around that battery. This is an important 1v1. And you can see some shaky shots coming in from Frosty. Something that we're not used to seeing their former last player alive. Yeah, three dead, just like you said. And you, know, you have to think, of course, that's still an online battle. Maybe a little bit different in terms of Frosty's POV on land. But regardless, it's a win for Rain and a big one. Like you said, that's going to be another confidence booster. They're going to continue scoring. 157 to 62, still a 100-point lead. Camo and Shock Rifle in the hands of Ryan Oob as well. He's going to make sure that he's patrolling around B at the moment. He's going to have great angles here onto C. Lethal has to be careful. Gets a little bit of a shock to the back of the head, but... Not going to be connecting every single burst of the shock rifle to take him down immediately. My God. That one does, though, as he takes down Frosty. That's perfect. A stake bite is now maybe going to be the next one to challenge Formal. Oh, he manages to win a big fight against Spartan there, who had that sword, but Ryan Eve still with control of this weapon. And look at the score, Andy. It's about to cross 190 here for E United. As a play is going to be made on B here. They bait out two players. Good work from Sentinels to shut things down and turn over B. Yeah, right now, actually, they might even get a trip for just a second. They're going to looks like they're going to lose A in the end, but they'll still get BC. So Sentinels not out of it just yet. They're down by 120. So it'll be we're, well, we'll look at this grapple coming in from Snakebite. An absolutely beautiful angle to try to go bottom A. He gets taken down, but not over just yet. Still an enormous lead for E United. But if there's one team that you don't count out, it's Sentinels. Oh, that's such a big win. That's such a big win from Ryan Eve there. If he doesn't get that kill, then it might be a bit of a shaky situation where Sentinels have extreme numbers on the map and they had control of B and C. Uh, but now they have, sorry, excuse me, they could have controlled A and B. But getting that kill means that now B and C are turned over to E United. Nick with the double kill in the feed as well. It's going to mean that Rain has complete control of pipes once more. Former with a nice back smack. But again, Sentinels just consistently down numbers in the fights at the moment. E United are doing a great job of pinning them inside of these spawns. What a strange outlier. Look at the kills category right now for E United. They're absolutely popping off. And then you've got essentially everyone around the 5, 7, and 6 kill mark on Sentinels. But Formal's on a killing spree. And to be honest, it doesn't add up. You have to wonder a little bit of lack of coordination from the side of Sentinels. If you have a player like Formal on a killing spree, but you're about to lose this game 250 to 75, it really just doesn't add up. That was four dead for Sentinels as well. I have to agree with you. Something isn't clicking here for Sentinels. Sword certainly isn't going to help things. The snake bite will win the 1v1, which at least will elongate this game and keep them in control of C for now. Now the play is on B by the looks of things coming in here from Sentinels. Rhinoob has that shot grenade. He's also got lots of angles oh. to work with, but just at the right time, Frosty is there to get the kill. Even though he managed to pick up one, Frosty still manages to jump in and convert B. So now it's about these next slaves, Andy. That is the Ryan Noob way. Your bat ledge, you don't want to peek all the way over. The second you do that, you're going to die. You're going to get melted from so many angles. He just throws the perfect nade off of batteries to pick up that kill and get damage on the way down. Sentinel scoring, though, but look at it. 11 points to go for E United. All it will take is one more swing for this game to be over. We need to see quite a run from Sentinels if they want to win this game. Yeah, they can't afford to make one mistake here, Sentinels. Otherwise, they'll be down one in the series in this best of three. Frosty's looking to get a little bit aggressive here, but no! Oh, you don't want to poke too far because there's a sneaky spot and hiding in the corner. Gets the back smack. Gets control of the shock rifle as well. And even though A and B are still in the control of Sentinels, the Spartan finds himself down. That's last Dude, player alive here for E United. Oh, he can make plays like this still. Oh, boy. Hits that one. He was too dead. That's a huge kill. Still, though, going to be a trip cap. In just a moment, in favor of Sentinels. This one's not over now. 239 to 124. It's already been about a 50-point run for the side of Sentinels. They're managing to pick up the kills, though, and they managed to pick up B Ooh, AB, and though. A here. So a big turnover and kills a spun. Ain't missing too many shots with the shock rifle at the moment. That's game. And that is going to be game. Like you say, 250, Mark gets cross. E United get that first game on the board. Spartan staying alive there. Huge for them to get back into that game. Huge, a little bit of victory crouching at the end there, celebrating. He's happy with that. But also, if you look at those last few kills, everyone pushed C on Spartan, and Spartan kills the entire side. And then cap AB off he the back of him. Beautiful stuff there from Spartan. Yeah, he just handled him. He said, all right, cool. And it all comes from that one play that he made inside of bottom control. Patience, waiting for that little bit of overextension from Frosty. I like the play from Frosty as well. Trying to get a few angles onto those players on C. Trying to see if he can pick up one headshot or maybe just cause a little bit of disruption. But it was Spartan with that play who then got the shot rifle in his hands that really did turn the final moments of that game. But it wasn't just that moment, Andy. You have to say that that is a well-deserved victory there for E-United. 
Yeah, 18 and 10 from Rain, but like you say, the whole team deserves a huge bunch of credit for the way they played that. And I think we just saw uh, them catch Sentinels completely off guard. That was not the form you expect to see Sentinels in, and I don't think any of the players on that squad are too happy with that. But if you look at the United, very happy with how that game went. Off the opening. Frosty picked up a couple of kills here and almost managed to get that camo in his hands. But the amount of times that we saw the collapse coming in from United, it was just, a, again, a cohesion thing. I think that really stood out for me a few times, as well as the fact that Spartan wasn't missing too many shots when he had the shock rifle in his hands. I'm just making sure they were able to collapse on those spawns and stagger those spawns. It was yeah. so impressive coming in from uh, E United. It was something that Sentinels, when they had control, struggled to try and replicate. I mean, they just, it felt like, if you look right now, if you, it felt like two and three dead on the side, and there's four dead for a moment, on the side of Sentinels for almost the entire the first few minutes of the game. Just like you say, perfect spawn cycling coming in from E United. You'll see a little bit of crouching here from Spartan. He's happy with that one. And they're going to take that game very, very easily. And then, to be honest, Steph, I think you're, if you're E United, you expected a bigger fight from Sentinels. And as we said, Sentinels is their last week playing with this roster. You have to think maybe they aren't 100% in it. We'll have to see what they're going to bring in game number two, Bizarre Slayer, because if they don't step up, this could be over very, very quickly. Yeah, it could be over in the first few moments of this game as well. We know how important the op opening strategy is on Bizarre Slayer. You don't get those weapons and power-ups in your hands. You can find yourself not just down by four, you can find yourself down by 10, 11, 12 kills as mid-map control is completely swarmed by the team who does manage to get it. But there's always ways back into this game, Andy. As big a deficit as you might find yourself at, Bizarre is the comeback map here on Slayer. You can turn around a 20-point deficit in kills if you get control of power weapons and power-ups in mid-map. So it's never over until it's over as we see the opening break between the two teams. Winning record here for the side of E United. It's a 0-3 record on Bizarre Slayer for Sentinels which does not spell a good result in terms of what we saw after game number one. We'll have to see if they could turn that around, even kills off the break. Frosty's going to pick up one, though, and he has the rockets or had the rockets, and he's going to exchange it out for another piece of the sandbox, and that's going to be the bulldog in his hand. So a couple of deaths here for E United, and Frosty decided, hey, I'm going to chill down here with the rats. I'm going to do my best rat impression before I take to the skies now with the grapple. Doesn't quite manage to hit it, and that might cost him. If he hits that grapple, and it could be very, very different, but has another one to work with. While all this is going down, United have picked up a couple of kills. They're up six to three. Yeah, luckily for him, had an extra grapple in the pocket, so he gets into the bar through the back door, which is a fine way to get in as well. And like you said, United, all, the, all during this, though, picking up kills, and Frosty knows that he needs to be a little bit more a part of these engagements if he wants to make sure that the kills are not going the way of United. Finally, he'll drop down pillars and, and help out a bit. Nice double kill, and they answer back to keep the game within two. I am trapped inside of the hut there for me united as well king nick he's a very important player to try and take out however here's a grapple here's a bulldog and there's oh it's a thrust you have to be careful here frosty he manages to survive for now but good teamwork again from e united not only taking him down but making sure it was only a one for one yeah and then that grapple bulldog player didn't get into some kind of rhythm there we know how it could be devastating to be able to grapple around the map with that short range weapon i was gonna say the same thing maybe a few pixels over and that player thrusting back in bar maybe hits a ninja could have added an insult to injury there, but it's still e United with a very strong start here. A five kill lead on Bazaar Slayer. Nothing to uh, discount, right? A a every little kill here on this map is going to make be a difference maker and allow you to move just a little bit. Spartan gets caught off by that spawn, though, so it'll stay within three. Couple of kills falling in the way of Sentinels, though. That's three dead for e United, and it's around the power up time when they're coming up. So there's Formal going to put in that one into his chest. However, there's a green gun. That's the end of the overshield. Well played, Sentinels. Almost equally as well, though. E United managing to negate that power up. As now Rain moves in, and that's a unfortunate run of events there for Sentinels. They did everything right to get control, but the one thing you can't control is getting that green gun in your hands. How often have we seen over the, just even today in the past two weeks, more players are getting their overshields melted by the plasma pistol and you have to be ready it's always a player poking in bar or hut or somewhere around tree with that plasma pistol and just melting the overshield so frosty just playing the slow and they want to make sure this game doesn't get out of hand the second that a bizarre slayer gets out of hand you give way too much room way too much cushion to your opponents to start running the game so good for the side of sentinels to keep this game now within two kills now one kill 15 14. snake bite picks up two though oh look at those shots from rain he is shooting so so clean today timothy tinkler also oh, showing a little bit of tech as well as he manages to do his best mission impossible there as he uh greases himself up and flies through the vents but formal now manages to get the rockets away it's 17 all between the two teams almost as you say does his best tom cruise to fly through the vent and get away 
fully oiled, but doesn't get away with it. So just like that, 17 and set to 17 tie game. And uh, Sentinel's not going down without a fight here. They had a slower start on this game type, but they have bounced back. Game is tied. Formal with two rockets in hand. I know what Formal can do with the rockets. And see if he can turn it into kills. Last time he was in this position, he had an overshield and it didn't go too well for him. However, he's trying to be a little bit more sneaky. Not going to connect though onto Spartan initially. He does manage to move in and finish off the damage. There's a double and there's the opening as well for Sentinels. Two dead for E United. Nick flying forward though at Snakebite, but the kill traded out by Lethal. So the lead now just by one, but it is in the favor of Sentinels. Yeah, Sentinels is right back in this. You have to hope for even, even better rocket efficiency from Formal there. If he hits the first rocket, it's a very different series of engagements. Maybe he's even still alive in the bar at this point, but still Frosty doing some huge things. Almost comes around for the triple. Should be teammate Snakebite to clean that up. So now a three kill lead for Sentinels. Staying alive in this series. They thought the Bulldog might trade. It doesn't. Two kill game. Formal trying to be aggressive as well. He's on the flank. There's two players for me. United here tries to relocate that reticle, but here is Lethal. He knows there's numerous players alive. Is he going to play his life? Is he going to pick up kills? It's going to be a one-for-one -one trade here. 24 to 23. Still just one kill between the two teams as we approach the halfway mark. Yeah, this one is neck and neck. Very, very different from our game number one. And if you had any questions about if Sentinels is ready to play or not in this series, they've certainly answered it in this game number two. Down by about five kills earlier on, which is not easy to come back from in a Bizarre Slayer, but they've done just that. <laughs> Finally, though, it takes a bunch of brute grenades and dynamo nades. You will not stay alive in that hut no matter what. He finally goes down. Three dead for both sides momentarily. It was a frag grenade. It was a brute grenade. And then finally, just like the icing on the cake here. Yeah, you know dynamo. what? Just, just throw a dynamo at you as well. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little bit sorry to be honest for you, uh, with you about uh, finding yourself in that death screen from that kind of way. But it's not just the sandbox of weapons. It's also the grenades. We've seen every single example you could want there from Sentinels. But still, just a narrow lead for them. Ryan Oob trying to work with his teammates. You can see a lot of players clumping up here from E United on the rocket side. Former with the opening. But look at this. They're waiting to pounce here. E United. Two players fall from Sentinels. Two fall from E United, though. But there's Rain going to be taken down by Frosty as the Bulldog starts to bark. 31-27 now. Like you say, that Bulldog coming out. A big shot, so it feels like Mangler from up top based off of the damage. Gonna be Ryan Noob that's nerding out as you expect him to do. And he actually, he had a Bulldog in his back pocket as well. So that was a Bulldog versus Bulldog. He felt like those shots were hitting pretty hard from up top if you were taking a look at how much damage was coming down. And Ryan Noob also tried to sneak away. This time he's actually gonna sit there where the Bulldog tries to wait and bait. Won't get the kill though, so it's a two kill game now. Yeah, Halo Infinite is a horror game as Formal jumps <laughs> out into the pipes. Frosty now with some grenades. Overshield in the hands of it. United, though. Frosty's going to try and slide away here. Manage to pick up the brute grenades on his way through as well. Ryan him trying to move with a teammate. But look at these shots coming in. Rain decides to move away from that kill to prioritize the power weapon. And even though Sentinels have a two kill advantage, Rain once again showing that the, uh, the lubrication is still there from the previous attempt that he made as well. Absolutely. Luckily, that's still in effect. And now the rocket's also going to be in effect on the Ooh. double door. And that little grapple across the vent is becoming more and more important because teams really aren't expecting it, as you see on screen. And just like that, it is E United who steals the lead for the first time in quite some time right now. If this holds, potentially could 2 0 Sentinels. And it all comes back from that one play a few moments ago, deciding not to push that kill, which was pretty much a guaranteed kill, to be honest, when you have the overshield and the player down in the sewers and trying to prioritize the fact that rockets are on the map. I need to get rockets in my hand. And now look at what it has done for E United. The game's still incredibly close between the two teams, but without that play, you wouldn't see it maybe quite as close. United knows they need to end this series in two games. They're only up by one now. United does not want to go to a game three with a team like Sentinels, a team that's able to turn it on at any given moment. Here you see Formal flying across the map as well, trying to give his team some opportunities, some angles, still just a one kill game. Some angler in his hands as well. Snakebite going to be in a 1v1, but Formal was there to help. Lethal picks up another kill. Formal going to be grappling up into the bar as well, and Sentinels now find themselves with a one kill lead with just... 10 kills to go. The question is, Andy, the overshield's coming up. Who's in best position here? It looks like Sentinels have mid-map control, but whoever wins this next fight, it could be massive. It could be game deciding. Love that from Formal. Quadruple checking the back of the base. You do not want one spawner to be alive in the back of the base, in the back of the tree. That would spell disaster. Now they know exactly where every single opponent is. Here we go. Overshield about just popped. 41-40. Formal's gone down. 
Snakebite has managed to wait for those dynamo grenades though, and you can see he's trying to block things off, but there's a Mango player bot middle. What a push this is from E United. Rain tries to escape. Lethal not gonna let it happen as Ryan who now tries to finish off Frosty. Can't quite manage to do so. Spartan though. In the feed again with a kill on to Formal and Frosty comes back to maybe make Raidu pay a little bit here as he's just playing around this grapple, trying to see if he can pick it up. And yes, he will be able to. Yeah, waits for the grapple there. He look, it felt like Raidu even turned away from Frosty, thinking he was going to get the kill. We've all been there. Doesn't come in right away, so actually Frosty's going to stay alive bottom middle, but Ryan Noob will have min-map control long enough to get the grapple. Just like that, still a one-kill game. Frosty picks up one, Formal. Oh, Formal somehow or other gets that kill as well as a grenade. He's perfectly timed from another Sentinels member, and now Sentinels with just six kills to go find themselves up by one. Ryan Noob seen maybe he can get the back whack there. That's a rehearsed spot, knowing that his player model and gun model is not showing around the corner. Rockets. Right in that little corner. Keep an eye on Rocks now, 44-43 in favor of Sentinels. Rockets are up. Ryan Noob's making a flank as well. Ryan Noob would be the player to watch here. You would be imagining he's trying to make a play. Gonna be trapped down in the sewers though, and that should maybe be Rocket Control going into there the hands of... No, no, no! It's gonna be a trade. As we see one body kind of freaking out. 45 to 45 now between the two teams. I think the Sentinels managed to get the rockets in their hand. I think it might have been Snakebite who has them. He does. Two rockets to play with. Sentinels have the power up and power weapon control. Checking all the bottom rockets here. 45 45. What a game number two between these two teams. United will pick up one though. So pressure is on here. Look at the angles from Snakebite though. 46 47 oh. now 47 47 tie game three to go still has a rocket to play with the overshield's coming up as well there's a back no, no he gets taken down but there's a teammate there to trade it out final two kills of the game spawn taken down to about a third shield pressure coming onto him as well formal trying to move in to finish off these kills rain stays alive spawn trying to cover his teammates e and i trapped in the base and i think frosty might have just moved in to pick up an overshield yes he has he picks up a kill and he picks up the win Wow. What a game two. 50 to 48. Sentinels not going down without a fight. They show up big in the second half of that game, despite being down by five or six kills off of the opening. They bounce back. They force us to a game number three with a 50 to 48 win. Oh, it was nervy. I'll tell you that. It was. It was back and forth, and Ooh. those rockets were the difference. It was the control of the rocket side of the map that Frosty managed to get just with that trade onto Ryan Oob. Meaning Snakebite could move up and get those into his hands. We'll look at the stats here. There's not too much to shout about for anyone. It was incredibly even across the board, but you have to say, Frosty at the bottom there, 15 and 10, but the double kill yeah. at the end, that was the game changer. My God, great bounce back from Sentinels, and Sentinels fans going to be so happy with what they saw at the second half of that game, and Sentinels able to really slow the game down. Like we said, down by quite a few kills early on, and slowly getting back in that prioritizing things like the rocket side of the map great bulldog control as well and it was really a battle for top rocks and bottom rockets as we take a look at some highlights from that game number two yeah it was a very very nervy game i think for everybody involved but you've just seen experience and you know what these players do in these certain situations they, it's it's fascinating to watch for me everybody making sure they make the right moves nobody panicking too much everyone just taking a breath in these situations and making sure that they don't throw away a few extra kills. Formal had a pretty good game as well. Did a pretty good job of just making sure that he was cleaning up a lot of one shots. You saw him kind of poking around corners a lot of time, making sure that kills didn't get away. Those kind of things certainly show in the statistics, but more importantly in the scoreline at the end. Frosty nine and three at this point in the game, by the way. I mean, you have to, they're, they're up by three there and he's nine and three. Huge numbers from Frosty to keep them not only in this game, but leading for quite a bit of it at the midpoint as well. Big playing with the grapple. Coming in from rain towards the end of that game as well. Spartan with a nice back smack there, but these are the moments that we talk about, right? Two rockets in the chamber here. Snakebite sees a player above him. Rain does not know he's there. And you can see Snakebite changes to the rocket. Maybe gets the call out. This player is weak. Goes for the beat down, but immediately yeah. traded out. That could have been a scary moment, but Frosty able to secure that overshield, secure the game for Sentinels. And we're tied up at 1-1 in the series. It's all red and white across the board, like we said, but those games have been split. United, game number one, a commanding 250 to 124 runaway victory, but a very different story in game number two. It's 50-48 in favor of Sentinels. And now we head to one of our favorite deciding battlegrounds. It's going to be capture the flag on Aquarius. We do indeed. A uh, map that United have had a lot of success on recently as well. It's one of their strongest maps in their, in their playbook, so to speak. 
Not very often that we see them fall. However, they did lose it last week. So maybe Sentinels can take something away from that as we're into our final game of the series. Whoever wins this stays alive in the tournament. Sentinel's gonna have to pull out something special because they have a losing record on this game type. So, ooh, boy, Spartan wins that one. A battle that you would say he shouldn't have. Three dead momentarily for Sentinels, but this is a game type that we're gonna need to see Sentinels pull out something special on. Like we said, historically not one of their best game types, but if there's ever a time to step up, that time would be now. Well, early aggression already coming in here for me. United Dynamo Grenade's gonna be in the hand of Spartan. And he uses one. There's gonna be another player in front of him as he's gonna be able to pick up that kill with the battle rifle before the Dynamo does too much damage. Snakebite gonna be sliding down. Snakebite gonna be sliding into the kill feed as well. Big kill from him. Rainu though has that camo here for E United. Trying to be sneaky behind enemy lines. Taking this slow, we'll see what he could do. Two dead momentarily, so definitely going to be an option for him to go into battle, but you don't want, as the camo player in that situation, Mark, you don't want to find the 1v2. You want to get the damage, you want to sneak, but the last thing you want to do with two dead is find the 1v2. He's able to get the kill, but that camo essentially will be neutralized. That's a win, really, for Sentinels. Certainly is. Formal going to be taken down by Nick as well. That's a double kill, which is just going to reset the map ever so slightly here. As we haven't really seen anyone being able to get any kind of map control so far. Lethal with the beatdown is going to at least secure, as I say, some numbers momentarily for Sentinels. But United answer back almost immediately as Rain listens to the communication almost perfectly as the Dynamo Grenades are up again. You can see that E United are on top of that time every single time. Wow, look at Spartan there, just sitting in this little looking crane. That's not the first time we've seen United really take advantage of the corners of that utility closet. Picking up the kills, and Nick also with a very nice win against Frosty. That'll be two dead for Sentinels yet again. Still no aggression inside of the base from either team, though. It's just been this battle around the midpoint of the map, around the courtyards. Ryan Noob now with the heat wave. Might be able to change that story, though, as he moves into the bridge. Shots onto Snakebite, and that's going to make the opening that he's looking for. Frosty's going to be weak in front of the base. He re-challenges here, Frosty, to get some damage down. Can Formal clean up this kill? The grenades will come in, but look at this movement here from Ryan Noob. So, so smart, Andy, knowing not to run that flag because the grenades were coming in. What a long run here from Ryan Noob. We'll see. I don't know. There's three dead when he challenges Frosty. He takes the time to finish the kill on Frosty in the back of the base. Two more dead. We'll see if they can keep this run going. Nick knows he needs to prioritize staying alive with his camo in the back of the base. It's a delayed run. We'll have to see if United can still make it happen. Formal should be taken down here by the heat wave. He will be indeed. Lethal trying to clean up the kill, but just narrowly missed the headshot. But the grenade is perfectly placed from Lethal. As that will be, Camo out of commission as well as that heat wave. Rhino now going to be taking on Lethal. Grenade and BR are going to be combining to get the damage done to send Lethal back into the respawn screen for a few seconds just to think about that decision. Frosty going to have the thrust as well as the heat wave. Oh and Frosty, my. my word, the movement, Andy, from Frosty. Bradley Bergstrom reminding us that he's still got that in his back pocket. Wow, Frosty with that heat wave thrust. It's a big win. Not only that, but Frosty was your last guy alive on Sentinels, and I'm very surprised to see E United force that last kill front base with three dead and not start the run. You have all sorts of angles. Leave that player front base. Start the run any side. You gotta have a top mid angle. You've gotta have an angle from anywhere bottom mid to finish that player. Your player who needs to start the flag run when there's three dead cannot be preoccupied with finishing the kill front base. And now just like that, Sentinels is starting to run with two dead. That was four dead. Two players just off the respawn. They're fresh on the map. They're hot. They're out the oven. But are they in position to stop this flag? It doesn't look like anyone is there. Snakebite's going to have a clear run home. Doesn't take any damage. It's picture perfect from Sentinels. That is a good as a flag run as you could ask for. Lethal's already moving the second. Look at this. Wasting no time. This is a team that will punish you. They jump back oh out. Oh, my word. It's a killing spree for Lethal. He's not done yet, but two dead. Three dead, actually. They should continue this run. And Sentinels is striking while the iron is hot. Do not give them an inch. They will take a mile. This is back to back from Sentinels. If you were wondering if they're going to be here to play today, here's your answer. They win the Slayer. They go back to back now with Flag Cats. Perfect control from Sentinels. A reminder of just how dangerous they are. And a camo grab for Formal as well. He only gets taken down by the 1v2. I'll say it again, though. E United misplaying that flag run when you have three dead, forcing that fourth kill. It takes them so long to clean out the back of the base. Then they delay the flag run twice after that. They need to play a much quicker, a much faster CTF Aquarius if they want to bounce back in the seven minutes left on the clock. I think it's a great example to people at home as well. E United went for the overextension off the back of a four dead to try and stop the flag. Sometimes you just got to let it go, right? If you yeah. get killed on the overextension, that's two back-to-back -back four deads. That's two back-to-back -back flag caps as lethal. 
will be last player alive now for Sentinels. Flag is moving here for E United, so they will be able to maybe get one back on the board here as Rain gets into his closet, but won't be able to get it home to actually fall here as Nick and Ryan will be last players alive. This is dangerous. Nick needs to go big here. At least get the right amount of damage to fly in because look at that flag re. It's, it's going to return. They're not going to get this. I think it's a smart decision, though. I think it's a smart decision to let that one go. If, if Nick flies in there and he dies, he leaves the flag completely open for Sentinels to move in and get that flag moving as a counter cap. So good decision. R low risk coming in from King Nick. Shots coming in from Frosty. Once again, Rain's going to get the better of him. And I have to say once again, just to highlight how well Rain is shooting in the moment. He's only eight and nine, but he ain't losing too many battles. So clutch for Sentinels to get that flag down on Rain in the utility. Rain was only about a moment away from turning the corner from the utility box into the flag bridge. If he gets it there, it's a very different grab for Nick. Maybe he can grab a toss into the flag platform. Instead, they get the clutch kill with the flag still in utility. It's so much easier to force a return because then you're just gatekeeping those doorways. Sentinels will maintain the lead two to zero. Now less than six minutes left. Heat wave in the hands of Frosty as well. Trippy will tell you all about being careful with those bounces off the wall. If you watched yeah. the Pro Series last week, that's almost completely destroy his own shields by accident. Now wow. some shots coming in from Frosty again. And I tell you what, Frosty, the way that he's moving, the way that he's shooting at the moment, Andy, it looks like he's locked in. Did you notice the misclip, though? Did not grab the camo as he flew across it. I think Lethal's still going to get it, so no harm, no foul in the end. But they did not grab that camo. Lethal's going to be the one to grab that one. And now this will be continued control. One dead for each side, but it's heat wave and camo control for the side of Sentinels. Five minutes and 15 seconds left. Nick will be taken down. Nice grenade being banked off those stairs by Lethal to clean up with the BR. And now he's going to have all the information as well. You can see Frosty going to be moving in alongside him. Shots coming in from Lethal. Rhinoob going to have to back down accidental melee, which we see so many times from Lethal. That's where he holds his controller heart stronger than anyone else in the world. There's a beat down as well as now more damage being done by Lethal, who's currently 16 and 11 in this game, and he is playing phenomenally. Absolutely right there with Frosty. Both players 16 and 11 at this point. Frosty's going to oh add a little more to word. the board. That will be three dead for E United. Lethal does so well to stay alive with that camo, even though he was the instigator. Look at this little slide across as well to bring this flag home. This should be flag number three. Any overextenders from E United? That's the only question. Frosty pick it up and kill would suggest not. There's a player over top P, but Lethal says, hey, you can stay there because I'm putting in the third flag of the game. Now Sentinels move within two flag caps of closing out the series. There's a big difference between what we saw last week with camel plays coming through utility Frosty. and what you just oh my saw. Word. On Lethal's screen, Frosty not done yet either. Keeps two dead for the side of E United, but Lethal does so well to be the one who starts the battles with the camo, but stays alive the whole time and continues the run. It's such a delicate balance to be able to pull that off with the camo, but it has led to a three flag lead for the side of Sentinels. Less than four minutes left. I mean, the movement inside of the base there from Frosty will give uh, Shyway a lot of content to talk about in the future. Lethal now going to be moving towards bottom pink. Rechallenges Spartan. Spartan's going to have to be very, very careful. But there's the communication. There's the teamwork from Sentinels. Last player alive is going to be in front of the base. That's going to be four dead for E United. Sentinels looking so strong on Aquarius capture the flag. We talked about their losing record recently on this game type. We're certainly seeing no signs of that onset based on the way they're playing. Yeah, they've gone uh, back to the, to the lab, so to speak, and certainly figured out how they want to approach this game type. Ryan going to be top pink. We'll win some battles. So three dead now for Sentinels. E United need to make this run count, Andy. They've only got around three minutes and 10 seconds to put these flags in to tie the game up. There's going to be a player toss. on the window. That will be the toss up and that will be one back here. Two flags now for E United to tie up this game. Okay, now this is doable here. Three minutes on the clock, only two flags away, and they're starting to also get some momentum. By the way, shout out to King Nick right now. The man's 22 and 15 in this game type. Not just leading the way, but absolutely putting on a show in this game type. Let's see if they can get the flag out of utility, though. No, four dead. They're going to have to reset. He's going to be up top pink as well. So where are those respawns coming in? By the looks of things, it's in the back of the base. So United are going to be trapped. Will there be an overextension towards the pink side? As you can see, Frosty is pinching. There's an opportunity for Sentinels really to collapse. A couple of well-placed frag grenades here, and they really could be picking up kills nice and quickly. Rain going to be taken down to no shields. As Frosty's going to keep Lethal alive for now. 
There's the flank coming in from Frosty, though. Picks up two. Now he'll move his attentions towards that flag. Slides it out to the front of the base. Rhino is the last player alive. Can Sentinels find him? Can Sentinels shut him down before he causes any problems? It doesn't look like they will be able to as Rhino not only picks up the kill, but stops the run, too. Oh my god, look at Formal right there on the tail. Picks up the flag with not even a break in the flag run, just perfectly following that back. They've got two dead, though, here, so 2v2 momentarily. Difference here, look. Sentinels decided to play for map control first. Camo going to be popped top middle by Nick. Lethal has to win this fight. It'll be actually, excuse me, Ryan who comes in with a little bit of a helping hand. And now from that situation where it looked like Sentinels would have put a flag in, it's now going to be E United who are moving it, but that'll be shut down by Frosty, who picks up a triple kill and shuts down the push coming in from EU. Wow, it's a big play from United to force the return, but just like you say, answered back by a huge multi-kill on the side of Sentinels. Now 1 minute 30, this looks like a lot harder of a moment here for United, and what a heartbreaker it is about to be for the side of United if they can't find two miracle captures to lose this early against Sentinels. Did you see what Frosty just did there? He got My the God. audio cue, he heard the camo, and then he just stopped, completely changed his decision, and then managed to stick the player who had just popped it. So that is a huge play coming in from Frosty to slow that down, take the power up out of the hands of E United. Even with that happening though, E United have this run going. Spartan's gonna thrust towards that flag to keep it moving. Frosty has to make yet another play here. Spartan is weak, three dead now. Ryan, once again, last player alive. Great play there from Frosty, and he gets the help. Look at the spawners that he had on bottom dynamos to help out. But the flag is probably going to still continue here. Two dead for Sentinels. It certainly is. You can see Nick's in position. Nick stays alive as well after getting that touch. Now three players will be alive here from E United. Lethal is trapped, but still manages to get a kill, and that's going to delay that touch by just a few seconds here. Look at this play. Look at the toss-up, though. That second fight doesn't go in just yet. Does not go in. Three to one. 31 seconds left here. Now it's going to go, but 30 seconds here for one flag. We need to see a miracle run from United, but not going to be easy. Three dead, and Sentinels is running the flag as well. This is risky, though, from Sentinels. You can see that the overextension has already come in, but the kill from Lethal might just be what they need to calm things down for just a few seconds. A slide Ooh. might come in, but no. Look at this. Kills traded across the board. Where is the flag, though? United still have that flag moving. They also have Rain and Rhino still alive here. Lethal has to play this so, so carefully. Two players are challenging, gets one. Is there anyone there from Sentinels to slow things down, though? Sudden death here. Just keep an eye on that bottom middle. That will tell you if they're close enough to get that flag touch. And right now, it looks like the answer is yes, but Frosty might shut down the show. Has the camo as well. So Frosty now has the game in his That's hands. It. Flag should be returned. It will be over. Overtime finishes. And it will be the tournament over here for E United as Sentinels. We'll win the series two to one. And if you were wondering if these boys are going to be up for it today, if they're looking good heading towards Anaheim with a return of Royal Two on the horizon, well, there's your answer. Look at that. And E United not going to be happy with that departure. As a reminder, E United, your second place team from our last LAN event and looking to challenge Cloud9 for the number one spot. They will not be able to do that today. It will be Sentinels who advances on. Some of the stats, you can see Nick 28 and 20 from him. But the standout player for me, there was two in that game and they were both on the sides of Sentinels. Frosty, he was making so many impactful plays across the map, but Lethal as well was just playing some yes. of the best Halo I've seen from him in some time, Andy. He stepped up in a big way when it mattered most. The little plays like that where Lethal's in a 1v2 from top mid against the base. He's able to isolate the angle, pick up a kill, drop bottom mid, continue to put damage into two more players, eventually get four dead, start another run, run the flag all the way through utility and get involved in the return battles. Stretches like that, you, you cannot put a price on that. Those don't appear in the stats. And it's things like that that Lethal can do that really make the difference maker. That's why they win this game 3-2. I just want to point out, uh, Frosty, the only player to break 7k damage, but he also, alongside those crazy kills, had 17 assists, 17 in that Crazy. game. Frosty was everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. And as we take a look at some highlights from that game, and really so impressed with what we saw from Sentinel's early killing spree from the side of Lethal, but really those back-to-back -back caps, like you said, you have to think this game ends 3-2 on set. E United gets punished for the overextension on that first flag. I mean, this from Frosty and Lethal combining together a couple of times in this game to help each other out when they needed it. Lethal forces the flag home. Rain with a little toss up to the front of the window as well for a teammate saying, hey, pad those objective stats. I've done the hard work, but it was these final moments where things started to get a little bit nervy. The trade coming in from Formal just did enough to give Sentinels the space to breathe. And Sentinels, as you can see on your screens right now, will be moving through the elimination bracket. E United, a disappointing finish for them today. They're out.
And look at that, it's just like our first series. It's a blowout Strongholds game, followed by, I'll say it, a choke in the Slayer that would have resulted in the series going the other way, just like you saw in series number one. And you talk about those game two Slayers, how they can kind of be a coin toss. Guess what? They're very, very important. And so far, we've seen a blowout Slayer followed by a 50-48 in game number two as we bring everyone back in. But Sentinels knocking out E-United this early, Lottie and Clutch, it's a pretty big surprise for that roster for that side. Yeah, I gotta say, it is a big actual surprise. Uh, just in terms of where Sentinels are at in their heads. I mean, we heard the statement earlier on about Anaheim being, you know, the start of their season. And, you know, they've come into this with formal, and I think they've done such an exceptional job based on what they have, obviously, scrimming with Royal 2 uh, and, and on the back burner kind of things. And then coming out and being able to do that against United was was massive for this roster right now. Uh, Clutch, I wanna ask you a little bit about game two there because it was an extremely close list, something that we love on the edge of our chairs but talk to me about the ending because obviously big rocket plays happening at snake bite there as well as uh, you know a lot of the team just really clutching up at the end i think the moment that sticks out to me the most is it's right after that snake bite play and we hopped on board with formal and his responsibility and what he was able to provide for his team there at the end and, and we talk about him being the substitution and, and we can say enough about the individual but what he does at the end of the game we're not able to show it on screen but it's his job to create some space for Sentinels because Sentinels is coming off the, a couple of deaths and they're trying to compete for this next overshot that's coming up. And Formal's fighting his way out of Tree. And Tree, and he's fighting someone in the other Tree from E United. That BR fight, as Formal approaches that balcony and makes his way into the corner, what he's able to do to be able to stay alive, dodge grenades, be a nuisance, but more importantly, get his shield back, find an angle, and and give Frosty the suppressive fire that he needs in order to get that overshield and yeah. secure those last two kills. I mean, they don't win that game. They don't get that overshield. If Formal doesn't somehow stay alive and win that, he doesn't get the kill, but he suppresses the enemy players enough to advance on the map and create space for the rest of Sentinels to secure that overshield. And like things like that, just they make or break games, especially when it's 48-48. Can't say enough about how all of Sentinels acted at the end of that game. And that's why they gave themselves a fighting chance for a game three, which they dominated. So, I mean, let it be known that even when you fall down in series, even when the game and the series looks uh, grim, like you, you can step up, you can make plays, you can figure out a way to get back into it, crawl back into it, and then take the series as a whole as we've seen so far twice today. Yeah, and that's yeah. also the second time that we've seen back-to-back uh, -back weeks, right? United win game one and then lose the next two games yeah. and get reverse swept. So I think United is just going to need to look at how do they maintain momentum through the series as they look at Anaheim for sure. Yeah, without a doubt. Now, we actually do have somebody on speed dial ready to take this interview for Sentinels. We have Snakebite joining us. First of all, Snakebite, congratulations. i got to say, I'm sure you are a little bit surprised <clears throat> at the result of that one. Obviously, looking at that series layout, it's not exactly aiding you very well in terms of the game mode in the maps but i gotta say Definitely. we're all very impressed with your aquarius ctf talk to me about that game type and how you guys have managed to improve on it so much with formal yeah um honestly i couldn't tell you uh we've been working on it a lot with world <laughs> two and um you know it's been going really well in practice but it actually helped us a little bit earlier in the tournament we played aquarius versus uh optic and got destroyed we we're trying a lot of the stuff we were doing in practice obviously it doesn't correlate to playing with formal so really we just kind of reset back to what our game plan was over at raleigh really bring the bring the flag engine side and just try to get as many kills as you can make them think that they have to panic Ended up working out okay for us but uh yeah, there's not, not much strategy other than just do what we know. TJ, I want to ask about what it means to have Lethal starting to step up and play like he did in that game three. And I feel like he's like, he's a very important piece for the Sentinels roster to go the distance that you guys want to achieve. And staying away from the formal rule two difference, it really was mm -hmm. the difference of Lethal stepping up and getting the kills that he needs to be able to get. In order for you guys to have that level of success like you did in game three, you basically cruised to a win. I know it was a one get flag cap at the end, but you were in the yeah, league with the dominant performance throughout the game. What is it like when Lethal's getting those kills, when he's starting to click and, and become that final form that we know Lethal can be? Yeah, I feel like when TJ's playing his game, uh, overall, we get to just kind of roll through. You know, like you said, we start really picking up momentum, uh, you know, get a 3-0 lead on Aquarius. Uh, just been difficult getting on the same page. And obviously, all things aside, you know, he's been playing really great coming up through scrims. And it's cool to see it kind of showing off in this tournament. And uh, hopefully, we can keep it going. Amazing Absolutely. stuff. Thank you so much, Snake. By a big playmaker, you guys are doing so, so well. Congratulations on that win over United and best of luck through the elimination bracket. Thank you.
Well, there we have. We've heard of the of the infamous IGL snake bite uh, of this incredible Sentinels roster. I've got to say, in incredible stuff overall. The fact they don't really have a huge amount of strategy going into it, but kind of playing and adapting with formal like they have been throughout this entire month and obviously learning a lot from Rob well, uh, which has been absolutely amazing. Let's take a quick look right now, though, at the elimination bracket, just to see where that result puts us. Because, of course, that was our elimination quarters, and we do have our semi-finals starting to get kind of made up here. We've got Optic Gaming versus Xset to go to see who exactly is going to be meeting Sentinels very shortly. Uh, as you can see, Xset did actually beat Space Station 2-1, to one, so they will push through. Let's take a look at the winner's bracket, though, on the brighter side of things here in the brackets. We do have Cloud9 versus Phase in our winners finals now fun little fact for our winners finals folks we've actually seen this winners finals c9 versus face every single week this month i mean that is a pretty crazy statistic in terms of storylines here and and talk about a rivalry i mean this winners finals this is going to get a little bit spicy here on set you know what does it tell you about these two teams and and how resilient and how dominant they really are to be facing up against each other every single week I mean, they've both been playing amazingly. I think that goes without saying. The question is, can FaZe beat Cloud9? Because yeah. that's been, there's been no real discussion about it, right? There's been some yeah. close games, there's been some close series, but Cloud9 have always come out on top. FaZe need to bring what I just saw in that last series to this series, because I think if they're playing at that intensity, at that level and being that efficient in every single game, that this could be a really, really hot series. But then on the back of that, I always think, what a Cloud9 thing. When Cloud9 see a team that are playing crazy well, all of a sudden Cloud9 go, yeah, we're going to have to play really well here, boys. And all of a sudden they just hit this like crazy stride of momentum. So it's going to be a very, very fun, uh, fun series. I, I just want to see it. I just want to get into it. Yeah, I'll tell you what then, my, your wish is my command, so we're going to head to a quick break right now. We're going to get everybody some water, some chill time, because we have an absolutely epic winners finals rematch weekly happening here. Cloud9 versus FaZe coming right up after this. Searching for meaning in a relentless world, always connected, but somehow alone, trapped by illusion. We offer another path where the battle to belong begins. Awakened by a calling, united by the cause you fight for, no one can take away what it means to be among the few, the proud, the marine.
Welcome back, you lovely lot, and welcome back to the NA Pro Series. We're into week four here, and I'm joined by the wonderful Bravo, who, actually, you got a little bit of time from Hawaii, but it's good to have Did you I? back on uh, on this side of the broadcast for sure. Now, we do have a winner's finals coming up very shortly, Bravo, but I was just wondering if you had heard about our sniper skins. Not only are they sniper skins, though, mate, they are actually regional support sniper skins. You guys can actually show your support right now for your favorite region by grabbing this gorgeous cosmetic bundle. It actually includes a nameplate, an elm, el el I can't even speak, an emblem, excuse me, finally got it out, a sniper rifle coating, of course, and a visor as well. I gotta say, ANZ kinda, kinda drops it for me. I, I absolutely love the ANZ logo. I think it looks so dope on the sniper. What do you think? I'm kind of a LATAM guy. I'm actually oh, rocking the LATAM sniper right now. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, but I agree, it's a breathtaking set of, of goodies here. So make sure you support not only your own region, but also regions that you want to uh, give a special shout out to, because not only will you support each region around the world of the Halo Championship Series, but you also get some sweet goodies and a sweet sniper skin uh, to boot as well. So uh, much love to all of our participating regions. We've seen some amazing results from each of them, but excited to see uh, exactly when we get to have all them back in Kansas City together to have all the teams from around the world competing whoever is able to make it out there always special to have international competition seeing what they can do against na and so far we've seen uh, the best results ever from europe so we'll have to see if that continues this season as well this is very true actually we've had some dominant performances across all of the regions the regions have yeah. been absolutely lights out at the moment and kind of honestly their number ones have been untouchable so i'm excited to see how things switch up especially as we get into the live LAN events as well uh, but i'll tell you what folks we do actually have a series to get right into our winners finals it is a weekly viewing it happens pretty much all the time but i'm excited to see whether or not we'll have a change of results here so with that being said on set clutch take away our winners finals i will do i will do lot because it is winners finals time i've got wes alongside me he's got a smile in his face which always puts a smile on my face as well and what a series we've got as well wes two teams who i would say are the form teams at the moment in the halo championship series on one side you got cloud nine who are looking to go back to back to back to back and completely sweep the pro series and then you've got phase who for me have been the closest team a few weeks ago of really giving them a run for their money and maybe just maybe causing that upset yeah, I think after seeing FaZe and how hot they played against Optic in that best of three in the winter semifinals, how well they played that third game on Bizarre CTF, they gave me hope for this series to go the distance. They gave me hope that we could potentially see the first upset of Cloud9 in these pro series, but Cloud9 we haven't seen him play today, and I feel like every time we don't broadcast Cloud9's journey through the winner's bracket, you can blink and all of a sudden see that they're in the winner's finals, and it wouldn't shock any of us if they swept this whole tournament outright. I have to agree with you. I think Cloud9 certainly are the people to beat right now in the Halo Championship Series. It goes without saying, really, right? A land victory, three online victories in a row, which if you're new to Halo as well, it's, it's pretty much a bit of a surprise to all of us, to be honest with you, because Cloud9 historically have not enjoyed the online environment, but this shows a change in attitude to me, Wes. It shows that every single time that Cloud9 get to compete, wherever it is, whatever the format might be, they want to prove to everyone that they are untouchable. Yeah, to me, it's the mentality that Cloud9 has entered Halo Infinite with, and it's about leaving the legacy that we are the best team of all time. They have that as an opportunity. Already claiming a world championship back in the day, three of these members are Halo 5 world champions. They want to be multiple time world champions. They want to be that greatest team of all time. They have started Halo Infinite out on the right foot. They are starting to hit their stride. Now it's all about how long will this race start or how long will this race go until other teams start to catch up? Or even will that happen? Will Cloud9 let that happen? And the crazy thing now is how, let's add a little extra level of importance to this series for FaZe, right? FaZe need to win this because even if Cloud9 go down to that elimination bracket, you would imagine that maybe they will work their way back into a finals. If FaZe don't get it done now, I don't think FaZe can beat C9 at the moment in two series back to back. I think they need to get it done now to give themselves that cushion. Yeah, that's a daunting task, right? Everyone has struggled to beat Cloud9 in any best of five. Doing it back to back, I mean, that's a lot to ask for anybody. But this FaZe roster, how well they looked earlier today, how dominant they looked. Eric Rona hitting stride. All of these guys playing so efficiently against Optic Gaming. The comeback they had in Strongholds was unbelievable. If they can use that, maybe muster some momentum from that, there's hope. FaZe Clan needs to stand up now more than ever. Everybody that's a pro player is looking at this series wanting 
phase to take down cloud nine wanting to see if cloud nine can bleed just like they do but right now cloud nine is trying to stop that from happening they believe that they are gods and they are convincing the rest of the scene that they may as well be gods yeah it's a question for everyone right who's gonna knock c9 off the perch can they be knocked off the perch because if anyone can all of a sudden it's not just the fact that phase maybe can it means that the likes of optic can it means the likes of sentinels can e united any of these teams who have been going back and forth in series over the last few weeks it makes Anaheim a must-watch tournament for everyone involved. But this is much watch right now because we're into our first map of the series. It is going to be our winner's bracket final. It's FaZe versus Cloud9. Winner will go through to our grand finals. We're starting off here. Recharge Opal. All right. FaZe versus Cloud9. I want to see if FaZe can start off hot because Recharge Oddball is going to be a very difficult one. Cloud9 having a ton of success on recharge, especially if they can get the shock rifle into their hand and already a good start for FaZe Clan as Renegade gets taken down. Always good to take down Renegade at any point in the game. Stella gonna pick up one though, Penguin gonna pick up another and now all of a sudden FaZe starting to fall apart a little bit. The opening strategy will be won by is initially however a very very important kill coming in to make sure that camo didn't get picked up it didn't get burnt either i think that camo is actually still down you can see glowing there in front of bound so it's still a scrap for the power up here falcate picking up one is going to allow bound to finally move in on that power up but there's penguin there's a bit of team fire and oh. that's going to be finally what? it looks like something being picked up the knockback he knocked back camo into his teammate that was actually unbelievable i'm not even sure if it was on purpose but let's pretend it was for just a second and pretend <laughs> that phase is absolutely starting to create the meta and what a better time to do it than the winners finals now against cloud nine because he knocks back camo into falcated falcated now with with mangler camo oh. able to push this player go through him turn around get that first kill Damage onto a second, so Camo gets a little bit of the job done, but unbelievable start for FaZe Clan already. Yeah, and then Stella does his best impression of a tank because he just takes damage and just keeps moving forward. Somehow Stella, through all of the carnage that was going down, managed to pick up the kills to clear out pipes, and now he's got the oddball in his hands as well. Even though it's just a slim lead, C9 do have the oddball in their hands, but look at this push Whoa. coming in. It's a little bit surprising to see C9 having so many openings available for, uh, for FaZe to push into there. Surprising to me, surprising to you, surprising to Eco Smith as well. You got to be in a position to get that ball into the middle of the map if you feel pressure, but Eco didn't even feel the pressure until it was too late. The ball stays up in this yellow area, and because of it, FaZe now have an opportunity to get a setup of their own. If Eric Rona snipe down can get a kill, and he does, Falcaden finds a second, and this is big for FaZe. They're able to start slaying with the likes of Cloud9, and that's step one to getting the job done. C9 though just keep flooding through pipes at the moment and both teams had similar problems at the start of this game It seems to have got some sort of setup some sort of semblance of control But then a couple of players just slip through pipes and before you know it the setup is broken Booby though has managed to get the next power up. That's gonna be phased with two in a row now So great start for them. There's a back smack not gonna count and that's gonna cost him a little bit of damage as well Unfortunate for him not to have that Back smack just immediately take down Penguin, but two full here to C9. Rotation coming in beautifully here from FaZe as well. And he gets away with his life. Oddball in their hands. Dragged it back to himself with that grapple. Look at, Look this. at this move from Boo Boo. This is beautiful stuff. Such a heads up play here from Boo Boo Doo Boo. The rotation, the understanding that you can rotate so much faster with grapple, especially when you grapple away, grapple the ball to you, three go down for Cloud9. So not only does Boobadoobo get the perfect rotation, but it puts Cloud9 in a very difficult situation. They see it happening, they overextend, and FaZe get the slays. Snipe down has a shock rifle as well. Stella's going to be creeping around from A, so a long way to go here for C9 to get the ball out of the hands of FaZe. Also having the ability to get that play ball is going to mean there shouldn't be too much of an opportunity for any ball time to be picked up having broken this setup. Oh, no. There's a repulsor. There's Boo Boo. Whoa! Manages to pick up one though somehow. There's He's a grapple. There. I don't know what's happening here, but Boo Boo's got four skills that many of us don't. He is a Jedi. Boo Boo Doo Boo is that player on phase that's going to determine are they capable of beating Cloud9. When he is at his best, he is so difficult to play against. He is such a pain in the rear for Cloud9 right now. And if he can keep this up, he's going to make their lives so difficult trying to win this series. And it's just what phase need. And Bound is causing dis disruption to C9 as well. You can see he's just always flanking, always being a nuisance, just looking to pick up that opening kill. Stellar is going to get it, though. 
Valkyria trades out Stellar almost immediately. Renegade with a kill on the feed as well. But Bound, you can see, just waiting for his opportunity to pounce. Has that Mangler in his hands. There's Renegade going down bottom mid for the camo. Shut down by Bound, who escapes from his life. Does more damage onto Penguin, but it looks like C9 will get away with their first camo of the game. Okay, so this is the first camo for C9. We remember Boobadoobu and Falcated each had one before this. And now Cloud9 looked for their first opportunity at a real power swing here. They've secured their first camo. He actually opts to get ball, and that could be a very bad decision. Brings it right to Falcated. Falcated not only gets the kill, but also gets control of ball in a great area. Unfortunately, he actually decides to challenge a little bit. Now, he understands that there's a member of Cloud9 behind him he's got to deal with before securing some time. But luckily, the rest of Phase, it looks like they're going to be in position to help him. And now, Phase have a full setup because Penguin with that camo brought them the ball. Had a full setup though, because Cloud9 managed to get the break. Booby now gonna have to move through the pipes of the Mangler in his hands. Gonna be spotted out though. Those couple of shots, those few seconds are gonna cost him his life and cost his team a few seconds. C9 will go back into the lead here, but it has been back and forth. Nobody's had full control of a setup so far and managed to hold off a push, but that opening kill is gonna mean that numbers are in the favor of Cloud9 on the map here. The push is coming in though again from FaZe, but it looks like C9 should be able to close this one down. How insane is it that we, I feel like all we've seen is FaZe clutching up, getting such big kills, great rotations with the ball, but still, they find themselves down now over 15 points in this game. It is so difficult to beat this Cloud9 team. You nearly have to play perfect Halo, and even when it feels like FaZe is playing great, Cloud9 still have a lead. Slays in the favor here of Cloud9 as well, so it looks like maybe it just took them a few minutes to get rolling, but Cloud9 certainly... Starting to appear more and more on that kill feed, but bound with that opening kill as well to fill net, uh, to fall, excuse me, for Cloud9 as FaZe get the ball back in their hands. There's bound again with yet another kill, but here's Renegade trying to make the break. Manages to get the double kill and the odd ball in his hands. There's a sword player though, but what? Oh, that's heartbreaking. I gotta say that's heartbreaking. Oh, I feel like he turned or something that had to happen there for that kill not to come through and Renegade was the last guy alive for Cloud9. Keep in mind, the next player was spawning across the map. He finds a double in pipes. Not only that, but he picks up the ball, ends up getting an unfortunate kill onto the sword player as well, rotates the ball away, and now Renegade and may have just made the play of the game. Yeah, I don't know if he made it or maybe it was made for him, but Stella with that kill was going to trade out for C9 at least. 81 to 45, the score that play has meant the C9 going to the lead now as they have two players dead, but so do FaZe. So Renegade trying to chase down these kills. Where is that oddball though? It's down at the moment. Sword comes in from Falcated. That writes the wrongs of a few moments ago. The sword needs to pick up a few more kills here for FaZe. There's some nice shots though coming in from Boo Boo. That's a four and now you're going to see the ball picked up. Mm. No, you're not because Renegade and Penguin combine. Yeah, you need to get more slays before trying to go for that ball, especially when you lose your shield in that fight. A good few kills go back in phase's favor make it two straights so and now phase are gonna have a four on two potentially the ball in hand and they look to crawl back in this game now down about 30 seconds it's gonna take one real setup for phase to get back in this but can they hold it for that setup is going to be the question because right now every single time phase has been in this situation they have folded like paper napkins well, the good thing is here, they've managed to pick up a few kills, but more importantly, got the information of where the respawns were coming in from C9. There's Eco, they're jumping oh. up, but look at those shots coming in from Boo Boo. This man is really stepping up in these big moments here. Renegade with a big challenge. However, Falcated is going to be posting up in this corner. Bound with another kill. That's three dead now for Cloud9. Eco last alive. Ball still in the hands of FaZe, but they need to hold on to it. You can see two, two seconds. seconds on the timer. They cannot let go of this ball. They need to turn this kill, this time deficit over, and they're picking up the kills to do so here. Where's 80, 81. FaZe going to the lead here with one second left. FaZe will clutch up. And not many teams have done that against C9. They take the first round. Unbelievable rotation from FaZe. Great positioning there from Falcated with the ball. Understood his assignment perfectly and crushed the project, giving his team the one round lead now. As we go into round two, a massive Ooh. double kill is going to open up the map for FaZe once again from Bound. And it's yet again a hot start from FaZe that could potentially give them an opportunity here in round two. Four dead for C9 off the break. Camo in their hands as well. And now the battle is going to go down. For not only the grapple, but maybe the shock rifle and ooh, Look at maybe him. the ball as well. Get that ball I, back. I love it, man. It's a, it's in his head at all times. How am I going to safely get this ball here? Can I use the equipment in order to get it 
easier. Unfortunately, nobody on phase really in a position to pick that ball up. So even though it's in a good spot, they're going to have to fend off these sways. And yes, you see Snipe down, pokes his head out, gets two information on Stellar. And that's going to be all four dead when Stellar goes down. If he goes down, Booba ah, Dooba finally boy. finishes him. And that is going to be a massive kill because four dead for cloud nine and some ball time is going to be the reward for booba dooboo and the rest of phase there's so much to break down there about that play from booba dooboo it's mega mind play it's it's above <laughs> what most people can even think of doing there's so much to talk about which will i'm sure break down afterwards but he's now moving that ball back again the grapple has been influential in a way that we haven't seen at this level so far. And Boo Boo is the man who's making the plays. And this is what you wanted to see in Halo Infinite. Over time, the meta will start to develop. Players will start to perfect the ability to expand on all of the sandbox. You're seeing it right here and now. Booba Doo Boo teaching you that the grapple is not just a movement mechanic. It can move the objective to you very efficiently and effectively. And he has done such a good job trying to get that ball out of some bad situations where he probably would have lost his life if he didn't use that grapple. But unfortunately, base really hasn't turned that into a score in this round two too much. And because of that, you're seeing Cloud9 jump out to a lead, I believe, here shortly. Camo going to be popping in a few seconds as well. Renegade is on top of it, and Renegade will pop it. And now he's got a sword as well. And Renegade with no weapons is terrifying enough. Give him a camo, give him a sword, then this is going to be a massive moment here for FaZe because he has the ability to make a big, big play here to get the numbers on the side of C9. They don't have the lead for now. The oddball is down near them, but Falcade had sniped down and picked up a couple of kills in quick succession here. C9 down to two players, which is why you're seeing Renegade just play this one as patiently as possible. All right, the sword worked for him this time around, and Renegade finds the kill on the snipe down, opens up this pipe area for his team, spots a second player, bottom double stack, able to finish off that, and Renegade giving his team that two-man advantage here should also so reward his team with a few points on this odd ball taking the lead here shortly i would believe and i love the play by renegade to not focus on the objective your job on this cloud nine team is to main slay and now renegade is loose renegade's loose can't quite connect this time but there's the sword bound he's gonna take some damage as well c9 starting to pick up the heat a little bit here but the oddball not in their hands for now. Finally, it will be in their hands. The game isn't won by kills here. Where's this one by that objective efficiency? And Snipe Down shuts down Stella almost immediately. And with Renegade running around the map, causing carnage, C9 are losing kills in other positions. And now they've lost the oddball too. Yeah, it's a shame Cloud9 was not in a position to get that ball or actually didn't take the positions to get control of that ball as Renegade went on that killing spree with the sword. It's plays like that that should result in immediately in the score line. But unfortunately, Cloud9 not able to play any objective if at all during that time period keeping face in the lead still just 20 to 15 but you have to ask yourself if you're renegade what more can i do to get our team some time booby's got the ball back into blue as well renegade and stella are gonna be across the map renegade's gonna be the first forward here down the long haul stella picks up a kill in the feed though so it looks like booby's gonna be aware of that and puts himself in a position to relieve the pressure goes for the play ball repulsor <gasps> comes in renegade catch that no Renegade's got slippy fingers, and at this point, that's a pretty good position to be in. Yeah, and unfortunately, Renegade comes off off spawn from going on a killing spree with that sword, finds himself with a shock rifle, and it's another power weapon he's rewarded himself with. Stellar secured camo in the meanwhile, and now you're seeing Cloud9 with a lot of power on these two individual players, Stellar and Renegade, the two slayers for this squad. Let's see what they're capable of. As Stellar jumps into yellow, finds the first, chooses to play his life well, grapple, and let's see if he, he himself uses it to grab the elbow. No, he's going to take his time, find himself a kill first. And now he's going to do it. Heads oh, up no! play, but unfortunately misses the ball. A little bit of a blunder. And this is time that Cloud9 needs. This could have been five, six, seven seconds. Add it all up. Finally, he's going to take the more traditional route here. Stellar and pick the ball up using his hands. And he will get it back to Pipes. Bound with the kill, though. Once again, Cloud9, just two players alive. And this is something that stood out for me so far in this game, where it's the fact that C9 have very, very rarely been in a position to push numbers. FaZe have always picked up trades, always picked up opening kills in the battle, and it's showing in the scoreline. Yeah, you're seeing Renegade get that first kill in the kill feed. Snipedown answers it, though, and Stellar in a good situation to continue to rack up some ball time. FaZe are going and have taken the lead now. And this is, or I'm sorry, Cloud9 is now taking the lead in round two, and this is big, right? Cloud9 has struggled throughout this entire first and second round so far Bound. to get any kind of a setup. And now, just like that, Cloud9's setup is broken. Once again, Face take the lead off of that beautiful play from Bat.
Four dead for C9. Phase with complete control of the map. Back into the lead, like you say, quite rightly. Camo going to pop, pop in in around 15 seconds as well. Renegade gets the first kill, but there is the exchange. Again, almost immediately, Wes. It's, it's, it's really impressive, this from Phase To allow C9 into positions to get a kill, fine. But you have to trade it out to keep the numbers on your side. C9 get the break, though. Snipe down last alive. C9 with a big, big break of ball in their hands. Will Cloud9 push this to a round three? We're going to find out here and now with the Slays come through. Renegade, Mangler, Camo in hand. You have to think it's going to be Renegade that decides. Is he going to bring his team to a round Falcated. three? And this position is unbelievable. Falcated does get a trade, which is big. But unfortunately, a trade probably not going to do enough because Renegade is starting to go off. Oh, the shock rifle from Bound, though. Eco's running away with that oddball. Tries to stay alive. Bound is doing oh. it all at the moment. Stella's trying to stay alive. Stella's bottom middle one shot. Falcated moves in now. Everyone has to hit their shots in this game to be in with a chance of succeeding. And at the moment, both these teams are just going back and forth. It's blow for blow. But Boo Boo Doo Boo has that ball in his hands. That's incredible. I had thought there was no chance FaZe comes out on top in those trades, especially with the Mangor damage that Renegade was able to provide early on in that fight. But no, FaZe answer back. They get the trades. They get the ball in hand and they get a few more points added to their oh. score great shots from falcated right here great teamwork from phase we'll get him swarm onto renegade bound gets the kill gets the oddball in hand and now phase could potentially end game one the aggression from phase is something that's been missing against cloud nine now they are holding down the gas pedal and they have numbers they will take the fight two four three four for cloud nine and with just four seconds left in this game where it looks like map number one will go to phase unbelievable unbelievable how well phase is playing today they use that same momentum that same aggression that teamwork that we saw against the optic team earlier in the day i wondered if they were going to be able to even like replicate that kind of gameplay especially against a team like cloud nine they come out in this series in game one they take both rounds in off ball it doesn't even see the light of day for a round three and it's off the back of just everyone seems to be clicking everyone seems to be on the same page and they're playing the fish and objective while doing it one thing to point out as well that i think is worth noting how many times have we seen c9 being the team in a close close round to clutch up wes this time in that round number one it was phase two seconds left on that game timer and they managed to get it done that's the difference here. Someone has stepped up and said, hey, we're not going to make a mistake here. We're not going to let Cloud9 do what Cloud9 do. We're going to be the ones to clutch. Someone stepped up and it is Falcated with the most kills, most assists on his team. We didn't get a chance to see his damage, but an unbelievable game one for Falcated. And he really is a special talent on the upcoming, in the upcoming Halo community that we don't talk about enough. How consistent I feel like he's playing at such a high level. And you see the rest of FaZe starting to step up around him. And this is an incredible performance from all of FaZe. I mean, Booba Dubu with the movement, the objective efficiency, his ability to use that grapple so many times to get out of a bad situation, to rotate the odd ball just a little bit faster, to make the difference, to force Cloud9's hand. And FaZe have the winning recipe, at least on recharge oddball, to stay in this series and to make this a good one. Well, we're gonna go over to Live Fire Slayer next. And this is a map that earlier on, Cloud9 lost to Space Station, I believe it was, 50 to 27. Now, maybe we won't read too much into that, but it's certainly something to keep in the back of your mind. So for FaZe, especially after winning a, a close game a little bit earlier on Strongholds, it was uh, it, uh, Strongholds, excuse me, on Live Fire. And they're gonna have fond memories of this map. And this could be an opportunity to go up 2-0, but I feel like it has to happen now for FaZe. If they let Cloud9 back in, they open that door. Before you know it, it could be a 3-1 series. Wouldn't that be something to go up 2-0 on Cloud9 in the winner's finals? Wouldn't that be a story that FaZe wants to write? The potential is there. You know Cloud9 struggle in Slayers. They've already lost this today. Let's see if they can do it. Here we go, then. Time to phase up. If you're a FaZe fan and for C9... Need to just find a little bit of that magic that we know they have in their hands. Maybe that magic is going to be in the hands and at the end of the barrel, the sniper rifle here from Renegade. Good start here from C9. They have 
The weapon's in their hands. And one kill advantage here for FaZe as well. So you have to say kills across the board pretty even. But when you come out of those battles with a sniper rifle in the hands of oh Renegade, God. you usually feel pretty confident. Yeah, absolutely. Eric Rona actually gets away with the power up on the screen. But Renegade already with snipe in hand. If you think Cloud9 is going to go down without a fight, think again. Because Cloud9, what? they smell blood in the water. They see camo when it even when that player is invisible. And because of it, the takedown snipe down right there. Good trades all around. And it does look like Eco Smith's gonna be the last lap, at least for now, on Live Fire Slayer as it gives his team the one kill lead. Both teams just flying at each other at the moment. Eco is gonna pick up the kill onto Snipe Down. Maybe we'll see this slow down for just a few seconds here. Although Renegade is already up in the faces of FaZe by the looks of things. Booby Dooby picks up one. Bound managed to get the trade onto Renegade. So now Eco is gonna be trying to just make sure that this tower is cleared out. And uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna have to. Uh, he checked two for too long as Booba Dooba will be found pretty quickly by him and a teammate. There's a strange push and oh my god, Stellar with the shot on the bound. That had to have been a great shot for him to hit that. But side down with the fight Yee. finds two. And not only do you get Eco and Stellar down, you take your heat wave and the snipe out of their hands. That's a big double kill from snipe down. But he's still going punch for punch at the moment. Valkate it again with a kill onto Renegade. Eco trades it out though. Sniper Rifle this time in the hands of Snipe Down. We didn't see Renegade do too much with the air. Eco has to be very, very careful and has to shrink his neck for the last few seconds there. Snipe Down escapes, moves towards his teammates. And oh he's going to be chased down immediately, but my word! I don't know if that was a team nade that came Absolutely. in that kind of ruined Stella's day, but it ruined it for sure. Absolutely, that was a team nade. And what a better opportunity for Snipe Down to play his life and get a kill. And out of a terrible situation, you for sure get that kill if you're Cloud9 and that nade's not thrown, but... Already, you're seeing it transitioned into a camo for Penguin. He finds himself a kill. Stellar finds another one, and Penguin slow playing this, getting his shield back, is going to have another opportunity as he looks to push these players for phase that are in a very bad situation. But what? two players push from top middle, take Penguin down, and that's no more camo for Cloud9 as well. I mean, this aggression from phase is just... We haven't seen this before from them. They've kind of been start stepping in how they want to play. Do they want to play a little bit more setup orientated, be a little bit more methodical? They just flew. They absolutely flew into the garage there from the A plat. And now Snipe Down has found himself a heat wave. He'll be traded out immediately. Boo Boo with one. 21 to 21. This could not be closer between the two teams. Boo Boo with a kill onto Stella. Big win here for FaZe. Yeah, you got to think, wh what's Stellar doing challenging that? Does he expect Boo Boo to miss those shots? Because he was down in that fight, and Boo Boo easily gets that kill, tries to play his life, but good pressure all around. But, I mean, Mark, to your point, Look how fast and chaotic this game looks from each player's point of view. It's because FaZe are trying to do to out Cloud9, Cloud9 right now, and it's working. Penguin trying to escape, takes the damage from the frag grenade, but won't cost him his life. 4v4 across the map. Where did that sniper rifle go? Falcate, it's going to bring the numbers into FaZe's hands. Snipe down with a double kill, uh, with another kill, excuse me. It does look like Falcate managed to get the sniper rifle. Power up going to be popping in around 25 seconds as well. So FaZe have control of the dummy side of the map, but here comes Penguin, gets that kill with the heat wave. All right, Falcator, what do you have for us in game two? Game one's leading stat performer. Can he go off with the snipe? Unfortunately, pressure from too many angles comes through. Falcator loses his life. And that snipe, once again, into Renegade's hands. And not only that, but it looks like they're going to give him camo as well. And this could be the turning point in the series Ooh. as he lands a body shot onto Falcator. Doesn't actually get for the camo, though. He's going to give it to a teammate, I guess. Or he's just playing his life. I would have liked to see him try and pick up that camo, but Renegade knows more than I do because he's getting fight from behind and is forced to give up that position and potentially this camo as well. Looks oh. like he's gonna play it perfectly because Bound gets dropped on his back. A headshot coming in from Renegade. Maybe just using that time that he had to bait the camo. Now using the slide to get out of dodge and somehow managed to navigate his way around all of those frag grenades, taking no damage along the way. But even with these crazy plays, even with these snipes, even with the power up control, looking like it was going into C9, it's still just one kill between the two teams. FaZe are matching them every single time they make some sort of play. They're playing so well today. Every single game, they're playing so strong. You love to see someone try and push Cloud9 to their limits, and that's exactly what we're seeing here in this series. Already up 1-0, FaZe Clan is, but Cloud9, you have to think they're, re they're a resilient team. We know that they can bounce back from a loss. We know that they can still come through with not only this game too, but this entire tournament, this series, find themselves in that grand finals. But they've slowed the game down.
Both teams, yeah. what was once a chaotic game is now slowed down to a snail's pace. Teams looking for opening and Cloud9 gonna have the better of this situation with the snipe in hand. It'll be really interesting to see how Renegade plays this. I mean, to show of respect from both teams here, recognizing that Cloud9 have a sniper rifle, okay. Let's not show. Oh. However, that's root grenade might cause some problems. Bound, gonna narrowly miss the shot. Penguin's gonna be trading out some kills. It looks like FaZe decided to try and make a push onto the tower, but C9 have held it off for now. Now they have their most established lead of the game so far. Renegade with the cleanup. Mangler in his hands. Sniper out of their hands as the ammo has expired. Six seconds until that next one drops. Yeah, I'm not sure about that push, right? You you slow the game down for a reason, and then you try to formulate this push. It doesn't go your way, and now Cloud9 have a significant lead. They do get two unanswered kills here. Let's see if Renegade's able to do anything about it. Three go down for Cloud9. Camo is up, so maybe that push that looked like it was a fail they've rebounded perfectly off respawn and look like they're going to be able to secure camo with a little bit of help with that bound again just hitting shots not just shots but shots when they matter two body shots a clean up and that will give cloud nine just one kill to play with now they need nine phase need 10 but camo and snipe is in the hands of bound can this young man make a play a superstar in the making. This could be one of those moments that we remember from Bound's oh early years sheesh. as he rips Stellar's head off. Stellar didn't see it coming because he has this camo. Penguin doesn't oh. see it coming either. Bound with another major headshot. Opens up the map for his team. Almost spawns Snipes' his teammate. But no, he's got a perfect position now oh my on Cloud9 God. trying to push out of house. Another body shot finished with the battle rifle. Perfect shots from Bound have kept his team in the lead. One kill the difference, even after I nearly got fined. Because holy something, that was good from Bound. But now he has to keep it going. It's not enough to do it once. He's going to have to do something pretty crazy again. Three bullets in the chamber here to work with. But can Just he hit a headshot? Done. Can he give them the opening? Shots coming in from top middle from Penguin here. Bound's going to play this one slow. Look at all Cloud9 making their way outside towards the camo. They know Bound is out here by green. I want to see Bound reposition towards this camo, especially it coming up in 15 seconds. You want to have a position on it. You want to get eyes on it. He's going to choose to push towards house, though. They're not going to give this camo up for free. And unfortunately, because, yeah. he's going to run right into an eco that has heat wave. Bad decision by Bound. Eco picks up a huge kill. Not only taking down Bound, getting the snipe out of his hand. And this could potentially be where Cloud9 secure camo. 46 46 eco has that sniper rifle he's seen what bound can do can you do something similar penguin pushed up to try and be the bait to a phase player to just pop ahead round a corner 47 47 eco does hit that shot with a sniper rifle please go back to eco observer because i want to see if he could clutch this game up right now he's got the heat wave in his hands he gets another kill as well 48 47 as we have two kills now a stellar and renegade will close the game out c9 this time around have the ice but i tell you what when this series is done i'm gonna be exhausted oh my god oh phase is so close going up 2-0 in a series against cloud nine in the winners finals and it's just one decision that bound's gonna be kicking himself after the phenomenal plays from bound with that snipe the decision to try and push through a to defend that next camo respawning is going to be one that FaZe will regret at least for the moment you have to think if you're bound and you have snipe you go back to tower you get eyes on that camo you have a power position to work around things could have gone very differently but instead you meet eco you meet the heat wave and it was eco that makes the play of the game a wise decision to anchor that base and not have everyone focus on camo and because he makes that decision he wins his team the game i think bound maybe is an experienced thing in those situations you need to make the mistake to make sure you don't make it again right he just did some of the most ridiculous stuff we've seen in the halo championship pro series so far towards the end of that game and you can't blame him right the adrenaline's going to be flying through oh. you you think you're going to be able to make the play to win the game for your team go two up sometimes you just gotta take a deep breath and slow things down that shot as well onto penguin i mean the pressure that is under in these shots is it cannot be explained people at home it is just unimaginable but maybe just a little bit overzealous as the cat ears will flop this time 
I mean, it's the one gun you don't want to run into, right? It's yeah. the one yeah. player on the map you don't want to see in your face as you slide in. I was wondering what this play was going to be because they waited until about 15 seconds for Bound to kind of react to Camo coming up. And at that point, Bound's kind of pressed to get there, right? He can't take his time. So he has to slide in the big door. He has to sprint, slide in there, trying to make sure he's there on time to help compete for Camo. And unfortunately, I mean, Cloud9 just get the better of that situation. The veterans play the close game to, to a T. They find themselves fighting back in this series now, all tied up going into a map three of Street Strongholds. Well, here we go then. We saw a close one between these two teams previously when we were on this exact map on Strongholds. Let's see if we can see it again. Falcate's triple kill was something of note that we were talked about for quite some time, but off the break here, it's gonna be three dead for FaZe. C9 off the back of that last win. Starting our next game with some momentum here, but Snipe down again. Two kills for him, that's three dead, and the Rocket's in his hands as well. Yeah, two kills, but more importantly, takes down the Rocket player. Actually has both Rockets still to work with, and this could be a huge push for Snipe down fans as he finds himself an assist, a kill, and an opening for the rest of phase to look to trip cap early in this game. Renegade's trying to stay alive at the back of the sea here. Both players from Cloud9 are trapped. I like the aggressive push again from FaZe. They have AB control and they will be scoring and they will be up by around 15 or so points by the time that C9 get anywhere near a stronghold. But for now, it looks like the control is trying to be held at B. That opening kill is massive, but here's a flank coming in from Eco. And just to pick up one, but he'll be taken down as well. Stellar last alive now for C9. Three dead. Yeah, three dead. Stellar last guy alive needs to try and play his life. But right now, Faze look like they're doing a phenomenal job of, of dominating once again in the slate. So I snipe down at six, one and one is showing you that snipe down is back in Halo Infinite and he's here to make a statement. It's only a matter of time till he had one of these days, I said, and it could be that today is the snipe down day Jeez. that we remember. He's going to have to keep it up, not just for this game, but the rest of the series as well, because any kind of foot being taken off the gas here by any player and i mean from either team it's probably going to cost you a game at the moment c9 managed to get control of b a good push from them 50 to 8 the score first time that we've seen phase on the back foot so far in this game how can they respond now wes as we're going to see falcate in oh. a 1v and he wins it against renegade not often do you see one-on-ones one against renegade but that's how special of a talent falcate can be he's so consistently good at getting his kills and not letting players like Renegade get the better of him. And that's a massive opening because Renegade gets taken down. They get the spawns they need. They get the push they need. And he's able to secure B for the meantime. But Renegade right off spawn finds himself with a kill on the B and recaptures it for Cloud9. So just like that, you're going to have to kill Renegade more than once to try and win this game. Yeah, it's hard enough when he's uh, just standing there with a the stalker rifle. We put a drop wall in front of him. It becomes even more difficult. And look at the awareness of the spawns as well. Shots. Onto bound means that Penguin can now move in from bottom middle to collect the rockets here for Cloud9. It's a triple cap for them. Complete control for Cloud9. And they know where FaZe is spawning. Rocket's going to connect here from Penguin as well. The damage being done. Trades do come through though for FaZe. So those rockets did a ton of damage, but three go down for Cloud9. Somehow FaZe still win that fight, even with that rocket damage from Penguin. Although Stellar, last guy alive, able to do some work with the Bulldog shotgun, able to get that player out of B. Can't quite hop in it yet as he has multiple pressure from tires and, and flowers from multiple members of FaZe, but Stellar dips, dodges, and secures B as he looks to be aggressive now with this Bulldog shotgun in the back pocket. Oh, what a ridiculous play that was from Stella. I'm not quite sure how he's alive, let alone how he's managed to control B for this entirety of this life that he's had in front of him. BC still in control, but as I say, that looks like FaZe have made the push onto C now. So Stella's going to be thinking about kills and he's going to pick one up onto Bound as well. The beatdown giving him the killing spree as he tries to survive now. FaZe 2 dead. Stella making the move from PD towards A. As the slays start to even up in the scoreboard, so does the score itself. You're seeing three strongholds all being transferred in different directions, but it's going to be Cloud9 that get the better of these three as B actually gets reset, C gets captured, and A gets captured. And now we're looking at four dead for FaZe, a trip cap for Cloud9. And this is a very dangerous spot for FaZe because we've seen Cloud9 run with trip caps and in games just like this one they have now. So he's not down trying to bait out that stronghold, but Stella's too wise for that. 
C9 now have the mm. lead, and they have somewhat of a lead as well. A and B in their control. At least FaZe have managed to get control of C for a few moments, and FaZe have also somehow managed to get away with two rockets. So Boo Boo has the chance now just to slow this game down, play for a few kills. Renegade will be found, and now FaZe can move up the map. Good job here from Boo Boo to create that space we talk about so much. Yeah, Boo 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 actually finds two. Unfortunately, Snipe Dun does go down, so it's a 3v2 in this situation. Make it a 2v2 as Bound goes down. Boo Boo Boo, it's an aid, and Eco makes the play to keep his team in control now over 50 points eco looks to press the third the three cap once again can't find the double but that would have been something special for eco smith and put a lot of pressure on face so that was a big kill from whoever was in train okay it's still alive renegade manages to take him down though a and b in the control of c9 but with renegade lurking around the back of c he's gonna be able to pinch these spawners snipe down in a 1v1 you have to win that if you snipe down just to give the rest of your teammates some room to breathe he won it and he's done exactly that it looks like phase now make the move on to a yeah they are gonna have an ac set up here as penguin looks to push front front trees and snipe down and his teammate able to take him down. Sniper needs to stay alive here, though. This setup is so difficult to hold. We see only Sentinels really have success here in tournament play with this setup. And you know that FaZe want to look to try and push B, but they know they have to play this one patiently, get some slays. And just like that, Falcated, Boobadoobo, they both find one. Penguin gets the better of Boobadoobo right there, but it's immediately traded out. Three go down for Cloud9, and we could be looking at a FaZe trip cap very shortly. We could. How quick are they going to move on to B, though? We're going to allow the spawns to come in because it looks like Red Room and B is where those spawns have come in now for Cloud9. Stellar and Penguin trying to ro rotate back to C. They have Bound just waiting. Trapped. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, Bound, Bound trying to do what he can. I think he's just waiting for some teammates to come and help him, but no one was there. Oh, my God, that push. You hate to see that. If you're bound, you know you're by yourself. You want to play that a little bit slower. And unfortunately, Cloud9 somehow looked like they were trapped downhill, able to come out on top with the slays. And because of it, they're going to flip the map entirely. Going to be looking at an AC setup themselves. But no, C actually gets reset for the moment. It looks like Boobadoobo across the map made the play to reset C. Slays do come through once again for FaZe and three dough down for Cloud9 as well. What a run this has been from FaZe, by the way. It hasn't been the cleanest of holds for them, but with this hold, BC in their hands, and also a rocket launcher by the looks of things or the sounds of things, maybe they can take the lead here. 144 and rising. C9 stuck on 150 for now, and it looks like Eco, after that double kill, is going to make the play on to B here. FaZe won't be able to go into the lead. C9 will turn back over B. It's still such a close game. Still so much to be determined, but you cannot let Cloud9 start to dominate the map control story. FaZe has done such a good job to get out of these situations so far throughout this game. Can they do it once more with this push? Snipe down picks up one with the grenade. Stella is going to be working with Renegade, who once again has the protection of the drop wall. And now the push is coming in. So it looks like FaZe have made the commitment towards B. Stella's going to be trying to move up to help out his teammates but snipe down again with a 1v1 win snipe down picking up a double kill as well eco now last alive looking to move in to clean up these kills gets one to snipe down but there's bound with the stalker rifle phase get control of b they get control of a as well by the looks of things they have a triple cap and phase if they hold this for just a few moments will turn the lead in their favor that jump is huge because he's going to get the first couple of shots on the eco because he's coming from that direction eco doesn't assume that there's a player in that back commando side they are going to be able to stop the bleeding of the trip cap with the control of C, but a great job here by Falcated to Ooh. apply some pressure, stay alive, find himself a kill. But unfortunately, three go down for FaZe. In the meanwhile, an A already being transferred in Cloud9's favor. So you saw FaZe take a lead for just a brief second, but the slays come through. And once again, the team at the deficit, at the disadvantage, has come out on top in the slays as rockets come off respawn. You're seeing the battle go down now. What a series this is. B is going to be turned over by C9. C goes in control of phase, so C9 will be scoring. They will take the lead in just a few moments as well, but Booby with the rockets is going to connect nice with a body and also get the kill as he falls into the grave. Two dead though for phase. C9 looking to answer back, but look at this again. The pace is being matched here by phase. They're on top of A. Bell making the play. Renegade trying to slow it down. On top of A, and now once again, an AC setup for phase clan they're going to be start to lose b what's the decision here it's going to be to push b as c gets transferred over so cloud nine once again stuck in back tram look to try and push out if phase can get a few rounds of slays they can take this game three phase go into the lead here 
We've seen it back and forth. Leads exchange between these two teams. Stella now trying to push Boo Boo and will win. They fight Eco and Stella both almost simultaneously win the fights to give C9 an advantage. Drop wall goes down here. Stella trying to push inside. Might be able to use it in his favor now as the push will come in from FaZe. But it looks like B will be turned back over by C9. But while all this is happening, look what's happening at C. Yeah, C does get transferred over, but that's Cloud9's Q. Hey, we got A for free because all of FaZe just ended up spawning at C, and the pressure is on in the back of C. Still, Eco, you know Cloud9 like to push this C stronghold. They know they like to have a trip cap, and Eco already with the pressure finds one. And now if Dubu loses this fight, it could be big. But Dubu comes out on top in a crucial 1v1 to keep his team at just a two-cap deficit. Instead of a three-cap, Cloud9 may have been able to end it just there with that one-on-one, -on -one. but Boobadubu Boobadubu keeps this game going on for a little bit longer, but FaZe are going to have one, maybe two pushes to their names. Rockets are coming up as well in a few moments. Renegade has the Bulldog all stacked over at B. Spike Grenade's going to be blown up. Stella going to move in to pick up the Rockets. FaZe need to be perfect here, and FaZe don't have much time to play with. 235 and moving upwards here. Booby with a kill on the feed. The play is at B, and it looks like B will be turned over, but can they survive now with Ren Stella, excuse me, coming forward with the Rockets, with Renegade, with the Bulldog, or C9 just baiting this stronghold for a few moments to get the kills and turn it back in their favor. Yeah, such a patient play by Stellar. It pays off both Rockets' fine kills. A great Brilliant. push from Stellar has secured both B and C now for Cloud9 phase immediately have to hop into A. And at 2.43, they have such little time to get in another stronghold. This is going to be game here. B, C, oh. and Stella picking up kills means game three will go to C9. And it was brilliant. Those final moments to not panic, to bait B, to turn it back over. He's showing that Cloud9 have still got that chill factor about them. They go up 2-1 in the series. That ice in their veins when it comes down to a one-play difference in the end of both of these games. Cloud9 have come out on top. We saw such a close game one victory from FaZe, but since then, they haven't been able to stop the ice of Cloud9. And you really have to settle yourself if you're FaZe and say, hey, we are in the position to close these games out. Let's just slow it down and finish how we want to. It's It was a double cap control for FaZe when they were looking at all of Cloud9 spawning in Tram and somehow they lose that fight as Cloud9 starts to fight uphill and push the B stronghold. Somehow Cloud9 are able to come out on top and that is a, uh, that's a situation that you cannot lose if you're Cloud9 or if you're FaZe, I'm sorry. We'll have a look at some of the highlights and there are a lot to talk about, but it was just, uh, it was a war. It was a battle between these two teams in this game number three. Stella with some big plays. And one thing I wanted to point out about how well Stella actually played in that game as well was not just the amount of times that he managed to get kills, Wes, but staying alive in situations where FaZe had to find him. FaZe had to make a play to get that kill. Otherwise, you come behind enemy lines and just be a, a nuisance, so to speak. And those extra few seconds make all the difference here on this Street Strongholds game type. Yeah, Stellar is a player that's going to give you nothing. He's going to make you work for every single kill you get on him. And it was really his route with the Rockets. The patient play, the understanding, hey, I'm losing teammates over at B. You guys, is, your lives are lost. When you guys get off respawn, look to push because I'll be ready then. And the fact that he was able to get Rockets unscathed get to a secure location, relocate, and then get in a position to where he could successfully push with numbers after getting that first pick was the difference in that game three. We're hopping into game four now. It's going to be Aquarius, CTF, and Cloud9 have been very dominant on this game type in the past, especially in tournaments. If you're phased, you have to find a way to push this the distance. Well, here we go then. Game number four of the series, and it has been an incredible watch so far between these two teams. We'll start off with the point of view of Renegade, the man who made the plays towards the end of that game with a Bulldog in his hands. A couple of kills going to be exchanged, but it's actually FaZe. You find themselves four dead off the rip. What an opening strat that was from C9. Camo in the hands of Renegade. He's got thrust to work with as well. Not the best start here if you wanted to see FaZe on the front foot. Not what you want to see at all if you're a FaZe Clan fan because Renegade with this camo is known to be a nuisance, known to do so much work and already finds himself the first kill. Spots a second. That's a perfect kill for Renegade on screen. And that's three dead for FaZe once again. Renegade now moving 
into utility trying to move across the bridge in towards the base a couple of players from phase are going to be in the back of the base though and they might be oh. hunt him out but i tell you what those commando shots they're pretty good that recoil control looking pretty spicy from renegade bound now coming off the respawn in the refrigerator manages to do the damage to at least allow snipe down to get some kills but t9 find themselves too dead but so do phase important 1v1 in the base here and falcated once again wins it yeah even though renegade did some serious work with that camo props to face for having the defense that they just had defending it off and now fighting for map control now that they've gotten the slays and cloud nine out of their base you dodged a bullet there but you can't continue to give those camos away to renegade but for now no harm no foul eco gonna challenge boo boo eco eco excuse me eco that's a combination of the two maybe a love child that will be found in the future but if not for now as penguin finds himself now last player alive phase also find themselves of only one player on the map it's going to be bound here trying to be aggressive trying to put the pressure on has the heat wave in his hand but look at c9 trying to hunt him down almost immediately a uh, wildfire bound's able to get out of there at least for now does good damage on the eco immediately gets traded out from boobadoo and that's a great job by him to just get that heat wave away from the enemy team they do have a snipe down in their base to deal with and stellar he's going to have help from renegade so now it's going to be last guy alive bound in the back of cloud nine's base stellar is going to wait wisely for a teammate as they look to try and push this and i mean cloud nine is just so good at understanding the situation the assignment and then waiting for teammates or challenging necessarily and appropriately and that's why this defense looks so strong right now renegade has a second camo as well flag is away so oh gonna God. be on the return but i tell you what the pulse carbide every single burst that thing hits it hits hard and now bound might find that self find that out himself the flag is moved back by eco this is going to be the first flag going in for cloud nine one to zero and renegade in position with three dead for phase to run the second yeah the double cap is a very strong reality right now as renegade does get knocked to no shield here still gets the flag across halfway nobody from cloud nine is going to be shooting focused on renegade so this is going to be the second flag going in and it's all because renegade's work that he was doing in the enemy base when the first flag was being run Penguin gets met by a team nade off of the respawn, which is unfortunate, but I'm sure he's going to be more than happy that he sees Renegade putting that flag in after all of C9's hard work. The flag going to be tossed out mm. again. Phase, though, managed to get three dead here. Penguin, last player alive with the commando. And again, those shots just eliminating bound. There's a heat wave, though, to try and match him. Booby with a kill. Now an opportunity to move the flag for Phase. It's unbelievable how talented these guys are with that commander rifle. Such a difficult weapon yeah. to master, but it, they're making it look easy. They're securing such quick kills with it because of it. They're creating such a great opening for their team. Stellar does find a kill onto the flag carrier, but can't quite get to the flag return because bound off the skies of top dynamo is able to find that kill. Kills do come through for both sides. But with some great nades could potentially get his team one step closer to tying this game up. But now he gets taken down to go down for Cloud nine and this flag should go in for phase but not without a great deal of cloud nine suppression on the way there renegade trying to push into the base and renegade combining with stella is going to be able to do some work stella somehow still alive in the base and even though phase have managed to put that flag uh -oh. home the opportunity for a counter cap is there for c9 three players dead here for phase c9 already getting that flag moving and renegade survives as well can they finish off renegade before he can get this flag too far is the question because eco finds a kill in the kill in the kill feed on the falcated they do get nades onto him before he makes it through the doorway but now it's up to the rest of phase to try and find kills bound with two could be the difference maker here on this third flag run for phase falcated a little bit late to the party but it doesn't matter because the rest of the boys in blue are here to punch that one in stellar himself punches it in and, and takes the lead three to one early still in this game phase had to commit so many resources to getting that flag back inside of their base and the counter cap opportunity was there and c9 did not fumble it eco inside the utility once more just trying to survive for now falcated trying to loop back to make sure that he's not too much of a problem two kills do go in the favor here of c9 but that will actually, excuse me, of phase. The C9 find themselves down by three. Players going to be ticking away inside utilities. The dynamos will down, go down as well. As now the heat wave is going to be the difference maker maybe here for phase to create the opening to get that flag off the stand. Bound wants to try and go for this fight, knowing that he needs to try and get this game a little bit closer in the scoreline. But unfortunately, nades come through. He gets rocked in no shield. Falcated with a big double in the kill feed. He's going to open up the base of Cloud9, and that's Bound's cue to get this flag the hell out of the base and punched in to try and keep your team in this series. 
We were talking about fast penguins last week with flag runs, but this guy is just living up to his name as he bounds across the map with a drop slide to get the flag off the stand. And FaZe oh. now find themselves just one flag away. And Falcated is moving the second flag as well. It could be back to back here and we could have a tie game. Unbelievable. Falcated already gets this flag to halfway. FaZe are going to have to get a few kills if they want to punch this one in. But Booba Dooba with the slide gets it a little bit farther than it could have been. But no. Three dead for, for FaZe and Falcated. We know he's coming off spawn. He's not going to be in a great position at all to try and contest this. It looks like Cloud9 may have stopped this third cap from going in. They stopped it and they've also, uh, have to say to FaZe, even though they were coming off the respawn and find themselves in a tough spot there, managed to shut down the camouflage and that is really really important for them to do and look at those shots oh. coming in from boo boo doo boo the man is starting to feel himself a little bit here it is back and forth between these two still in our map number four three two the difference between the teams one flag and phase will tie this up but for c9 they feel like they get another flag on the board that could be the dagger in the heart phase yeah you do not want to go down two flags especially going under five minutes here shortly there's not going to be a ton of time left in this game so players need to figure out a way to tie this game up for FaZe. Renegade's gonna look to try and run another flag. Gonna try and spawn kill Snipe down as well, but Snipe down gets the better of him with that melee battle. And because of it, he denies any opportunity Cloud9 has with that flag run, but they need to do much more on the offensive side if they wanna tie this one up, even take the lead to push this to a game five. Love this position in here from Snipe down as well. The front of the base is such an underrated place to actually play here on Aquarius. There's the thrust as well, but Renegade is going to be able to reposition to make sure he hits the shots that he needs to to survive. And now he's going to go back to the fridge. We've all been there before. And now C9 looks to stabilize on the map a little bit here. I think you're trying to starting to see both teams showing the respect that they kind of deserve after the series they've had at the moment between each other. Nobody wants to make that mistake because they know how it can hurt. Now Renegade has some work to do because he has to flank these players and get the kills. Otherwise, C9 can find themselves with a snipe down in the base, and that's never a good place to find yourself. He has work to do. He puts his hard hat on. He finds himself the first kill. Can I'll he find defend him, this flag for his team? Can he buy time for his team to come off respawn? He's looking for these players, and he runs into a bound that's no shield, and Renegade, the work is done. A great job by him to slay out of his base come back to his flag understand that he may ne needs to make sure that face does not get that flag out the door and because of it they keep this lead for now penguin gets taken down however it's on the defensive side here booby trying to stay alive with this camo is this the opening that could be created here for phase Camo in the hands of Boo Picks up one kill, pick up two kills, and all of a sudden, this is a flag moving. That's three dead momentarily Huge. for C9. He gets that flag all the way back to his teammates mm. as well. He has the thrust. Is there a teammate there to continue the run, though? That's the question. He didn't quite manage to get through that door. And that could be the difference here, Wes, and that flag being moved or not. Yeah, I don't agree with that run. That angle is directly open to the players that are going to be spawning in that fridge area. And because of it, that flag is so difficult to try and move now that it's stuck down in front of that doorway. It's such an easily natable spot as well. So they're going to have to slay once again if they want to try and get this flag on the move. And unfortunately, multiple members of FaZe are starting to drop. Just under three minutes left in this game. C9 just need to hold on. FaZe need to go forward. They need to get inside that base. Two players fall on either side for now. Bound going to be on the back foot as Eco tries to put the oh pressure back on to FaZe. That's not fear, no man, whatsoever. Snipe down, though. Oh, we had to be careful there as the thrust did come in. Renegade looking to clean things up, but Snipe down has to be careful as he does some big damage once more. Bound taken down by Stellar. It's just carnage across the map at the moment, and all the kills happening at the 50-yard line. Yeah, but the carnage in the 50-yard line kills typically will benefit Cloud9 oh, in this situation baby. unless Boobadoo in your flag. He's able to get a kill. He's able to get the flag run. He's able to get no. a shield. But nades come through. They take him down. And now multiple members of FaZe have to decide very quickly who's running. Is it who's slaying? And we need to get kills because if we can get this flag in, we can tie this one up. Oh, the flag is just not being the friend of FaZe right now. But it is going to be going home. Three oh. to three. Oh my word! Everything coming together for FaZe there. Boo Boo picking up a kill. Boo Boo getting the flag moving. Falcated exchanging kills across the map as well. And with one minute and 45 seconds left on the clock, Wes Bound has a camo. And FaZe look to move forward again. I love this play from Bound. I love the angle that he's taking the direction with this play. They're going to have information that he's here. Eco with the predictive nade. Get, receive some damage. So good damage by Bound. That's going to allow him to press this after he dodges that nade. Unfortunately, that second shot from Renegade bottom middle just gave away his location. 
So he wisely readjusts, finds himself a renegade kill, but Eco still to deal with back at this base. I love this aggression from Bound, but he's gonna have multiple members to deal with, and he's all by himself. You wanna see him play his life a little bit better. Camo is erased, and Cloud9 somehow get out of that situation that was looking grim. Uh, Cloud9 have got to be careful here. You can see three players inside of the base. They lose the kills here, and all of a sudden, this is bad, bad news. The flag is going to be moved. Stella manages uh -oh. to pick that up, and that is huge for Cloud9 to not go down without a trade there. As now they can fight forward for map control. Three, four for phase. Cloud9, it was a risky play, one that was necessary, but they come out on top. Big kill from Boobadoobie to reset the map right there. If he doesn't get that, you're going to look at a Cloud9 push that probably would have been very successful given the map control that they have, but that kill subsides that push for the meantime. Penguin taken down bottom middle. Two kills, four for Cloud9. Renegade now caught in a little bit of a predicament here, Wes. Does he go forward? Does he look for a oh, pull? Does it. he give the information? He's now relying on his teammates to pick up these kills because if they don't, Renegade is going to find himself in a very damage. tough position. He's about to do so much damage to these players. Boobadoobu not to have shield. About to have to force FaZe's hand now that he's got the flag out of the base. He's going to actually run it top pink. I don't remember the last time we saw this. Well, this is genius, Wes. Play. And I love this. Not even hit until the halfway mark he does lose his life but already cloud nine continue this run face do get a couple more kills they're trying to relay this one eco can he turn the corner he's knocked in O'Shea. no face is here face gets the stop and the reason i said that was genius is i think renegade expected some of his teammates to die in the closet side of the oh. map as we see the overtime ending so he decided <laughs> to run it towards where he thought the respawners would be coming in he almost managed to force it home it wasn't to be how we find ourselves in overtime next flag wins gosh i mean phase was right there for a counter cap opportunity but the pie chart runs out the map resets and we're gonna see who's gonna take this game for here and now renegade you know he's made of ice let's see what he's capable of as he finds the first kill of overtime he's gonna have to enter demon mode right now the renegade is gonna have to come out phase on the back foot of the star here c9 looking to clean up some of these kills falcated gets away for now eco We'll be able to have a think about that one in the respawn screen for a few seconds. Phase now back to a full complement of players. Renegade, you can see, just trying to find anyone to shoot. He just wants to fight for now, but instead, it's going to be a case of surviving as Stellar and Eco will pick up the kills needed for C9. All right, how does Renegade want to play this situation? He's going to be behind enemy lines, gets shots under two, three, go down immediately, and it's all up the snipe down now. As Renegade takes him down, there's going to be one player alive pushing top pink, and if that player goes down, you can bet your bottom dollar Stellar's going to push this one in and take this series for Cloud9. Stellar gets it back to the base. It's just a case of saying hello to FaZe, giving him a wave before you send him down to the elimination bracket. Cloud9 made to work. But C9 win the series three to one. That was one of the greatest Halo Infinite series I have ever seen. And FaZe came to play, but it still wasn't enough to take down the juggernaut that is Cloud9. The ice in their veins across every single game that they won. They had to clutch up. Someone had to step up and make a play, but it was really a collective effort by the group of the boys in blue that got the job done here in our winners finals and now cloud nine find themselves once again awaiting the elimination bracket in the grand finals cloud nine like you say wes grand finals again the 4p is on but for phase when we take a second to think about it wes it's still the same story it was back and forth it was back and forth they were so so close but when you look back at the series result it still says 3-1 to Cloud9. All we will remember is that Cloud9 won this series, but FaZe are showing us so much of what they're capable of. And if this is any sample of the future between these two teams, I mean, sign me up. I'm here all season, baby, because FaZe are starting to get the job done. They're starting to click. And with one or two more kills, one or two more plays, they will be able to create that upset against Cloud9. They will find themselves champions in their own right, but today may not be that day as we see once again how strong of a team Cloud9 can really be. Yeah, I think I'd say 3-1 uh, to C9 with a little bit of a 
a smile on my face, a uh, cheeky smile on my face, because it didn't feel like a 3-1, put it that way. It could have been a game five. It could have been a game seven. It was about as close as you can get between the two teams. And like you quite rightly said, it was just a few plays and a few kills that made the difference. Here is the uh, winner's final series layout. The end of the thing, Oddball Recharge went to phase, but then it was that crazy, crazy Slayer game. The C9 managed to clutch up 250 to 217 Street Strongholds. And then we saw the overtime win for cloud nine on aquarius capture the flag i'm pretty exhausted to be honest with you what a series lottie that was an unbelievable showing from both teams dude i mean it was insane to the point where i literally got to, like onto twitter and i was like look just get in here trust me this is unbelievable stuff phase my goodness i know i i want to talk about cloud nine and obviously how incredible it was for them to to really seal the deal there three to one but my god phase i have talked about growth with this team so much growth seems to be my buzzword every time phase is mentioned and my goodness could it be not more true right now this team is not only are they able to get the slays and get them where it's necessary but the plays that they are making we're seeing plays from the likes of bound boo boo doo boo coming forward making the place to pull the flag and and rush it through into their closet and, and obviously getting naded on the way but just really heads up on the entire of this team here and the teamwork seems to be spot on bravo talk to man because phaser have been making waves here and i think going toe to toe with cloud nine despite the series score here is huge for this roster heading into Anaheim. Yeah, certainly this is the best we've seen FaZe without a doubt. I'm curious to, to hear from the C9 guys about what they're seeing from FaZe because we heard from them weeks ago saying we know this FaZe roster is getting better and, and we're worried about exactly what that's going to look like. So I think FaZe looks uh, the best they've ever looked. And I also think just in terms of, like you said, composure, timing, they're not just staying toe to toe. When they were leading C9, they were doing it with control, with power, and they were leading also just continuing to keep C9 on things like spawn rotation. So I continue to be more and more impressed. I echo you in, in what we're seeing from this FaZe roster. Yeah, it has been uh, honestly quite outstanding, to be honest. And there are small little mistakes here. And I think, you know, I, I think that does kind of correspond to the series score because, you know, I think Clutch, you said it in the cast, like you have to play perfect Halo against Cloud9. If you make a mistake, you are going to get punished for that. And there was a couple of times and in instances there, Life Fly Slayer, you know, we saw Bound make a little bit of a bad decision to push through A. He kind of overextended a little bit to try and guard uh, the, the camo. And, and, and honestly, that's going to be hurting them in the long run but again seeing then bound going off with the sniper and ripping faces of the likes of cloud nine uh, says a lot about this guy we've kind of talked about bound a little bit here and, and clutch talk to me about what you're seeing from this young man and his growth with this team yeah, i mean the individual skill is undeniable um it, it's it's movement it's his shot it's decision making it's all there it's just a matter of like does he have the experience, right, to close out some of these games against these veterans in Cloud9? And I think, like, he's gaining this experience the hard way, unfortunately. Uh, and, and learning from from these mistakes is is an important piece to the puzzle when you're trying to put a phase championship together. I think for Bound, what he can do is just continue to understand, like, sometimes it's I need to be the hero and sometimes I need to just do basic Halo and be that, like, support role and, and take care of, like, the, the obvious things. like. When that camo is coming up, I think the obvious play is to bring the snipe back to tower and try and anchor for your team. Uh, something that probably like a Royal 2 would do. But Bound, he's a little bit different of a player. He loves to play aggressive. He loves to get in their faces. So what does he try to do? He tries to cut, get a surprising angle on the guys, but it's, it's really Cloud9 getting the better of him, reading that situation, understanding who they're playing against, knowing kind of Bound's tendencies, getting the better of him in that situation and right back in the series because of it. Yeah, it has indeed. And talking about the series, of course, Cloud9 do the job yet again. They push through the winner's bracket and talking of, let's have a little look at it as well. Cloud9 in your grand finals one more time. It is the last pro series, of course, for a little bit. So honestly, come on, of course it'd be Cloud9 in that grand finals. And as you can see, it's been a little bit of a different journey for the C9 roster. Obviously dropping a map here and there uh, in their journey of winners because something that we haven't really seen too much of Cloud9. Usually they come through uh, a pretty straight sailing with uh, with two and O's across the board here and a three and O in the winners finals usually uh, on set cloud nine dude oh my goodness I mean I think you know it, it kind of shows when they get challenged you know a lot of the time we're talking about them getting pushed uh, and it's kind of difficult to have a challenge for cloud nine but the decision making of this team and uh, and the, the teamwork coming forward from C9 is just unbelievable even when their backs are against the wall sometimes I think uh, the thing that I took away from uh, speaking or when we, we spoke to C9, right? They play every game like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. 
and that shows in the last two percent one percent of a game more than anyone else at the moment everyone else starts to get a little bit panicky everyone else starts to think oh we need to do this we need to do that c9 just play it like it's you know zero zero it's it's an almost intangible skill to have as a group of players to to be able to install that level of calmness and and coolness in those situations and the, the strongholds game was a perfect example i think it was tied up at 208 each uh, and you know c9 yeah. let one player move in they let the cap go because they realized they had time to get rockets to get the bulldog and then make a push off the back of it and what are you going to do after that if you die and you lose the stronghold you've got to go up against players with power positions and power weapons it's 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 so difficult to, to teach that as a player it's something i feel like you just have ingrained in you especially as a squad and c9 do it best at the moment they do indeed they have that muscle memory they have uh, exactly what it takes to beat some of the best teams we have here in halo infinite and speaking of the best team we have right now renegade on standby for an interview uh renegade dude just unbelievable stuff from you guys i gotta say that was one of the best series we've had so far in halo infinite and i think that is also testament to your opponent's phase talk to me about this we talked a lot about how good you guys are and i've spoken to you a few times about you know what you're working on but when it came to phase here in this winners finals that we've had every single week so far what was different about this phase roster what was so challenging about that series from you guys and your point of view um personally i feel like phase was playing really good like they're they were actually playing really good i think they were helping each other more I think that's been their problem for a minute so they kind of got better at like shooting together and like pushing the same things so it made it, it made it hard for us and i also think that we aren't winning as much 1v1s as we normally do so i think that makes us rely on like our teamwork more so like i think we could still win like nitty gritty but like if we're not winning our 1v1s like it's just it's gonna make it like harder it's gonna be more like fight notch game Certainly, yeah. Renegade, congrats on the series win. I uh, want to know right now, based off what you're seeing, do you guys, as, as a squad, feel like FaZe right now is, is probably your biggest competition uh, in the league? Uh, yeah, I'll say FaZe or Optic, kind of like however they're playing. I mean, I, I'm ready to play sure. against uh, Sentinels with, uh, you know, their full roster. I think I think those guys will yeah. definitely shake up everything. But uh, yeah, outside of that, I think right now it's uh, FaZe or Optic, depending on, like, you know, who's playing the best. Certainly, yeah. For sure. Now, Renegade, obviously, you guys are so far ahead in points in terms of the Pro Series. You, you of course, have had the most dominant performance we've seen all season long so far. I just want to know where your mindset's at as a team right now. Obviously, coming to this final Pro se Series for a while before Anaheim, you know, are you guys kind of working on a few things? I've seen you guys drop a few more maps than you usually would in, in a week. So, you know, are you guys preparing uh, with anything here going into Anaheim? I think the biggest problem for us is like we're just ready for land. Like I think, like the closer it gets to the land, the worse I feel like we play online. Like I don't know if that makes any sense, but like I think we just like yeah, it does. Yeah. We're just all fed up, you know. Like we're just ready to play on land. So <laughs> I think like we were we weren't playing really. I mean, today isn't over, right? But I think so far we weren't really playing our best as a team. But I mean, I think we're just ready for the tournament. You know, soon we're gonna start applying ourselves like this next coming week. Well, I think, sure. you know, I think you deserve LAN at this point, Renegade. I think you've deserved it. Uh, so it's safe to say I'm you ready. guys are looking pretty I damn good ready. out there. Best of luck through the rest of the bracket. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. Well, there you go. Nice composed Renegade as per usual when we, when we interview him. I got to say, you know, I think they understand, you know, like, they are a little bit shaky right now for them. Obviously, still winning series, still closing things out here. Uh, but I think they have a couple of little things that they want to work on. And, and like you said, you know, they're just eager to get back to that LAN environment. And on set, you know, if they're they're doing it this well online, should we all be really really scared about this next LAN tournament? Yes. Yeah. yeah. 100. Yeah. I think. Uh, <laughs> what else do you want me to say? I think the one t takeaway I think that Renegade actually gave me from that is like how good FaZe are individually. Like, if you ain't winning your 1v1s in your Cloud9, that says more about FaZe than it does Cloud9, I feel. It's it's a testament to the likes of Falcated, Bound, Snipe Down, and Boo Boo. I think uh, FaZe is certainly going to be a team to watch. And that series, if they, if they match up on LAN, is certainly going to be one to uh, make sure you've got a comfy seat for. Yeah, it, it certainly will be. I mean, I, I want to see a rematch here for, for sure. So maybe FaZe will uh, bounce back up, of course. We'll have a look right now at the elimination bracket, though, because this is where we're at, folks. We have our grand final set with Cloud9. But the question is, who is going to be bouncing back up to meet them? And with that, we've got our elimination semifinals happening right now. And Sentinels, okay. 
We've got 1-0 currently versus Optic Gaming. This is, uh, is going to be a bit of a stir here, I think, if Sentinels do take down Optic. Optic obviously being in the Grand Finals twice in the past couple of weeks here. Going into this Elimination Finals, this could be a little bit crazy here. You know, what, what's going through your mind clutch looking at that result so far? Yeah, so far, uh, I would say it's surprising because Optic Gaming 2 0 Sentinels in the, in the winner's bracket here today. And, and for them to match up once again in the elimination semifinals, we would be seeing a, a history repeating itself situation where Sentinels was knocked out in Raleigh into the elimination bracket from Optic Gaming and then match up against them again and get the better of them. So it's a very interesting situation going on. I would love to see Optic Gaming make that a series, push that to a game three. The Sentinels with that addition of formal right now uh, seems like they are are very competitive, at least against Optic Gaming. But for me personally, I think I want to see that Optic Phase rematch and see if they have what it takes to step up their level of play and, and match Phase's level that we already just saw in the Winners Finals. Now, this might be a little bit of an odd question, bro, but you know, Snakebite said that there is no real strategy to this at all. There's no tactics. They're just kind of playing to play and taking the situation as it comes. Are we seeing a little bit of a reverse honeymoon here? You know, it's Formal's last time with the boys. You know, they're kind of going out on a whim and just having fun. You know, are we seeing this reverse honeymoon period from the Sentinels roster? I mean, sometimes that's what it takes, right? Sometimes just having a blast with, with guys that you've, you've known for a long time and play with them for a long time can, can really be all it takes. But also just the amount of talent on that Sentinels roster, they can pop off at any time. Like we said, we thought they were going to lose that earlier series. They bounced back and win, you know, the, the two games back to back, and, and they really just showed up in a huge way. So I think with the Sentinels guys, uh, at any moment, I don't care if they're down by 10, 12 kills, they can come back in Slayer, they can bring back a flag game. Uh, so I think certainly uh, we're going to see a run from them and uh, might be able to go even deeper into the tournament. Well, I'll tell you what, I've got something pretty cool to deliver you right now, and that is another series. So we're going to jump into map number two of Sentinels versus Optic right now. Uh, Sentinels did take that first odd ball, but this could be a swing in map number two for Optic. So, on set, clutch is over to you, guys. We're back. We're back. Hey. Surprise series, everybody. They can't get enough of us, Wes. That's what it is. Or maybe we were just the last people to commentate. Probably more likely to be that one. But we are jumping into map number two now, Wes. And as you can see from the score, Sentinels up by one against Optic. It is a best of three as well. It's Aquarius Slayer. And already off the break, you can see the Sentinels have a two kill advantage. Yeah, I'm seeing Lethal with three kills already. Make it four. And I love this because Lethal has been a player that I wanted to see more of, more out of even. Uh, for the Sentinels roster, especially since Infinite has started, we haven't seen the best of Lethal, and already today he's impressed me. It's great to see that he's statistically at least starting this game two out on the right foot. You can already see this has been a, a little bit of a slow start between the two teams. Nobody really wants to give up any kind of significant damage. One map that I think has been pretty unforgiving in Slayers. If you find yourself two or three dead is Aquarius. You can get trapped in those fridges and you can lose map control so, so easily. It can be one of those those games before you know it, Wes, there is a four, five, six, seven kill difference between the two teams. And that's what we're starting to see. Maybe Sentinels try to extend here. Interesting double back from Snakebite here. He can't get his shield because APG sees him, just nicks him with that nade and is able to buy enough time for his teammates to take him out. And just like that, Optic Gaming get a few kills back in their favor, but Lethal still on this tear, 6-0-1 right now, has given his team the difference in this four kill lead, at least for now. Camouflage is gonna be popping up as well. There's another beautiful cleanup coming in from Lethal to take down longtime friend APG. And look at that, Sentinels collapsing onto the final kills as well. One last player alive from Optic Gaming, and it looks like the respawns are coming in and already Sentinels on the hunt here. Snakebite putting the pressure on, Camo in the hands of Frosty, and the score is 16, 16 to nine. Yeah, Sentinels forced the split spawns as they pressured this back base. Great job anchoring top middle from Frosty with that camo. He's able to give his teammates so much information as they enter the base. They get the kills. They turn this into a 19 to 9 scoreline. And just looking across the stats, there's one that stands out to me already. As you can see, 19 to 9 the score. That is formal. He's only got one kill. He's only died twice, but he has 10, ten assists. assists. He is shooting everyone on the map at the moment, taking up such good vantage positions to do the damage for his team. I mean, uh, being awarded those 11 assists now, 111 and three, doing a phenomenal job of just putting damage in multiple members, making it easy for players like Lethal and Snakebite to get the kills that they've achieved so far. 13 kills is no easy comeback for Optic Gaming. Already down 1-0 in this best of three. They need to figure out a way 
and they need to do it quickly because Slayers can get out of hand very quickly, especially as Sentinels continue to maintain map control. One more snake bite pick up kills as well. Frosty just moving in to uh, pick up the crumbs that have been left from the meal. They can't find APG for now, but all of a sudden they do find APG. Lethal takes him down. I think APG was maybe going for the ninja there, but just couldn't find anything. And I'll tell you what, we say this could get out of hand, Wes. It is out of hand right now. 28 to 11. This game is out of hands, ladies and gentlemen. And Optic could be out of the tournament. Yeah, Optic is going to be out of the tournament. If they don't do something quick, and those two kills could be big. The pivotal moment that Optic Gaming was looking for. But they're going to need to turn those two kills into some map control. And to some dominant map control. Because right now, they still have so much work to do. If they want to try and come back. And two kills immediately getting answered is not what the green wall wanted to see. Crossing that 30 kill mark already. Sentinels. APG trying to do some damage onto these players on the car side of the map. But it's just not going to happen for now. Trippy going to be moving towards him. Lucid in the window with that commando rifle, but already under pressure. APG does pick up a kill onto Lethal, though, in the feed. So at least an opening here for Optic. you got to think in these situations, Wes. We've got to do to Sentinels what they did to us. It is very doable here. Winnable, if you like, here for Optic. Yeah, Saiyan playing this extremely slow, and we're seeing maybe a different side of Saiyan that we haven't seen in Halo Infinite. And he's typically a very in your face, a very like all over the map sliding, doing all sorts of movement. Doesn't that working out for the members of Optic Gaming there as they get two kills, but a trade does come through. And at this point, all Sentinels has to do is potentially trade out every one kill for two lives. And, and they're gonna find themselves victorious in this game. And unfortunately, it, they can't seem to find their footing. They can't seem to get any kind of control to where they have Sentinels on their back feet. Tell you what, Wes. If you call him Saiyan once more, I swear. Oh. <laughs> How many players change their names and it's just not fair? <laughs> no, you're completely right. At least it is uh, trying to do what he can. And you're quite right about the way that he is playing, just trying to make sure that he's a harder death as possible. And it's understandable with the scoreline how it is, right? As Lethal now has Trippy in front of him. Trippy will be taken down. And look at that heat wave shot. 37 to 23, the score as it extends once more. Lethal, the man with a double kill, looking for more onto APG. Stays alive for now, but Lucid with the commando will shut him down. A big kill on the Lethal to stop him from his terror that he's on so far through this game. 13 and 5 Lethal is, and it really is the difference that he has been for the Sentinels team to have some success today in the series that they've had their wins in. They do find themselves in the elimination bracket, so they do want to go on this run. Remember, if they can get on a hot enough run, they will be able to take that eighth or that seventh seed away from Space Station Gaming. They will be able to get out of Cloud9's pool, and I guarantee that they want to win this series and make that a reality going into Anaheim. They look to close the door on this series with just six more kills. Yeah, this is donezo, everybody. Unless uh, Optic maybe got a magic lamp they can find, a genie they can ask, and a few wishes they might be able to turn this series away. It ain't going to happen, as you can see. The only thing that they can avoid for now is the steak dinner. Five kills to go here. Frosty has the camo and Sentinels. We we asked what Sentinel's going to turn up today. Is it going to be the formal farewell 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 tour? I got out eventually, Wes. You can get me back for calling him uh, saying now, but <laughs> is it going to be the kind of goodbye they want to give him? Goodbye I mean, is a much easier word to say. I'm going to go with that next time. When we were talking about the interview with Snakebite and, and wondering like, hey, we're not really like playing with any purpose or whatnot. I did not buy that at all. No. And all honestly, <laughs> it allows Sentinels to play a little bit looser. It allows them to be stress-free in this environment, right? They no longer are like focused on improving with formal or proving themselves with formal or, or whatnot. So it's a, it's a proving ground as the game ends two to zero for Sentinels to have. And that pressure-free gameplay is a direct result of the scoreline in this series. Sentinels are going to take it 2-0 to zero over Optic Gaming, eliminating them from the bracket, moving on, and potentially securing that seventh seed for our, our DreamHack Anaheim event. And you can see the man who put up the stats once again is the man on the right-hand side of your screen, staring into your soul and giving you a couple of thumbs up along the way. It was lethal. I think he had 18 kills at the end of that game. Yes, indeed. 18 and 8 plus 10 in a Slayer is always a nice place to be. But again, just want to highlight the assists coming in from Formal. One of the most ridiculous stat lines I think I've ever seen at the start of a game. What was it? 1, 10, and 2? Something like one, that? 1, 2, and 10 at one point. And that was, uh, I believe, where the deaths started to amount. And... and 
display, but a great gameplay. I mean, when you're winning against a team like Optic 50 to 32, I don't care what anyone's individual stats were. It's a team effort. It's everybody got to be putting in work, applying pressure, doing the right things in order to have that level of a dominant win over a team like this Green Wall team. Well, some of the highlights are not going to be wanted to see by Optic fans, as it will be all pretty much Close in the favor eyes. of Sentinels. <laughs> Close your eyes. We'll let you let know when it's your okay. Ears. Remove all the senses because uh, it's time to look forward to Anaheim, I think is the thing for Optic fans. But that's, for Sentinels, I think it's a, a good thing to say as well. It's time to look forward to Anaheim with the way they play. That's my biggest takeaway from the series, though. This is the last time we will see Optic Gaming compete before going into Anaheim. They will be knocked out by a substitute Sentinels roster. And what does that do to Optic Gaming's mentality? A, a mentality that was on top of the world as this game came out, as they had the success that they had in those first few tournaments. They have a disappointing Raleigh event. They come back, a couple of successful pro series. We think the train's on the tracks again in the right direction. And then all of a sudden, you stumble over the finish line of the pro series here as they end getting, I believe, top four, which it doesn't sound bad, but in the way they did it, that's not the best way to be going into a &I. No, it, it definitely isn't. And I think, you know, considering, you know, right at the beginning of the broadcast, you know, we brought in some of the, the cool storylines of the fact that we have a race for second place. And two of the teams that were in this race for second place fell against the team that's in the race for seventh, eighth. So, I mean, the storylines right now are just getting flipped, which we love, of course, as broadcasters and viewers. It's absolutely amazing. But my question here, Barb, right now is the momentum that Sentinels are on right now. OK, obviously, the Sentinels with nothing really to lose here. They've they've got a great run ahead of them right now. You know, are they a little bit of a, an unknown entity for FaZe here? Because, you know, FaZe have been scrimming Sentinels, but they've been scrimming the Royal Two Sentinels, not yeah. the formal Sentinels. So, you know, is this honeymoon heating up Sentinels a bit of a scary prospect for them right now i think it is i think just like you said right now they're a wrecking ball they're coming through elimination bracket and they're knocking out as you said two-thirds of the teams that we talked about for that second place spot the fact that you see optic and e united fall to a substitute sentinels roster for me it's kind of sentinels heating up and they're showing what they might be able to bring like you said they've been scrimming for weeks now with royal too so i think sentinels is making a statement here that even without the full roster they are ready to do some damage through the bracket and i think phase right now they have no choice right the one team they have to worry about and look out for right now is what is sentinels up to how much do they have up their sleeve in week number four yeah, indeed it is exactly that there's so many questions not many answers right now but we will have some answers for you shortly let's just take a quick look at the bracket though just to see exactly where we're at now because things have been changing folks things have been really shifting here in this elimination bracket optic gaming out two to zero their dream of getting into that second position once again three times in a row potentially winning it against cloud nine is gone so we have our elimination finals ready for you guys phase versus sentinels uh, i gotta say phase based on how they're playing against cloud nine this is going to be very very difficult for sentinels to take although we've seen crazier things happen hopefully it'll be a hotly contested matchup but i do have faith that phase will potentially be in that grand final spot once again with cloud nine just based on how that they've been playing we will find out all of that right after this break we will have our elimination finals phase versus sentinels lined up for you guys so we'll see you right after this
Hello, Halo fans, and welcome back to the fourth NA Pro Series here at the HCS. Now, we do have our elimination final lined up. We have Sentinels versus FaZe happening very shortly. But before we kick off the action here, on set, I've got to ask you, obviously, this is a bit of an unusual matchup, one we haven't seen for a very long time, and one where Sentinels haven't really been this far down the bracket also for, for many, many weeks now. With that kind of in mind, I want to talk a little bit about, of course, the, the momentum that Sentinels have going in against FaZe. But, you know, how much of this momentum can feed into a potential series layout here? You know, if FaZe don't get, you know, some of their best game types and, and, and maps here, combination-wise, you know, how scary could that be for FaZe, potentially? Uh, it's going to be interesting for sure. I think I'm not kind of looking at, at a at it from a phase point of view i'm kind of looking at it from a sentinels point of view because i don't really know what sentinels best game types are at the moment but i know what their worst one is and that's going to be recharge right they don't want to see as much recharge as possible they really want to try and avoid that if they get a slayer maybe that'll be fine for them because they can kind of eke it out but i don't think they want to play any strongholds at the moment the four, this formal lineup this formal sentinels as we've been calling it have struggled a lot on that game type and on ball as well they've been a little bit shaky so uh i think phase will be all right playing any game types at the moment i think the way they played against cloud nine proves that if you can play against cloud nine and you can match them pace for pace i think uh i think they're not going to be too concerned but sentinels avoid recharge avoid recharge hey they don't have much of a choice here but we'll find the series layout in just a moment bravo clutch is over to you guys for the elimination finals thank you for that lot and as we get into this elimination finals it is we got an update from the producers during the break that sentinels will actually have to win the tournament to yeah. take the seventh seed so the job not done yet if you want to get yourself out of cloud nine's pool this is a crucial series to have an opportunity to make that a reality for them but phase as well as they played in the winners finals you know andy they want a shot back at cloud nine they really do here and you got to think a lot lot on the line here right because you have sentinels trying to they'll have to beat cloud nine to get out of cloud nine's pool which is pretty amazing but we'll we'll get to that when we get <laughs> there we'll cross that bridge when we get to it first up it's going to be phase and like you said phase right now based on the points in my rough math they've almost certainly secured second based on the fact they came into this tournament with second so they will likely be at least second seed or actually with the points difference they will be second seed for sure but the first thing they're going to have to look at is this strongholds on recharge game number one against sentinels yeah that's a yikes from me dog because the goal that lot and onset just broke down were sentinels need to avoid recharge and it's game one of the series so maybe if you're if you're sentinels if you can find a way to try and take this game one you get not only a bad map mo combo for your team out of the way but you take the lead in the series and gain a lot of confidence going into that aquarius layer which we just saw them dominate optic gaming in that would be a massive massive win but that's easier said than done. And especially knowing that it's a weak game type, staring you in the face as you go into this series, knowing how well FaZe is playing. What do you think the strengths from Sentinels 
are going to have to be for them to turn this one around. I think Sentinels uh, needs to ride the momentum they've got, and FaZe has to keep an eye on this just because FaZe has watched their biggest competition over the entire month of January, E United and Optic, both be eliminated by this Sentinels roster. And as we said, Sentinels has really been uh, with the for formal substitution, just been hanging around the bottom of top eight. They come in here with the top eight seed. However, FaZe, of course, cannot take this series lightly. Yes, FaZe had an amazing series against C9. Yes, they're looking the best they ever have. But in order to get back to their finals, they're going to have a really tough losers finals here against a team like Sentinels. Once again, it's a best of five. They're going to have to really bring it all series long. This thing is far from over. And we're jumping right now into game number one. It's going to be Strongholds on Recharge. It's FaZe versus Sentinels. All right, here we go. I want to see if Sentinels is able to try and dictate the pace against this phase team that has been playing very fast so far today. We talked about how they matched the pace of Cloud9 in that winner's finals series. Sentinels is going to have to control phase if they want to try and win this game. One already with Snipe down, trying to be aggressive here. Top bat wedge making his way towards his shock rifle. But first, he has his eyes set on snake bite. As one player on his team does go down, it's going to force Snipe down into a very difficult situation. It looks like Sentinels, although Snipe down is going to be in the stronghold, has won the open and break for now. Yeah, look at that. It, really interesting because you did see two players on phase that actually went down early. So despite the fact that you saw a camel grab coming in from Sentinels, now it's four dead for oh Sentinels. So really interesting breakdown of how that played out. Pretty non-traditional start there, Clutch, for this type of game type. It had to be a breakdown on the Sentinel side because you get those first two kills, like you mentioned. You think you're going to get camo control. You think you're going to be able to get sniped down out of B, but neither one of those really happen. And FaZe are looking lights out here at the start of game one. Snipe down has positioned himself perfectly to try and rotate to all three strongholds to be able to impact this fight. I love the fact that he slides in the elevator to help his team. And already, look at FaZe just on top of Frosty as he tries to secure B. That's not gonna happen either. And now Sentinels look like they're in a bit of a spawn trap over on C play. Already past the 60 point mark. One fifth of the game is already done for the side of phase is an excellent start and you, have, you even saw that b got contested so snipe down knew that someone was in with him in batteries it looked like maybe even a camo player but the fact that that went the other way pretty surprising as we said still two players on sentinels who don't even have kills on the board yet Ooh. regardless though bc Ooh. hold and oh hoo, hoo. give me a third Ooh, heating up oh. trying to look for that number three he'll get the double he'll grapple out to c though but a few points on the board for sentinels through those exchanges Frosty is going to be coming behind, but Badoo is going to be forced Whoa. to hit the shot and forced he will right that into Frosty's dome. A beautiful kill, and he's able to take down Formal as well. Booba Dooboo playing lights out Halo today. A great shock rifle shot to start that one off. He's on a killing spree, a six spree right now as he secures C in his back in his team's favor. Wisely tries to play his life, but Lethal actually reads the play perfectly and sets himself up for camo. Booba Dooba popping off at a 6-3 and 2 raid already, Andy. Absolutely, and FaZe certainly outslaying off of the opening. It's showing on the scoreboard as well. They'll continue to tick up at the 84 mark. And like you said, Boo putting on a show. He also eagleized the camo. That would be the camo neutralized once again. Formal off to a slow start so far at 0-5. Really want to see him turn up. He had a great series earlier on stream. He's going to need to have another great series for them to have a chance here. But you're seeing how pressured Sentinels is to defend the one stronghold that they have while trying to push out. Faze are controlling the map so well so far. That play from Boo Boo, it's risky to go off of C plat and show yourself to long haul on that angle, but it's rare that a player chases, so he's able to clean up lethal in the tunnel. You do not want to leave a player like that in tunnel who can cause a lot of havoc, let their shields recharge, maybe even grab a repulsor. So heads up play for Boo Boo in moments like that to get the kill, slay out, clear out the base, and just like that, 127 to 30. Look at that play from Falcated. He lets Frosty run out of elevator by himself without shooting at Frosty. He knows that there's going to be more members able to catch Formal off guard because Formal just watched Frosty clear this out. Falcated gets that first kill, is able to reset A for a little bit, but Sentinels do take it over. Falcated still with his life in hand, though, able to just control this top elevator spot. Does find himself another killing spree, and that's multiple killing sprees on the side of phase that have resulted in this 128 to 47 lead so far. A commanding result from FaZe left off perhaps where we last saw them in that C9 uh, series. If you're just joining us, FaZe Clan giving Cloud9 their best series in quite some time, maybe in the entirety of the NA Pro Series in the month of January, and trying to get back there into the Grand Finals. But first, they will need to get through Sentinels here in your Elimination Finals. More points on the board, though, for Sentinels as they'll cut the lead in half now, 128 to 67. Great job by Boobadooba to stay alive there. Didn't have the confidence, didn't have the wherewithal to try and 
push top elevator and try and secure A. He's able to be backed down by Snakebite, but that's fine. He wants to make sure his team stays in control, especially after losing a few teammates. But Badubu has played the situation perfectly right now in top control in such a power position now that his teammates are on respawn. They get a kill, and that's his that's his sign that he needs to push elevator but right now he wisely tries to play his rifle on this pole and because of it he's able to get that kill security would have gone down in just a 1v1 but the rest of Faye is able to back up boobadoobo and flip the map once again and if i'm phase i'm a little bit worried about how much sentinels has gotten back in this game because as we said it was a huge uh, about 80 point lead earlier and that has now been reduced quite a bit here to oh. about 50 points boo boo and lethal once again in the same exact place there down a blue tunnel and uh, instead this time they will trade out but face scoring once again but face knows they cannot take the sentinel roster lightly whatsoever as sentinels already has about 90 points on the board and uh one more or two more slips we could see sentinels tie this game up yeah absolutely but they're gonna have to get some kills in order to do so right now they are being heavily outslayed by phase both Falcated and boobadoobo have 11 to their name and Snakebite and Formal only have three to theirs. You're going to need to see that flip-flop if you want to see Sentinels come back. And right now, FaZe don't look like they have any idea of letting that happen. Frosty winning that battle bottom elevator. Not always the easiest battle to win when it's a one-shot that's head glitching you on the bottom of the elevator, but cool comment collected through that exchange. Take a look at Frosty just trying to stay alive as long as he can on A and does so well to turn that over. So momentary trip cap, but B and C both being converted at the same time. And it feels like whatever Sentinels works hard to do, FaZe is already jumping on the other strongholds right away. B is going to be reset from Sentinel, so they are going to jump into control. Only down 30 points so far, so even though they don't have the slays right now to match FaZe, they're doing a phenomenal job of staying in this game. I love this by Frosty to stay alive. Now let's see what he's got in this bag of tricks. Going to be able to pick up that Mangler, a little bit of an overextension onto that Plasma Nade. It's going to cost him his life as he goes down to a melee from Falcated. And that was a great job by Falcated to get that kill. A very important kill on the Frosty. And that could be the map flipping back into FaZe's favor very shortly. Yeah, and like you said, uh, as we're going to see a camo grab here for Boo Boo and also try to look for it. No, oh, you no. have to wonder. He, you had to wonder if he needed to challenge Formal there, bottom middle. He might have gotten a one-shot call out. However, the shields may have just recharged. Rarely do you have your camo player char uh, challenge in a battle like that, unless it's an absolute one-shot and maybe just a little bit of mistiming there on the communication side of phase clutch. Honestly, what a heads up play though by Sentinels. I believe it was Formal that got that kill, but to understand the comms and to like have your eyes set on one player, but to immediately get shot at by by him right there and to turn and finish that kill to get camo off the map that was a massive kill so although formal one has four kills to his name one of them is the biggest kill of the game so far yeah rarely do you see formal four and 16 like this uh pretty surprising numbers for the side of sentinels here and formal is actually the only player alive momentarily as he'll try to see if he can get something going with the teammates off the respawn but this is now oh. 221 to 123 it was about a 50 point game then now it is a 100 point game home stretch here potentially for phase trip cap Losing B now will just be an AC control. Yeah, somehow, after that camo gets killed, it's all phase in the score line, especially in the strongholds department. They were able to hold a trip cap for a little bit there and just exploit this lead already to 242, 243. Sentinels forced to try and push top elevator. They're going to get shut down by Booba Dooba. There's a second one above him that he's going to try and deal with with the grapple. Oh, oh baby, my Booba Dooba. He's hit me with that nades. He hits lethal with it in tournaments. Booba Dooba showing you he's got work to do with the shock rifle. 250 to 123. Faze are going to take game one off the highlight reel Boobadoobo just gave us. Like we said, Faze looking the best they ever have in this week number four and maybe a sign of things to come. Not just for what the rest of the tournament holds, but even Anaheim in just a few weeks. Faze looking very strong in that game number one. I mean, it was neck and neck until that trip cap came into place and it was all Faze from there on out. They kept that trip cap up to the, about the 235 point mark. And then, I'll, and then from there, they just held the two that they needed. And look at the slays. I mean, Falcated continuing to be a monster here today. 18, six and four, but everybody on phase getting it done. Such an impressive run there. Like we said, it was about 120 to 88. And we started to say this game, get a little bit closer. Phase needs to be careful. Phase didn't even think about being careful. Instead, they just extended the slaying department and ran the entire map ran away with it a few triple caps back to back to back but we'll see it in the highlights but boo boo with that shock rifle absolutely putting on a show and even early on in the game with that shock rifle as well he's been going off with this thing recently and consistently doing so i mean it was this kill oh my god right here that really opened up the map for his team he actually takes down formal here as well 
And it's like Boobadoo has figured out this shock rifle, and it was only a matter of time until some of these pros figured out the timing and the, the consistency that they needed to with it. And it looks like Boobadoo is starting to master what could be a very big opportunity for this phase team a snipe on a map like recharge if you're able to have the level of success he's starting to have you're going to open up the game for your team so look much look at this shot against lethal as well look at this also you might remember he's holding the stairs here at the end even <laughs> he even, even hits, hits that shot. one yeah. even hits that on formal in, in the victory screen <laughs> as well have a reticle <laughs> ridiculous stuff he doesn't even need the reticle from boo boo Next up, we're going to Aquarius Slayer. Uh, amazing performance from FaZe. It's a convincing victory, but if we've learned anything, Clutch, from today's matches, it's when a team blows out a Stronghold's Game 1, they have so far have historically lost the Game 2. About 50-48 has been the rule of thumb today, so we'll have to see if that's what's in store. Can Sentinels bounce back in Game Number 2? It's going to be Aquarius Slayer. Yeah, and if you're in the minds of Sentinels right now, you just beat Optic 50-32 to 32 on this exact mode to knock them in, out of the tournament. This is going to be really interesting, right? Because FaZe have been so hot all day today. And we're going to see if if they can repeat that same performance. They're going to need to in order to not fall down too far in this series. And already, we're seeing these two teams highly contested for this camo battle top mid. We also just saw the Wizard of Oz. I believe his name is uh, Wes yeah. Price. The man behind the <laughs> curtain sure coming. that was. <laughs> the man behind the curtain <laughs> coming through. The Wizard of Clutch you saw just for a brief moment there. That was a sneak peek. That's a week four exclusive. You may not ever see that again. So I we hope we don't. We hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> it's six to four, six to five now off of the break here. Eight to five as we take a look at an early set of kills coming in for FaZe. We'll be three dead momentarily though. As we go back to Falcon today, we'll trade with Snipe Butt as well. So one dead for each side as things slow down just a bit. But this is a very, very fast paced opening after that Wizard of Oz reveal. <laughs> A great start for FaZe right now. 5-1-2, and two, Falcated. Who else would it be right now for FaZe? Three go down for Sentinels, and already starting to dictate the pace FaZe is with as fast as they like to play. A big kill from Saint by this. He was the last guy alive to somehow trade with one of the members from FaZe. That's going to wow. release a little bit of the pressure FaZe is able to put on these players, and Sentinels need to repeat that performance multiple times in order to keep FaZe off their backs because right now FaZe are starting to click and figure out how to play Halo Infinite at about the same pace as Cloud9, and that's a scary thought. 28 kills in the first minute, 40 seconds. That is a very, very high number of kills. Maybe the highest density kills per minute that we've seen in any opening to an Aquarius Slayer. These teams flying at each other here nonstop. Jesus. Still, though, just a four kill game. And I don't think I've ever seen an Aquarius Slayer that has been this back and forth off of the opening. Hey, do me a favor. Let's stay on Falcated's screen because he has been nonstop Ooh. lights out as he wins a fight against Lethal. He does get taken down, so we are going to have to switch points of view. But who better than Boobadoobo as he makes his way towards this new camera that was popping? Snakebite did pick that one up. Boobadoobo hunting him down, giving his team all the communication of where this camo player probably is, but loses him for a second. And Snakebite gets out of there. That could be massive for Snakebite's opportunity. But just as we switch off his point of view, it looked like he was going to get into an engagement. Frosty here. Heat wave camo, only down by two kills. Somehow, despite such good numbers here coming in from the side of phase, it's Sentinels staying in this game, keeping it very close here and Look for Sentinels to try to bounce back in this series in game number two if they can. It's somehow Frosty pulls the trade out of the back pocket there with a wild, wild bank shot. And just like that. That was actually a really big trade from Frosty, but unfortunately, right back to Falcated screen. He's got a double kill, a perfect kill as well. He's starting to pressure the spawners, the last two members of Sentinels alive. I mean, Falcated doing it all. It's unfortunate he runs out of ammo because you best believe he wasn't going to miss shots in that situation either. 25-21 now, phase two dead for them, so they'll have to wait for each other. Boo Boo just gonna anchor from the flag, midship style. See if he can do some damage. Needs to be careful though to not fall to that 1v2. Has a help up top middle, that's gonna be in the form of slide down. Oh my, the shots from formal too strong. Too strong, and that was her big shot. Sentinels need to make plays like that to stay in. This double kill from Frosty on screen is massive as they take the lead now. 26-25, so as well and as hot as, as Falcated has started this game at 11, 2, and 7. Sentinels still have somehow managed to take the lead off the back of some great slays from Frosty and Snakebite. You love to see those two step it up when Sentinels need them the most. But right now, on screen, Falcated, he's going to have to clear out this space, create some space for his team, because for the first time, it feels like in the series, FaZe might be on their back feet. 
Still just a one kill game between these two. It's been so back and forth. And every time you see Sentinels drop a game number one and you think maybe they're out of the series, that's not the case. They are answering back so strongly in these Slayers. And just in case you missed it earlier, they've oh. eliminated some favorite Snake Bite picks up a big one there in the feed. That'll be two dead for phase once again. And just like that, 31 to 30 in favor of Sentinels. Look at every time we switch to a member of Phase's screen, how different it is right now as they're trapped in this utility closet. Frosty trying to be aggressive on the snipe down's face, but he gets taken down. Snake Bite with another camo awarded in Sentinels' favor. Has this heat wave in hand, and this is a deadly combo. We have seen how impactful this combination of camo and heat wave can be as he gets that first kill on screen. Multiple kills coming in in Sentinels' favor, but a grenade, a melee actually from an unsuspecting player, but somehow he still takes bound down. The reversal comes through. And Camo Heat Wave is the play that Snakebite needed to make in order to give his team this three kill lead as he looks to be aggressive front blue. Second Camo Heat Wave combo we've seen Bound getting very sneaky in that utility corner that you actually see on screen right now. And looking for that melee, you have to think maybe only a few pixels away from a back whack with the angle that he was taking that at. But just like that, FaZe knows they have needed to slow it down and they're actually staying alive in Fridge trying to figure out a way to push out because right now they're down by four. Yeah, they need to be careful because if FaZe give up any more lives this week could get out of hand at four kills at this point but if it gets to eight at any point in time this could get really ugly and almost impossible for phase to win so a big trade there on the snake bite get heat wave finally out of his hands but dynamo and grenades are coming through they fry falcated top pink right there and sentinels playing this situation perfectly making sure they don't overextend too far but i love this play by frosty to keep the pedal on the metal into this util closet stopping snipe down before he can get in there was big and he gets the angle onto another player which allows snake fight to get another double kill and now you're starting to see the the wheels churn in sentinels heads you're starting to see them control the game and what they're capable of when they have the opportunity to get a, a couple of kills in their favor. What a swing from Sentinels. It's another late game performance from them, and they have stepped it up big now. Seven kill lead, only five to go. Snipe down, though. What can he do here with the power up? We'll see if this is the what FaZe needs to bring this game back. As we said, right now, down by seven. Down by seven. Snipe down with camo. Adjust back to top middle after securing that camo, punching it in. Finds an easy kill on the snake bite front. The base drops down pink, looking for players. Knows that formal's around here. Actually gives his teammate a ping. And because of it, Boobadoobo gets that kill. Bound finds one as well. And Snipe down's going to back the last player alive into blue. Base is going to force blue spawn. He's going to have all the information here. And this is a realistic possibility. Just a three kill game at this point. Perfect what? shots on the Frosty. Gives Snipe down the killing spree. And they still keep Sentinels trapped in this base. It's six on entry kills seven on extra kills for phase they're about to tie the game this was 45 oh, no. 38 now it's 45 45 this is incredible halo from phase frosty does get one answer but he gets taken down by boobadoobo in the push with the heat wave 47 46 phase have taken the lead my god 47 46 boo boo right now heat wave in hand dynamos as well if he starts to get ticks he will push here look at this Oh my god, he, he's not getting the kill though. The grenade does not find the what? entry. He gets assassinated by Lethal! 48-48! Bound in a tough situation. He gets taken down by Lethal. Another kill for Frosty! Sentinels take game two! An overextension! A blind push! Cost phase the win after everything they did to come back. And Sentinels are right back in this series, tying it up one to one. Look at that smirk on Formal's face. <laughs> he's getting ticked by dynamos in the utility over and over again somehow he stays alive in utility at the end and that is our third game after a strongholds blowout where the opposing team wins the game 50 48 the only exception today was a 50 47 this has been the closest slayers we've ever seen in a competitive alo tournament day after excuse me game after game 50 48 again jesus and a comeback win my god almost a choke from the side of sentinels they were up 45 37 don't forget it went to 45 45 they close it out though 50 to 48. my god what a game number two i can't believe booba dooboo just assumed that that lightning grenade was going to kill formal in the bottom of that closet if he just shoots the heat wave he gets the kill and he can move on and potentially not get assassinated but that's down the road right you don't get that kill on a formal and it kills your opportunity to try and push that back smack from lethal was so clutch i mean how many plays were just made throughout this entire game? It was e the ebbs and flows of, of the control in this game from both teams was absolutely incredible. Sentinels with that continued, look at this play too, Bound almost gets that sneaky, sneaky, almost a back whack, but certainly almost a melee surprise. But so much heat wave camo control from Sentinels. 
But I mean, here you are, right? It was 45, 37. Then this somehow the these perfect pushes with camo. But here's what you're talking, actually right there. There's the back whack you're talking mm. about. Lethal gets the back whack on utility bridge. He finds and a somehow second one right here. Formal stays alive. You can't just walk out onto that bridge knowing that you have the enemy team stuck in the back of that base and, and not check that side. I know he was probably getting communication, especially after not finishing formal, that formal was probably right below him. But a massive overextension there from Booba Dubu, paired with not finishing that kill in the bottom util when you had him no shield and you threw a dynamo grenade at him instead of choosing to shoot. Yeah. Are the reasons you're now tied in this series. And going into CTF Bazaar, we saw a phenomenal game out of phase earlier today a 5-0 from phase against optic so this is a very strong game type for them but sentinels have had a lot of success on bizarre ccf themselves i can only imagine what formals pov looked like there in utility as those dynamos are going off a scene out of star wars without a doubt but no time for that here we go game number three series tied one to one phase versus sentinels this is the matchup we came here for we'll have to see who's going to take the lead after this one it's going to be ctf on bizarre a lot on the line here as we enter game three it's a best of five series but both of these teams want to get back to the finals want to give cloud nine a run for their money but before they do that they have to figure out how to win the elimination finals booba dooboo is going to be pushing out front of his big doors right into a dynamo grenade cooked like a chicken a chick-fil-a i'd say and unfortunately he's going to be knocked in no shields but on the other side of the map, Frosty picking up these rockets, trying to stay alive. Oh. Wastes both rockets, but a kill on the Falcated gives his team numbers advantage. Three go down for phase, and if Snakebite can stay alive, you're going to see Sentinels get map control, but he's taken down by Bound very quickly. Bound grab, grabs that first overshield that uh, earns him a kill, but it will be melted right away. Great play by Formal Bottom Rockets there against Snipe down to force the rocket there. He actually forces the trade by flying straight into Snipe. Ooh, look at that Dynamo's gun. More frags come in as well. Oh my gosh, I was gonna say that's not gonna be a trade based on the fact that, that second frag hit as well, but good trades off of the opening. No one able to get early control or early aggression just yet. Yeah, battle for control is what we're watching right now. Lethal is gonna come back uh, through the tree, gonna be able to finish Falcata, but knows that he can't really go for a flag run here. He's gotta get some more size, multiple members of his team spawning on the opposite side of the map. Big kill by Lethal though to find two and that's going to open up the map that's going to stop phase from being able to push out of their own tree even though lethal gets taken down look at where formal and snake bite are they were able to push across for free because of those two kills that's massive from lethal and now here is the result because of it snake bite in your bar finding one he gets taken down but where are the rest of sentinels right now Heads up play from Falcate. And, ee, nice pop from Lethal as well. Kids continue just being traded out for dead, though, for Sentinels. Maybe an opportunity for FaZe to get a little more mid-map control and start to put the aggression and answer back from that last Sentinels push. Yeah, Booba Dooba in this corner needs to stay alive. Oh, oh not an God. option, though, nope. because <laughs> seven nades come through. Booba Dooba blinks, dies. Unfortunately, his only call out is shotgun down in their corner. They're out of nades, completely out of nades. Shouldn't have one left in the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely no nades, but a shotgun there. Take a look on your screen. The overshelt in play. Boo Boo gets it and it gets hey! around the corner. Lethal takes the time to check the dynamo tunnel. Wants to see what's inside the shanty town, but it costs him the overshield. And now will be another phase push. Boo Boo with his first entry into the Sentinel's base finds a kill on the snake bite using that overshield to success here. Has to play his life. He's got one player in Lethal to deal with. Has a thrust in his back pocket. Chooses to use it early in the fight. And Lethal punishes him because of it. That's a massive kill from Lethal to flush out his base and buy time for Frosty to come off respawn and defend his flag once again. Let's see what Frosty can do here. Not enough. He'll go down. But Falcate is thinking about maybe starting something. Knows that the players are going to be coming from Rocket Side and Front Door and does not have a whole lot to work with. Needs teammates help here. Yeah. Staying alive. Falcate, we know how well he can do this. We saw him do it actually last week. Had a hell of a play on the same pillar on the opposite base. Trying to stay alive as best he can, but the, eventually the Sentinels yeah. numbers are too much for him to deal with. Sentinels clear out their base and a battle for mid map once again takes place. But Badubu, he's had nightmares about what happened to him last time. This time it's not grenades, it's two players pushing him this time around. Rockets were secured by formal it looks like. And that's two dead for phase. The middle of the map is Sentinels control now. But you're seeing them kind of back up because they lost two teammates. They know that they can't successfully push, especially with respawners soon coming up. Formal, once again, not as efficient as he'd like with those rockets. The second time we've seen that on screen today, just not grabbing the two kills that he maybe wants or maybe even more that with those rockets now. Frosty, though, going to find a player bottom mid. Very nice mangler drop to pick up that kill against Bound and a little bit of mid-map control momentarily for Sentinels. Mm. 
Frosty knew there was a player below him somewhere, looked everywhere, but unfortunately, the one place he didn't check was behind him. Gets assassinated, but Snake Bite right there to trade that one out. Continue map control in their favor. They're going to continue to nade closets because apparently that's been a very successful <laughs> way to get kills throughout today. Snake Bite wisely trying to play his life here for this next overshield, but it does look like FaZe are going to have numbers, damage advantage, and Booba Dubu on the overshield once again with shotgun in hand could be the recipe for oh success to get the first flag going for FaZe. Look at the push. Lethal does eliminate the power up with the plasma pistol. A trade from Lethal was massive there. Massive play. Once again, we're seeing the green gun in the tree continue to melt the overshields time time again you have to think especially by the time we get to anaheim that, that you're gonna have the overshield players maybe waiting just a second yes you got a bulldog in hand but wait for teammates to come help maybe push bar instead we yeah. keep seeing those overshields being melted by the plaza pistols and it's a pretty predictable play and one that i think is avoidable for your overshield players yeah maybe take a different route go towards the rockets having the map jump into their bar but definitely don't want to go in that tree because you know that that plasma pistol spawning there is going to be occupied especially when they have the comms that you have over shield, but the flag is being run. In the meantime, slays are coming through for phase. Two players of Sentinels just coming off respawn. Is anyone in position? Lethal is at the base with brew grenades in hand, able to take down the flag carrier. Lethal's actually gonna say, I think we got this. I think we're gonna get a touch of our own, but no, he loses teammates in the process. And Lethal could be making a big mistake by not trying to get on that return because right now he's gonna have a multiple battle fight to win. Takes down the first player and bound, plays his life so well on this pillar, but still has to buy time. Snake fight is on the prowl. Oh. He's trying to get across bottom middle. Lethal wow. playing his life as best he can. A trade from Lethal comes in. Dynamo grenades frying the members of FaZe and the rest of Sentinels look to be here, but can the flag return come in? It's up to Frosty and Frosty gets it done. Oh my God, Lethal staying alive in the back of the base so long and keeping that flag alive. Even though you saw a boo-boo touch in the end, Frosty comes front door. He's the last guy in there and it's a team effort from the side of Sentinels on the return. They had to work for that return, but the flag does come back home. We will stay 0-0 here in CTF. I'm not even sure how Lethal was able to do what he was just capable of to buy that much time for players to get killed and come Ooh. off respawn. A big kill from Boobadoo is going to under Lethal is going to open up the map. Rockets are up. Boobadoo walking what? past him is going to have to go back for him. I believe he was going to try and grapple him, but probably missed the grapple off screen as we changed points of view. So now Boobadoo has secured those rockets, has grapple in hand. What? Somehow that rocket doesn't what? kill Frosty. He knocks him to no shield. So Boobadoo is going to have to fly again. A nice shot from Boobadoo as he lands into the stables of the bar. As he quickly turns to know that respawners are going to be overextending a flag run for phases on the prowl right now. But Booba Dooba with one rocket in hand needs tick, to find tick, tick, kills. Tick, tick, Great tick. nades from Booba Dooba as well as this flag crosses the halfway mark. Tick, tick, tick of the dynamos there, and Boo Boo's gonna run the flag as well. Rockets in hand, doing it all, killing the players on pillars, checking every corner, knows that there's gonna be some action on front oh door. God. Oh my God, the elbow comes in from formal and absolutely stops the flag run on the double doors. He gets off the return though. He gets off the return, and unfortunately, multiple members of FaZe are once again here. Formal tries to be the last line of defense, but it's not enough, and FaZe somehow, some way, slay out after all of the chaos that happened in front of their base. They get the flag, they punch it in, on the back of Falcated, finding that kill, getting the touch, and now FaZe have the lead here in game three. Man, do they ever have to work for it? Like you said, formal steps off that return. Certainly maybe had to jump out of the way of some grenades, and uh, now more battles in these huts. Frosty versus Falcated here. Falcated's gonna win that one, but formal able to land a heavy elbow on the front door but stepped off the return and that means face is able to put enough numbers on the front door to bring that flag back home and with as hard as they've had to work clutch that could be the game winner yeah as hard as they've had to work with four minutes and 20 seconds left falcated on a killing spree trying to get this flag moving again bound just being a nuisance in the back of sentinels base it could be the game winner or it could be a potential 2-0 lead if FaZe are able to play this right snake bite finds that first kill though and that could be where this flag stops being run Good shots from Frosty, Ooh. but not good enough as Falcated gets another big win onto Frosty, takes him down. The return does come through. Phase is out of the base for now, but all of that power, all of that power, all of that presence in the back of Sentinels' base has allowed Phase to scoop this overshield up and gain map control once again. No, it gets green gunned again, dude. I'm Stop sick of going I'm, there. I'm sick of this. <laughs> Bound gets a double kill. Snipe down gets a clean overshield. And somehow one of the last two players alive, plasma pistol snipe downs overshield. It's such a predictable angle. We need to see a shift in the overshield meta as the overshield will be melted. But still, phase on the aggression, they're able to still have control of their enemy's base momentarily. These guys don't care.
about overshield at all. They don't they don't care. They don't need overshield apparently because FaZe still have control of Sentinels' base. They have only lethal to deal with right now in the tree, and they deal with him very quickly as they take him down. Bound gets the kill. Another player is going to be able to run that fight. Boopa Dooba with a combat shotgun looks to try and gain control of his own tree because Frosty is in there and Sentinels overextension have gotten them a few kills. Snipe down picks up a fresh set of rockets, but these kills coming through are big for Sentinels. But the one player they have to worry about is bound with this flag because he's already got it to the bar. Falcated there. One of the last players alive for a second. He was one of the fresh spawners. So he should have teammates here and they should be able to bring this back based on the numbers. This should be 2-0. This is definitely a 2-0, and now FaZe, with 2 minutes and 37 seconds left, have taken a significant lead. And Bizarre is very difficult to score. One flag, two is almost impossible, especially with two and a half minutes Ooh. remaining. Pop, pop, pop. Three shots of the Bulldog, three kills on the board. That's a triple kill for Falcated. Frosty, Look though, going to be one that grabs that as well. But we got to talk about Falcated. We haven't mentioned it yet. The man is 28 and 13 in this game right now it's every game today falcated is absolutely popping off and it's against the best players in the world falcated making a statement he is here to leave a, a legacy of his own to define himself as one of the best players in the game we don't talk about him enough he says you got to talk about me when i'm putting numbers like 28 and 14 up right you cannot ignore what he's doing right now and uh, maybe doesn't get enough credit on that squad Overshield was still down, by the way, on bottom truck. We got to see what happens with that overshield, as I'm sure that could be a determining factor in which way this one goes. Maybe a grab for Snakebite. Yes, yeah, Snakebite's going to yes, grab sir. that one off of screen. He's going to get that overshield, and we'll have to see if he's able to actually fight with it and not get to melt it. All right, the good thing is, is Snakebite was able to verify the plasma pistol being on the wall in, <laughs> in the tree, so it's not in the hands of FaZe for now. But that player behind them in tree is one to deal with. He may have the plasma pistol, and if he gets comboed right now, I'm going to be extremely upset. But two members of Sentinels trying to push this out. It's snipe down, I believe, that was in the tree. He's actually going to get that first kill on the formal, and because of it, Snake Fight's forced to slow this one down. But with a minute and 10 seconds left, you need two flag caps. You don't really have time to slow this down, Andy. You got to figure out a way to continue to get slays. Yeah, you need two flag caps, and you also need two miracles. That's what Snake Bite is looking for. Pop of the Bulldogs and a clean up killing spree for Snake Bite doing what he can to keep his team in this game. He's not going to be able to get the touch, though, so the flag is going to reset. So that's a win for FaZe. They're going to have to continue to slay out. Sentinels is that they want to try and punch this one in. Any and any error or mistake is going to be double we punished right now. And Snake Bite does get the flag once again to halfway, it loses his life. And Falcated says, absolutely not. I've done too much in this game to come away with a loss. So although the flag still is out, any second that it's not being capped just leaves more of an opportunity for FaZe to set up for a final push from Sentinels. And it doesn't even look like that flag is going in as Booba Dooboo hopped on the return as well. 20 seconds left here in the game. This is just a small victory lap here for the side of FaZe. What a game they've had as Falcated just going to control and patrol the bottom side. Rockets knows that 10 seconds are left. Just going to hug the wall with the Bulldog out. Look at his numbers, 28 and 16 in this game. 28 and 16 is such a dominant performance and they needed every bit of it to try and get some of these flags on the board. You're going to see this game end in a 2-0 favor. In, in favor of FaZe as they take the lead in the series. Once again, they go up 2-1 to one and look to push their team to the grand finals with one more map win over Sims. They want that rematch against Cloud9. And now only one game away. That was the go-ahead for them. And now have their eyes set on the finals. But Sentinels not making it easy at all, putting up a great fight. And despite the fact that that was 2-0 on the board, a hard-fought victory. There's the numbers on the screen, though, from Falcated. Absolutely enormous. You saw the triple kill on screen as well as long as well as three double kills. Two flag steals, two flag captures. Falcated with the most kills, the least deaths, doing it all statistically for his team. And an unbelievable performance. He really is becoming a massive difference maker for this phase roster. He goes as they go and and at 28 kills in a bizarre CTF like that, I mean, if he's able to continue to play at this level, it's only a matter of time till we see the best of Bound, Boobadoobo, and Snipe Down paired with him. Nearly doubling the amount of kills on some of the players on the other side, even teammates as well, so incredible stuff. I'll tell you one thing, we saw a lot of clutch. We saw a lot of uh, nades in the hut, and especially spikers, as well as overshields getting melted. But regardless, at the end of each of those, regardless of how much we... Uh, laughed about and memed those overshield pushes. It was still phase with control, regardless of how those pushes went. It felt like this game really was phases for the entire match. Yeah, at some point, I think phase is going to have to start calming. I made them waste the P shot on me with <laughs> as the overshield player is forced to back up no shield. But I mean, it's it, 
it's a matter of time for these players to start to learn the meta and understand that like there's better ways to approach the base but they do want to play at that fast pace that's yeah. the difference that's the storyline that we're watching it's like we need to take advantage of all of our timings and unfortunately you want to be as aggressive as possible phase is starting to play at the level and at the pace of like cloud nine right mm -hmm. they're playing so fast today and having so much success doing it that you almost can't fault for when it goes wrong yeah, you're right, and I think also we'll, we'll have time to break it down later on in today's show as we get to the Grand Finals as well, but losing that overshield isn't necessarily the worst thing as long as your momentum continues forward. That was right. clear with FaZe, but can they bring that momentum into game number four? It's going to be Oddball on live fire. That's the question. This is go-ahead game for FaZe. If they win here, they're back in the Grand Finals. However, Sentinels with an opportunity to force a game number five. Tournament lives on the line. This eight seed is all but their destiny if they're not able to pull off a miraculous comeback not only here but in the grand finals as well sentinels know this so look for them to bring out their a game lethal gets the opening pick boobadoo forced to back down relocate towards this ball and right now you're seeing sentinels slowly play this out they're going to drop snipe for frosty but unfortunately frosty getting taken down forces the snake bite to pick that back up but when snipes and snake bites hands he can be just as lethal as anybody with it Taking a look at the numbers here as we wait for that camo to pop. Oh, oh my snake bite on the narrow angle just sees it's a piece assassinated. of the skull. He will get taken down in the end, and Snipe Down's gonna grab the actual skull, but interesting uh -oh. set of kills that go down there. Phase, excuse me, Sentinels will go two downbound. We'll grab the camo for just a second. Now we burned. A massive kill from Lethal, a little bit of an overextension from Bound. You gotta think when you get that camo, you just wanna get out of there. You wanna you know you're being collapsed on by Sentinels. They're looking for you, but Bound not quick enough to get out of that situation. And because of it, Lethal able to take him down, get Camo off the map. More importantly, get Snipe out of Bound's hands. Oof. And now that looks like the map's been reset for a bit. A big kill from Boobadoo here, top tower, trying to play his life, trying to stay alive, but he's going to get shot again. Can't seem to stay alive, but a repulsor top tower. That's going to be unexpected. So Boobadoo actually doing a phenomenal job staying alive up here. But as his team gets two kills, you want to see him try and maybe relocate because there is somebody from Sentinels around him, you would have to think. Very nice stuff there from Boob to stay alive. Also great challenge against Formal there to use the quick jump from bottom pillars as well. Not a lot of points on the board here as the team's just volleying for control in terms of the slaying department. We should talk about the stats because you've got uh, the side of Sentinels two and two recently on this game type. However, phase is 10 and two in recent matches, tournament matches on this game type, 83% win rate. Potential opportunity for FaZe to close it out here. Yeah, FaZe are very strong at this game type, especially when they're able to get Snipe into Snipe down or bounce hands. So far, they had it for a brief second, but Control is still being battled for us. Uh, it's very interesting to see how Sentinels has been able to get this ball kind of where they want it and been able to rotate it because they did have it at house after FaZe picked up a few kills. They got it all the way back to tower. I believe Camo did just come up, but kills are coming through and Frosty's going to be the captain of crushing the souls of FaZe as they try to get that camo secured in their favor frosty looking to be aggressive i actually love this push he's going to have a perfect flank on the respawners of phase and the ball being over a tower they're not going to think frosty's over here but unfortunately he's a little too slow in the flank he does find falcated trying to play a little slow himself and because of it he takes him down and now unfortunately for frosty and the rest of sentinels it looks like phase has broken the setup for now 2v2 right now let's see how these kills go because this is determined if, if this becomes a hold or if the ball gets reset once again all players right now in phase just looking at that nest rotate might even play it if they need to from back B. Yeah, great position here for Booba Dooba. And he's going to actually play it prematurely as he loses two members of his team. A great play ball from Booba Dooba resets the map. But all of Sentinels look like they're in a position to get this play ball, get it out of bottom middle and safely secure it. Build up a lead once again, oh boy. once more. Trade there for formal. Won't pick up the one snipe down. Take a look at snipe down's health, though, with those heat wave shots bouncing around pillars. It was almost a twofer with that heat wave not something you see every day but in an area like pillars and closets certainly something that could happen with those bouncing around now 48 to 17 in favor of sentinels and it's been a really a slayer heavy ball match here clutch to start neither team really want to go for a, a, a central hold looking for a little bit more slaying control before they get ball time on the map yeah that was a great play ball from sentinels similar to the play ball from phase we saw but sentinels not really able to hold that setup for too long do have a significant lead here with over 30 points to their name, but right now bound in a very good situ uh, position to get a few kills of his own, maybe get some ball time awarded to his team. But unfortunately, it's on the other side of the map. Bound is playing a very chaotic game, gets shot from multiple angles, loses his life because of it. And Frosty wow. doesn't really care about the ball right now because they've been in such good control of the flow of the match. 
and securing this camo is going to benefit them very well. I'm surprised Snakebite gets away with that because Bound is top middle and he shoots Snakebite on the power up and then goes to grab the Mangler and sits a sandbag. And Snakebite pops around all the way through A and then just gets a double kill top mid. Surprising to see that maybe a little bit of lack of communication there coming in from the side of phase. All right, I love this by Frosty. He's going to slow play this, bait the ball, understand that he lost two teammates. You know Faze oh are going to be coming for this ball. An easy kill on a Falcated. Lethal finds two. They actually trade kills out after being down in a 4-2 situation. Frosty finds a third, and Sentinels are able to get the ball controlled. That was a perfect we played situation by Lethal and Frosty to find kills. Now, Frosty trying to do his best to get a stick, but he had a frag out instead, and unfortunately, he misses this kill. And now Sentinels, although they've had a brief setup, it looks like it's quickly broken once again. Nice little body shot from Lethal. Wishes he had a little bit extra help to get that one cleaned up. Two dead momentarily for both sides, but still sizable lead here for Sentinels. And what has been largely time that has just been kind of scrapped together has still led to quite a sizable lead for Sentinels. Yeah, neither team really out slaying each other right now, right? They're trading kills. The objective efficiency from Sentinels is coming through, though, and that's big because they need to stay in this series by winning this game. Round one would be a massive win for them in this game. Boobadoobo now with the first real setup for phase has it in the window. Doesn't see anybody on brute side, and that's going to be a lot of information. But the second he spots Snake Bite, he pings him out, and he understands that, hey, Sentinels is going to be coming from the power up side of the map. Let's see what he chooses to do here. Goes for the melee there. It's going to be cleaned up, so not bad. Make sure that trade is kill is traded out 2v2 right now. The next kills will determine who gets the next hold. It looks like kills will go in favor for just a moment. In favor of phase as they'll continue scoring here on house, and maybe they need to rotate out of here. That's what you got to think with players pushing bottom middle. A nice play from Bound, though, on lethal. Yeah, this big door player is going to be a nuisance for them. So Bound wisely able to play his wipe, gets around the corner, continues to score points. And just like that, Faze are right back in this game with one good setup, only down four points now. Falcated is going to have to play his wipe back here. They're not able to play the ball just yet, but they find kills. They might not want to play the ball. And Falcated can find a third, and Falcated finds a third himself. Another triple kill for Falcated. Snakebite's going to try to deny this ball with this camo snipe. Unfortunately, he can't hit the ball carrier, but Falcated might be the, carrier, the player you wanted to take out because right now he's on a tear. Falcated showing up today in a huge way. Such a consistent player, but even bigger than usual today. Snakebite was the one who had to finally shut him down. Three dead for Sentinels momentarily, but as you say, not only do we have FaZe back in this, a little repulsor 360 from Boo, Boo with the Mangler. FaZe now taking the lead in this game. They were down by about 40, but Sentinels unable to scrap even more time together. Now just a four-point game in favor of FaZe. The Redubo hits us with some pro... Tony Hawk Pro Skater moves with the repulse. I'm not quite sure what was going through the head there, but does finally make his way bottom middle after securing a kill. Unfortunately, Sentinel's doing such a good job of being efficient with the objective. They get ball out of there. Even without the slays, they get ball out of bottom middle into house, but they're going to have to deal with a push right now from FaZe, and Booba Dooba chooses to try and go into oh bottom middle. Misses the repulsor oh! out of ammo, and somehow one of the ugliest fights we've seen in the history of Halo <laughs> results in a trade. It results in a trade. That's the only way that battle could end there. Somehow the repulsor at the end and a melee trade. Take a look, and that will be the time taken down. It will be it's all the points on the board in favor of Sentinels. Jesus, I mean, if, I mean, that fight explains that entire round right there. <laughs> Highly contested. Everybody is throwing everything from the woodshed out into the party and somehow Sentinel straight by with a close round one win. Now Falcated, it's his job to anchor this top tower position. He knows that multiple members of Sentinels tried to push for the snipe. It is in the hands of Frosty right now, but Bound finding that heat wave, finds himself a snake bite kill. And already you're seeing Sin or FaZe do a much better job of getting the ball this time around from the bottom middle position. Unfortunately, he's taken down and Bound is forced to try and go for ball, which costs him his life. Yeah, two dead, actually three dead for just a moment for the side of FaZe. Should be an opportunity for Sentinels to get a little bit of early control, early points here towards house. Camo in hand as well as the heat wave. So certainly an opportunity, especially if they get a few more spawns and a mangler to pick up even more points on the board. Formal. We know what he can do with Snipe. Can he do it with Camo this time around? He actually dropped Snipe in this situation. Very interesting stuff from Formal. I'm not sure if that was on purpose, but he's getting pressure from so many members of FaZe. A little bit of a misplay cost him his life. A hesitant play from Formal. Loses Camo and Sentinels is control. They did rotate the ball towards the tower, though. They are going to still have control. It's a 3v3 situation, but Badubu is not the no-shield from Lethal. Finally, he's able to find the pick on the Lethal, but Frosty and Formal stand too strong, and they continue their numbers advantage over at the tower. 
Oh man, Frost under so much pressure here. We'll have to see what he can do with this snipe. Looks like that nade probably hit. That's gonna make snipe down slow down just a bit. Enough time for Frosty to somehow get his shields back miraculously. Look at the and if there's one guy who can get out of a battle like that and one team that can rotate around it, it's Frosty and Sentinels. Look at the ball rotation. It was just in front of tower. Sentinels get it all the way to green. It's being such a pain for FaZe to try and hunt down these players. Bound actually falls off the map. So not only does a play ball come through, not only do you think this is FaZe's time to get the play ball and have a setup of their own, but now that Bound's falling off, they're going to have a hard time getting that ball from bottom middle as well because they no longer have the numbers advantage. Frosty delaying Snipe down from being able to impact that bottom mid push. Unfortunately, doesn't check top mid. Does turn around and end up trading with Snipe down. So a great trade. But on the other screen, it's Bound securing not just the camo, but a triple kill to take all four members of Sentinels down. And now FaZe look to have a setup a tower of their own with this camo newly secured. Look how fast the nest and pillars push is coming though. They've already found oh out Bound. They've already prenated. They know he's there. He has to win this battle to maintain control. Lethal's glasses must be something <laughs> to be able to see that camo. I think the pre nade was so crucial to trying to find him, but still bound able to do work back here. Does lose his life eventually, but the rotation Look of at the Boo -Boo ball. Though, yeah, base yeah, doing a great job of rotating oh, again. And the oh. melees with the ball, the double kill, expecting Snake Bite to chase him down the hole was massive. And Booba Dooba just created an opening, trying to throw his teammate the ball. That's such good teamwork from them. Good communication. And because of it, FaZe now have the lead. Look at that. They were down by about 30 points there. They run back. Boo Boo with a perfect rotate, as you say. Even baits the drop down for the perfect double melee. Even throws it up. Dummies ramp, because you want to avoid going up that dummies ramp if you can. Just exposes you a bit too much. Falcate had not done yet in the back of the base. That'll be a reversal. And right now, minor lead here for FaZe. Oh. They know they cannot afford to drop this one. They do not want to go to a game five. Frosty had the reticle placement to line that no-scope up. He just didn't hit the trigger at the right time. Unfortunately, that's going to mean Snipe Down able to find this sniper in his hands. And what can Snipe Down do now? It's the first time we're seeing him with this sniper today. We know what he's capable of throughout his career. His team needs him to step up. Force to use the drop wall to his advantage in this situation is back down, but a nice body shot on the Frosty creates the two man advantage for his team. Gets shot in the side, luckily gets out of dodge with his life. And right now he spots formal. What a great rotation from Sanctum. The heads up play to predict players spawning outside by green to impact those influencers that are pushing your ball carry that's moved to house and now phase look to take a massive advantage here in round two side down and frosty just going at each other time and time again we've seen them trade a few times in a row two of the best players to ever do it just look at the score though bound with another rotate 72 to 39 now just about doubling their opponent's score here and looking to tie up the round, maybe even close it out in game number four. I love this by Bound. He's gonna understand the situation perfectly. He was headed towards green with the ball, but no, he gets the information that his teammates want him to come back. So he moves the ball back to the window and the entire time he's scoring points, 90 points and counting now. Faze are just five points away from taking this to a round three, but Sentinels do take Bound down. I love this play by Falcated. Look he understands this. that he's by himself. If he can just delay the ball, which he does with perfect shots, he creates a little bit of space and numbers opportunity for his team coming off respawn. That's right now. We're going to need to see some of the best Halo we've ever seen from Sentinels if they want to maintain control of this game and not drop. They cannot afford to lose one setup. If they do, that will be the round. We'll go to a round number three. Right now it's 94 to 50, but right now the kills are coming in. Two dead. Rossi needs to try and defend this big door opportunity for his team. He knows multiple members of FaZe are trying to push through. Wisely backs down to try and get a shield back, but is he going to be ready for this push? Are they even going to come through big door? It's going to be bound, and we've seen this movie before. Bound getting heat waves on the big door is a terrible thing for FaZe Clan to see. Fortunately, they do have a 44-point lead to play around. Sentinels will need to play perfect for multiple rounds of sways in order to come back in this game. They've got numbers advantage for now but it's going to take a lot more than just one set of kills for them to come back here in the second round formal thinking about a rotate is a 34 point game you did see lethal trade out bound just spraying and praying with the ar on the door he will fall though so one dead for the side of faith keep an eye on the kill feed that will determine if sentinels can keep the comeback alive yeah that will time not a factor as of right now but this kill Ooh. could be big snake bite does find two falcated does pick up a big kill actually picks up a second one as well so it's up to bound to try and deny this ball carrier and this camo from coming up lethal does have a mangler to his advantage but look at bound i love this by him he grabs the ball takes the angle to where it shuts off lethal's line of sight there all they go. needed was five points and that's bounds making a heads up play to secure the last final five points for phase as they tied this game four up one to one
That's exactly what you want to see for Bound. A big multi-kill at the end. They just clear the way, then gets on the trick ledge. Gonna round that round out, and we're right back in. It's game, excuse me, round number three in game number four. We wouldn't have it any other way. If FaZe wins this, they will close out the series. Sentinels, though, just one round away from forcing us to a game number five. Few kills coming here for either side. Two dead. Snape gets away with his life with Snipe in that two-on-two -two situation. You want to try and maintain ball control or at least have some kind of eyes on it. But as he jumps up top tower, he doesn't expect wow. two members of FaZe to be staring at him. And he's immediately ripped off that power position. Snipe down does know that Lethal's here with this game and just secured it. And unfortunately for Lethal, Snipe down is going to get the better of him there. Snipe down an absolute terror right now. Not only taking down a Snipe player in Snakebite, but taking down a Camo player in Lethal. Two massive kills for Snipe down early on. Early points on the board, and yeah, they have to be careful because they know they that last one, excuse me, the game number one, that round one from Sentinels really was all about the scrap time they got early. They got 60, you know, I don't call it free points, but 60 scrappy points, and they were able to close it out in the end. FaZe had much better game management in round number two, and you can see already putting some points on the board. Want to make sure they play very, very efficient here. Cannot allow any free points to get on the board in favor of Sentinels. Yeah, there's no way they're ready for Snipe down with this heat wave. He finds one, does miss the shot on a formal right there. A great grenade from formal is going to get him off that brute dummy. As Formal wisely picks up the ball. Now he decides to drop it and sway. He understands that he's by himself. And unfortunately, there's multiple members of FaZe in his face. Formal in a 1v3 does find one, which could delay how strong this FaZe setup is about to be. But somehow, Lethal, back tower with the ball in hand, has gotten his team a little bit of time and safe fight there to help guard him. Now you're seeing Sentinels play that efficient objective we saw in round one to try and tie this game back up. Oh my, look at this snipe down, even though a little bit of control coming in from the side of phase momentarily, it's actually Sentinels that plays that so well. Formal somehow stays alive in the back of the base long enough and then also even spawns over Nest Bridge to be able to push here once again. So even more time on the board. This is the scrappy time I'm talking about. This is Sentinels just causing chaos at sea, holding the ball bottom pillars, uh -oh. and right now racking up 30 points. An overextension from Formal there is going to force Lethal to play the ball. Camo is going to be in the hands and with three dead for, fit, for Sentinels. FaZe have a great opportunity to try and secure this ball, get it back to where they want to go and get a setup of their own. But Frosty trying to deny that from happening with a double kill of his own could be just what the doctor ordered snipe down matches that double with one of his own with the perfect shots bottom middle and this ball remains bottom middle but no almost got it for just a brief second but you have to think sentinels needed to get kills in that situation if they wanted to secure this ball and right now snipe down needs to be the primary focus because he's on a tear Great shots there. Snipe back cleaned up right away because of snipe down shots from that bottom door. Ball will be down for just a second though. 36-22. Three dead. Momentarily located. Last player gets a triple though. So the reset here might come in quickly. Let's see if Formal gets away. This should be a decent amount of time on the board, especially if they're able to get the first pick off of the phase spawners. Sentinels need to win this round to stay in this tournament to push this series the distance and already Frosty and Formal in round three have nine and eight kills of their own. Frosty picks up that new snipe. You can best believe he's looking to push his kill limit to 10 with this sniper. It finds one from the tower. Can't hit the shot though. And they left the ball actually, but bound. Face ripped off as he tries to slide top mid with Heatwave. Boobadoo is going to be forced to play this ball, but is he even in a position to do so? He's no. opting not to play it. And this could be a massive mistake. Frosty with the slide, the no scope, the finish on the snipe down needs to stay alive now. He's done enough, but no, he gets taken down and phase. They actually get great spawns towards the big door. They're able to contest this ball. Lethal, can he play it? The answer is finally yes, and that resets the entire map. I agree. Interesting play from Face. Actually, go for the B rotate, not the play ball. It almost paid off based on those spawns, but Lethal with a hero move there to play that ball just to force that reset. All eyes on camo though right now. Yeah, it feels like Face has been getting the better of these camos in these situations, and right now is Falcated able to punch this one into his chest? I mean, if he's able to make a play, this could be the one that decides the fate of Sentinels in this tournament. Look, he sees Snakebite. Snakebite doesn't quite see him. And unfortunately, Snakebite going to eat the first melee. An easy kill for Falcated to turn numbers into his team's favor. But he's immediately erased. Bound. He waves himself. A little bit of a miss by there. Misses one shot. On the way. No! No! Wait, the rips his head off as he 180 no scopes him in the head. Doing only things lethal is known to do. And that was a massive kill to disrupt the setup of things. That was absolutely disgusting. I'm surprised it was allowed to be shown here on that broadcast. The receiving end of it, nonetheless, lethal. Keeping his team in this one, a disgusting turnaround reversal, no scope over in the house. Two dead momentarily for Sentinels. And just like this, essentially a tied game. It's 58-52. 58-52.
FaZe does have control of ball in house, but they're going to be sandwiched here as you see two members of FaZe getting taken down. Snipe down loses his life, and the last two players are going to be fighting for their lives here as multiple members of Sentinels swarm. Frosty actually goes past him, though. He gets a nice kill. Bound so sneaky, so Huge. good. Massive to disrupt any chance of a setup. Frosty tried to play a little too aggressive, didn't check his corners, and Bound taking advantage of the situation now is able to disrupt the setup of what was once Sentinels taking the lead is now removed from the equation. Formal finally takes Bound down, but like you said, those sneaky plays just waiting in the corners when those strongholds or in ball games, when players have not cleared out the back of the base, it will cost you, and Bound takes advantage of that situation. But just like that two-point game, 66-64. Alkitted, playing his life perfectly here. The ball may reset shortly, though. You want to get a touch, but unfortunately, he's not in a great position because there's multiple members of Sentinels out by the power-up right now. Balkay to try to contest them. This camo is going to be crucial to the outcome of this game if it can get secured safely. Unfortunately, Snakebite forced it back down, but Badoo on the other side of the map able to get some good damage and then relocate. But actually, that relocation was almost perfect timing to try and kill Snakebite. But Snakebite turning every corner just on the right time, able to play the ball as well. So Boobadooba doing everything he can to get the ball out of Snakebite's hands. But unfortunately, the ball does get played. Frosty doing unbelievable work right now getting that double kill can't find the triple but unfortunately i believe because frosty gets those two kills he allows lethal to get this ball off respawn that oh was a big God. kill because that was three dead that was the first spawner that was coming in falcated there they have numbers once again take a look at the scoreboard 77 66. My a nice God. quick scope a killing spree from frosty knows exactly no. where snipe down is snipe down if you poke your head out i'll hit it the gun's the only thing that sticks out and frosty hits it even knocking him down and now phase have two dead 91 points for sentinels 93 they're gonna have zero people in position to try and kill this ball carrier sentinels are gonna do it in game four they're gonna push this series the distance and we're going to a game five and the elimination finals phase and Sentinels will have one Team Slayer to decide who gets in to the grand finals of our Pro Series 4. Here we go, Sentinels down to the wire. Every inch, every point on the board mattered in the end. They close out game number four. It took them three rounds, but they do it with a very convincing final hold and a fantastic set of plays at the end of the game to close that one out. If we take a look at the totals, it's Frosty who drops a 50 bomb, 50 and 30 triple kill and four doubles on the board as well a 50 bomb is what's required for frosty to get sitting those into game five and that's just what he does plus 20. oh my god look at the total the difference game. there 230 to 229. my god, oh my god. you've got to be kidding me what a series this has been we hope you're enjoying it we certainly are we're going to game five this is unbelievable and, and with the level of halo that's being played i mean with the Slayers that we've seen today in game twos, we can only hope that we see somewhat of a 50-48 situation because already we've seen it four times today. I was gonna say, we only do 50-40. I think we had one 50-47. Every other Slayer we've had on the stream has been a 50-48. Beautiful triple kill earlier on in one of the first rounds from Falcated, but so back this and forth, fight. as we said, this was, a, this was a wacky one as the time ticked down. It was a small point difference, but the time was the difference maker as we go back to that play for Boo Boo Doo Boo. Nice little rotate and bait the classic there to bring the ball all the way back to see bound closing out that round number two. But in our third round, it was a little bit different. It was a final convincing hold coming in from Sentinels. And once again, they scrapped a lot of time in the middle as well. Yeah, it was really the objective efficiency difference, right? It felt like both teams were slaying out. Obviously, Frosty going plus 20 helps, but Sentinels time after time, they were able to get that ball out of bottom middle as it was reset. And it wasn't like FaZe was really highly contesting that that situation very often and i think phase are going to be kicking themselves for letting sentinels get the ball out of the bottom middle position once it was returned several times throughout that match but because of it sentinels tie the series up two to two against the phase clan it's going to be streets slayer that's going to decide our elimination finals and this is going to be a fast-paced game and i couldn't be happier to see it because we've seen how both these two teams can dominate street slayer
That's right. Both teams, I believe, with a, with a winning record. Phase is 5-4 and four in this game type recently. We'll take a look at Sentinels 3-1, and one, so a slight edge percentage-wise to Sentinels, but we'll have to see if that translates, though. Of course, that's a limited amount of game data, historical game data to go off of, so perhaps you could say the slightest of edges to the side of Sentinels, but this is going to be fantastic. It'll be our first Game 5 of the evening, and I would say that this is really the only way we want this series to go. As, a, as an unbiased Halo fan, I was hoping we might head to a Game number five and that's exactly what we're gonna get i mean with the series and the halo that we have been seeing today it's only right that we at least get one game five it's only yeah. right that after all these highly contested matches throughout all of today i mean this series has been the best one yet and yeah. i hope that the grand finals is able to top this one but be tough. right now focusing on game five for both these teams a lot on the line we're talking sentinels is trying to not play in cloud nine's pool at anaheim in order to do so they need to win this whole tournament tournament yeah phase uh, not, not gonna be easy i mean phase had such a strong performance against cloud nine probably the best performance we've seen them against cloud nine since raleigh yeah in that winner's finals you know that they want a rematch you know that they in their in their hardest of hearts they can beat cloud nine they believe that they can beat cloud nine with just a few different plays but they yeah. have to get there in order to do so. They, and in order it, to yeah. do so, it's this game five. It is this game number five. And remember how fast paced Aquarius Slayer was. As I said, it was probably the highest amount of kills we saw in the mi opening minute and a half that we've ever seen in Aquarius Slayer. You have to wonder if both teams are gonna have the same approach on a street Slayer. It's a little bit riskier to do, especially with things like Rockets in play, or if the teams are gonna play a little bit slower. I, I think we're gonna see a lot of aggression early on. And when one team has to slow it down, they finally will. But we're jumping into our game number five right now. It's going to be Street Slayer between FaZe and Sentinels. Tournament life on the line for both teams. All right, here we go. I, I strongly hope that we see this one go the distance. I wouldn't be shocked to see this game slow down, like you said, for what's on the line for both of these two teams. You know that they're not going to give any deaths away for free. They're going to play their lives to a perfection. But who will be the players that make the plays of the game? I love the fact that we're starting on board with Falcon and pushing this shotgun spawn already upgrading his starting loadout with this bulldog shotgun going to give himself a great opportunity to compete for these rockets. But with multiple members of phase over towards the shotgun side, it is going to be lethal to get those rockets. Nobody on phase getting a position to try and deny those rockets from lethal. And because of it, he finds himself one oh. making a double a great predictive rocket for lethal and a hot start for Sentinels already. Look at the pre-fire rocket on the rocket pocket. It does connect. And it's not every time that you see uh, great, like we talked about, rocket efficiency coming in from players, but Lethal able to connect with both of those. A little bit of a free rocket grab there, it felt like, just as you had pointed out, and also good help from Frosty alongside the Neons. Give them a little bit of a lead here and tires control with the Bulldog as well. Yeah, it's always the Bulldog and tires that seems to surprise players. And now Frosty using that situation to his advantage, pushes his team to a two kill lead, smells blood in the water, spots Falcated in this red room, and he's gonna look to push, Oof. but help is on the way for Falcated. He's able to stay alive, but Badubu able to also play his life. And that was an overextension from Sentinels because now there's three dead. Talk about a water cooler conversation there. That's a water cooler chat. You might not want to be part of there as you try to fly in two players on phase, just waiting around the corner. And like you said, an overextension. And I was expecting to see a little bit of aggression, a little bit of hype coming out from these two teams and maybe a little bit of overextension. That's what we just saw, because just like that, phase is able to answer right back and take the lead. And you have to wonder if Sentinels needed to send it all the way to Red Room at that moment. Absolutely, they didn't. And that was a massive overextension. They thought they had control. They thought that they were going to be able to press the members of phase before respawners were able to come through but they just didn't have the timings and because of it phase right back in this game actually with the two kill lead but badubu looking to press with the stalker rifle but lethal backing both those players down as the second set of rockets comes up in five seconds you see lethal reposition and you got to think phase is not going to give up the second set of rockets to lethal as easy as they did the first yeah these rockets are going to be huge only a two kill game between these two sides Ooh, formal with those and falcetti gets punished for peeking there Formal able to grab the splash damage. If there's one guy who knows how to use these rocks on streets, it feels like it's Formal. Yeah, Formal. You have to remember that game five, he had it. Yes. Raleigh, 20, I believe five kills. Was it something insane? He's going to need something similar of a performance Ooh, to try and keep dude. sitting those in this tournament. A great rocket and a great finish with the BR as he loses his life as well. But a great trade from FaZe on the rocket player. That's a win. If you're a FaZe Clan member, they have the map control they want to deal with. Falcated looking to press 
with this bulldog shotgun can't quite break through the deployable wall from snake bite in that situation waits for his team though and now look at how quick the rest of phase are they find the kills Falcated only having to be a distraction there is all phase needed to take a four kill lead and clear out pd and they're even able to get angles Falcated try and overextend here where that bulldog really be the aggressor here the one that is able to get that opening damage as the entire team pushes in from b as well now this is a successful push from phase they find three kills formal last guy alive trying to fight for his life for bound there to finish him off and they flip the map successfully what sentinels tried to do to phase earlier in the game works out in phase's favor this time around and now they have a six kill lead to play around bound with this stalker rifle able to anchor this position sees nades coming through from the shotgun and that's a lot of information for bound to relate to his teammate they're going to be pushing the right side of the map love that play from falcated killing spree from bound as well even though falcated did take that one stalker hit he still goes see balk with the bulldog as everyone else is pushing b driveway and like you said it's a perfect push they trade about four for one there that will give them here that four kill lead yeah four kill lead bound does find formal but you think bound's gonna get taken down but he gets around the corner stays alive and this stalker rifle worth gold and the amount of damage that bound's able to provide for his team right now somehow sneaks out the front of the base spots frosty with the wow. perfect timing takes frosty down and his rockets are coming up that kill could be a big one look at bound knowing that all the room he had very rarely can you go front seeing and just run up garbage to pick up a kill like that but he does exactly that also has all the space in the world to grab rockets fly through tires check pd right now they are running away with this game it's a seven kill lead taking over bound is look at the reposition the awareness the communication comes through he's able to finish off that kill provide a little space for his team finds the back of frosty can't find the kill but unfortunately that rocket doesn't fall home a kill does come through on the nade from frosty so bound can see assist but 13 and 4 already in game 5 bound is starting to make a name for himself outrageous numbers most kills in the game across both teams least deaths as well putting on an absolute show here stepping up when he needs to i mean look at the numbers there right positive eight and his team leads by seven bound is running this map bound taking over in game five you know he's capable of so much as a super young superstar in this league but three kills go straight into sentinel's favor bound able to trade one but sentinel's doing everything oh they can my. to stay in this but somehow bound able to find the timing and the reticle positioning to get that kill on the lethal is massive because he's gonna lose his life no matter what but to keep a six kill lead in phase's favor is massive trying to control tires though is snake by this one far from over and sentinels quietly have kept this game close we we're talking about what was an eight kill lead that has been shrunk significantly as the bulldog is continuing to run tires as you pointed out earlier it's a sentinels push here on back a and back pd sentinels certainly keeping this game close till a five kill game five kills is within reach right and that's what sentinels is trying to do as rockets are approaching coming up in 15 seconds frosty doing his best to control this tires position but all of phase are going to know frosty is here he does spot bound going into the police department so lethal's gonna have his hands full with bound knowing he's on fire frosty is gonna get in that position to where he can trade out the damage lethal's able to do a questionable push but snipe down it's not questionable when you've got the gunny that he has he gets the damage with the ar able to find that kill finally stop frosty from the terror with that shotgun rockets did come up though i believe that they're gonna be down towards the oddball spawn you see Snipe done trying to make his way over there, but they're already gone. And Sentinels, they've secured Rockets. They've gotten a few kills of their own, and now it's just a three-kill game. Who would try to figure out what's going on at bottom? Neon doesn't have the help he needs. He'll trade from the grave. But still, as you said, they're both trying to figure out where those Rockets are. And if you're a phase, you are not happy with how close this game is. Still a three-kill game. Keep in mind, they were just up by eight. Now 40 to 37. This is the home stretch. Yeah, it does look like Sentinels have the better opportunity with the sandbox in hand. Stalker rifle and Snake Bite's hand. He gets taken down by Bound, pushing straight down by the middle to find the kill. The shotgun in Frosty's hands could be the play of the day here for Sentinels. He's wisely going to back up as he gets information yep. that there's multiple members trying to push towards Arcade. Frosty relocates, jumps into tires. Body with the shotty. He finds himself the opening pick, and Oof. Sentinels could be looking to push, but great grenades trade that one out. He tries to nope out of there at tires, isn't able to do it though. Double kill does come in here, so that will lead to a two kill lead for face. 43 41, still everything focused around these B pillars, around the B stairs. Bound is hungry, and he gets another one on lethal. Not afraid to drop down with the Bulldog three kill game. 22 kills for Bound right now. 22 and 10 as he's pushing. Make it 23. The 24th one narrowly escapes his grasp. But the rest of FaZe are in a position to where they can capitalize here. Lethal does find a kill at 45-43. FaZe have the lead. Boo all alone in the back of C, though. 
Not no! able to make it happen. 45 45, just like that. Drop balls down. Look at these rockets at 20. Gets melted immediately. Three and that's going to be a lead here for Sentinels. 46 45. Sentinels get all of the slays, make it a fourth in a row. Rockets are coming up and they have the entire map to play around. Sentinels have now taken the lead. If they can secure these rockets safely, they can take this series. Rockets are coming up in three seconds. FaZe do get an opportunity to come off spawn and compete for these rockets, but they have such little sight lines, such little room to try and work around. And Snipe down spotted out immediately. Although Formal, a little bit of an overextension, his team shot down. 49 to 46, FaZe have to give these rockets up. Got to keep an eye on those rockets here. Now looking back, oh! see, that's it, and off screen. The final kill does come in, it's 50, 46 somehow, Sentinels pull it out. Bound might have had 23 kills on the board, but Sentinels wants nothing to do with it. They close it out in the final moments. And as we said, Clutch, Slayers have delivered today. This has been the best day of Slayers we've ever seen in competitive Halo. And I've, you and I have been doing this for a very long time. We can say that with confidence. Somehow, it's Sentinels in game five. They are going to the grand finals and they defeat FaZe Clan. Wouldn't it be a story for Sentinels' last ride with Formal to come out on top, to take the entire Pro Series to stop Cloud9 in their tracks to deny the 4P from happening. They take down FaZe in a phenomenal get best of five. A game five, 50-46 here in the elimination finals. They get their ticket to the grand finals to fight the juggernauts and an opportunity to play spoil to the Cinderella story that is Cloud9. All three players there outside of Bound going negative as you see in that game. Bound 24-12 pop-off game. Yo, oh, if I drop third. If I drop 24 kills in a bet in a game five and we lose, there's a discussion we're going to have shortly after, I promise. And you can bet that's exactly what's going to be the case for the side of phase as they look ahead towards Anaheim. Certainly expecting to be in the finals here, but they won't be. We will not get to see the phase C9 rematch, at least not today. We'll have to wait for Anaheim to hope for that one. But it's Sentinels in the end. Keep in mind, they were down by seven at 1.8 kills in this game, and they play the long game. Aggressive plays from Bound in this one, doing everything he could for the squad. They're up 44-41 here, unable to close it out. It turns it into 45 here. And I mean, like, he, he gets another guy no shield. He just creates so much space. Frosty trying to nade rockets to himself. Doesn't this happen. This is the grenade just barely, but it doesn't matter. Like, they, at that point, the game was over. When it was 47-46 and all of FaZe is spawning back trim, it's yeah. over. FaZe is going to have one to two sight lines max to try and compete for rockets. Sentinels are going to have the entire map to play around. And, and with rockets respawning, like, FaZe have to compete. But Oof. with such little angles, there's no way that they're going to be able to compete on an even playing field. It's the kills that led up to that. It, it's the five, six kills in a row that Sentinels had in that situation immediately after taking down Bound. That was massive. Guys, bringing you back in, I mean, a lot. That, that, my heart's still going. Yeah, um, I uh, I can't breathe, uh, really. But honestly, I think I, I'm going to have an early grave with uh, HCS, to be perfectly honest with you, because these Slayers as well, just ending on these ridiculously close Slayer games is just amazing. I, I, you know, Onset, bringing you into this conversation, I, I really want to know what you think of Sentinels right now. And, and honestly, comparing the two rosters, because I think with Formal, they were a way riskier, aggressive, scrappier team. And it seems to be working for them. Yeah, I mean, just get me to Anaheim. That's all I can think about right now. <laughs> we got a grand finals to come, but get me to Anaheim. Let's get back on land and let's watch these teams. Because I, I, yeah. I think it's so difficult to compare Sentinels that we're seeing right now with the Sentinels, we're going to see Anaheim, right? Because you have yeah. two different players playing. It's, it is what it is. But the way the Sentinels are playing right now is a lot of fun to watch. It is so, so good. Let's remind ourselves, you know, FaZe gave C9 one of the best series we've had. I was like, there's no way we top that. Then we go into that series and I'm like, how is this happening? How is this happening? Like, games are being decided by one missed bullet, by one beatdown, by, by one rotation. It's one thing in those last moments that changes the game. It is absolutely ridiculous. I've never seen Halo played at such an insane level where yeah. it comes down to those final moments. It's just not in a series. Every single game, it is just so fun to watch. I'm having a blast. Oh, dude, I'm having such a big bath up here. And I've, I've said his name so many times So on the other side of things here on phase bound. Oh, my God. This guy, yeah. he is... 
I, dude, I nearly fell out of my chair with some of the stuff that he was doing and accomplishing in this series alone. I mean, I told you from the start, I just said, found, he hasn't got a ceiling yet. He hasn't found his final form as a player. You know, he, he's he got to be close to it, surely, Clutch. I mean, this is this is like ridiculous level gameplay out of him. Not only is he getting the slays, man, but the plays that this guy is making and pulling off is just, it's next level. I mean, everything he was doing was right, right? And the kill that stuck out the most to me um, was when he was stuck in PD and he gets a kill yep. and he's got and he's Absolutely getting sandwiched insane. by multiple members and he slides out and yeah. just finishes oh. that kill and tires. Like even <laughs> when you're going to take him down, he's going to take somebody with him. And it's just plays like that, kills like that just means so much because you're not only trading a kill, you're creating so much uh, space and opportunity for your team that's coming off respawn probably in a rough position to have to fight against less people that are trying to apply pressure to them. And it's like, for him to have like such, it, it was like a higher being in that game five. And yeah, he lost, but like to have the wherewithal, to have the awareness, to make every decision, like to have all this information and to make the right plays. I mean, he was playing lights out. That was final form bound. It was really the rest of phase that we needed to see more of if they wanted to take that one. Indeed, it was just absolutely amazing, honestly, from both sides of the teams here. But we do have somebody on standby from the winning team, Sentinels. We have Frosty uh, ready to take the stage here on our Pro Series. Uh, dude, I mean, I, I got to say, you've exceeded all expectations here, you know, in this Pro Series. You guys have had quite a bumpy ride to get to this point, and obviously Anaheim round the corner. But going up against FaZe, who have been a significant team here in the Pro Series and have been, you know, second place and fighting for that second position in the Grand Finals for quite a few weeks now, taking them down along with the second team kind of seeds that are coming through for Anaheim as well. Where are you guys at right now in terms of your gameplay? Snakebite told us, you know, you were just chilling. There was no strategy, but surely there is something to this team. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like once we picked up Formal, we kind of had this natural chem going with it. Um, obviously, we haven't really like scrimmed together as a full team, but we kind of are on the same game plan and on the same page more often than not. Um, so yeah, we don't really have an actual strategy going into any map or anything like that. We just kind of are going with the flow and that's kind of like uh, what's been helping us win these key games as well. Now, Brad, you seem like you're the coolest man in Halo right now because we've all just been losing our stuff over here after that series. An absolutely insane series. Talk me through those final moments of that game five because it's difficult to put into perspective sometimes from a commentary thing what goes through players' head in those close moments. What was the play call? Who clutched up for you? Um, I mean, honestly, I'd say like everyone had a huge impact on the game just because of the fact that we stayed in it the entire time. I'm pretty sure we were on the back foot pretty much the entire game, but obviously in a huge game five like that, you can't lose composure. You can't, you know, complain or get mad when something doesn't go your way. Uh, every single time that something didn't go our way, we were kind of just focused on the next thing. And that's kind of what propelled us like over the top at the end. But um, yeah, we kind of just, it, everything kind of clicked right when it needed to. Now, Brad, you guys have been in many an uh, opportunity of resetting a grand final. You guys have done so successfully. Uh, you've got Cloud9 here, but you are one grand finals reset away from getting that seventh seed position, which would take you out of the pool of death. You know, what, what is the mindset going into this one against Cloud9? How are you guys feeling about it? Yeah, I mean, going into this match, we feel pretty good. Uh, I mean, I feel like there's no pressure for us to perform, even if that is, you know, if there is something on the line. Um, we're just kind of trying to make this a fun one you know like last last qualifier we we're playing with formal and so we just want to make it a good one for him so kind of just doing what we can and you know bringing the vibes i love yep. that man pure ice one final question for you brad uh royal two has been waiting in the wings uh so to speak uh how excited is matt to get back on land playing again full lineup and how excited are you guys to have him back as well uh, I mean, yeah, first off, we're incredibly excited to have him back. Uh, obviously, missing out that first event, it was a big one, but uh, I know I know he's got to be excited. That first event, like I said, it was it was one that you definitely did not want to miss. Um, but yeah, and I'm, I'm sure he's looking forward to it. And we all are uh, finally reunited with our boy, Royal 2. Oh, dude, we, we are so, so excited to, to have Royal 2 back and see how you guys do here. Uh, honestly, thank you so much for your time and best of luck in this Grand Finals, man. Yeah, thanks so much. I appreciate it.
There we go. The cool, calm, collective. How is he so dude. calm? He's so he's, he's, God, he's cool, he so frosty. Calm? He's, he's so he's good the too. He's it's just frosty, him at all times. God, it's really ice. annoying, isn't it? It is really annoying. It's literally in his name. He has as much ice as you could possibly need. So, uh, yeah, I think that's the only way he's dropping 50 bombs in games versus FaZe, who are looking pretty final form at the moment. Uh, but I've got to say, insane job from both of these teams. And thank you so much for the just incredible entertainment you've given us tonight. I cannot wait for this grand finals. We're heading to a break right now. While we reset things here, let our players get, you know, comfortable here. Oh, actually, before we head to a break, why not check out the graphic uh, of the bracket? Excuse me. Let's have a little look at the bracket right now. Uh, we do, in fact, have our grand finals ready. You can see Sentinels have had quite the journey in the elimination bracket. They have beaten so many of our top teams that they have honestly seemed pretty untouchable to them for the past couple of weeks. And they will rebound into the grand finals facing, I would say, a, a pretty uh, a pretty regular opponent of theirs back in Halo 5, Cloud9. A lot of uh, familiar faces for both of these guys. So it's going to be exciting to see how they face off here. Now we're going to let you go have a drink, get a snack, come back. We have a pretty epic grand finals lined up for you, Sentinels versus Cloud9. We'll see you right after this. HCS is presented by Astro Gaming, AMD, and the Marines. Searching for meaning in a relentless world, always connected, but somehow alone, trapped by illusion. We offer another path where the battle to belong begins. Awakened by a calling, united by the cause you fight for, no one can take away what it means to be among the few, the proud, the marine. Hello everyone and welcome back to the NA Pro series. We are into week number four. My goodness, have we had some ridiculous Halo Infinite action for you on display tonight. It's been madness. And I tell you what, it doesn't stop here because we have a grand final, Sentinels versus Cloud9. And 
Speaking of one of our teams, we need to highlight a specific person, and that is going to be Eco Kevin Smith from Cloud9. He is our USMC service record. I, I've got to say, Eco is one of those players who is really, really hard to to kind of predict what he's going to do, and it makes him extremely dangerous in a series. Uh, not only is he able to slay out, but his predictions in terms of their oppositions and the way he's able to to make plays is just making him a force of nature on a map. Clutch talk to me about Eco. You know, why is he so special? He's the glue for this Cloud9 roster. He really sets the tone as far as a leadership perspective goes. And, and this Cloud9 group is a rambunctious group of individuals, but Eco really keeps everybody in line and understands that, like, he's going to let them all have their personalities, all have their opportunities to express themselves. But when it comes time to set the record straight, when it comes time to get serious, to do business, Eco leads this team. We can't say enough about what he means to Cloud9 and is so important to their success. He certainly is, and he's going to be extra important right now with a very hot, uh, with a large momentum base going against uh, Cloud9 here. Sentinels are going to be lining up with our Cloud9, our three-peat, our rally champions in just a moment. So on set, Rob, I'm going to hand over to you for our grand final. Thank you very much, Lottie. Bravo, it's an absolute pleasure to be in the booth for this final because it's funny how these things happen, right? It's Sentinels, we have all the drama. We've all been there. We've talked yep. it through a thousand times. But who's the one team that historically has been able to beat C9? It is Sentinels. Yes, Formal's there instead of Royal 2, who will be back from tomorrow. But what a grand finals. What a story we could have here ahead of that land tournament coming up just in a few weeks. I mean, how fitting. It took them over a month to do it uh, and to find out if they could be the one that would give Cloud9 one of their biggest battles ahead of Anaheim. And, and that's exactly what we're hoping to see here in our grand final, Sentinels versus C9. Best of five on your screen. As a reminder, Sentinels will need to win two best of fives to get out of the pool of death. That's what's at stake. C9 has already got the first seed going into Anaheim. Sentinels right now with an opportunity not only to really get ready for Anaheim against the best team in the world, but even maybe in two best of fives to change their seed. It will not not be easy though but game number one number one we're headed to live fire well here we go then everybody is the grand finals of the pro series number four and one thing to just quickly point out from that series layout recharge was in there andy the first series that we do see but it's only a slayer so no objective game types to worry about here for sentinels that's gonna be good for them but for cloud nine it doesn't matter what the maps are it doesn't matter what the modes are they are going for four in a row here and looking to make a statement I got to say also just a pleasure to be alongside you for this series. I hope everyone at home has loved the, today. It's been one of the best days of competitive Halo in a very, very long time. Some amazing matches, trades being killed out there on the door as three will fall for Sentinels. But it's a pleasure to have you here for these grand finals in week number four. It's been an amazing month of competitive Halo, and we can't wait to see what these final matches hold in today's games. Well, Penguin's going to sniff out Lethal here. You can see that he knows where he is. Got the heat wave in hand as well, but it's one thing to have the weapon. It's another to hit the shots. Early on here, it was Sentinels who had some semblance of control. AB now in control of Sentinels as Penguin looks to finally finish off Lethal. But Lethal doing a great job there just to play his life, just to be a nuisance. Frosty came in and cleaned up the kill, and Frosty has the snipe in his hands. Now, Andy, this man was doing some pretty nutty things last time we saw him on this map with this weapon in his hands. Do you reckon he can do it again? Oh, my <laughs> God. He's certainly, he's certainly going for it. Let me tell you, it goes for the full send there on Garage Door and Back B as well. This man is fearless. And I got to say, in Frosty's interview, you heard him saying, we're out here, we're out here for the vibes, right? They're just having a great time. That's when some Halo players like this are at their most dangerous. They're out here, they're in the grand finals, and they're just having a great time. This is not their roster due to a substitution that they're heading into the next event with. So they're just looking to have a great time and play the best Halo they can. And to be honest, that's pretty scary when you're looking at these four players. Eco takes him down, gets the sniper rifle out of his hands. Two dead here for Cloud9, but two dead also for the side of Sentinels. C9 will be able to turn overseas, so that's going to be AC in their control. But a strong start here for Sentinels, 35 to five a very impressive start as lethal now looks to convert c yeah very impressive especially when they don't necessarily lead in a slaying category that heavily nice little push though comes out of c9 as they go for a 2v1 on c plat and they will win that only dropping one player so they'll have a minor man advantage for the moment heat wave in the hands of lethal frosty also almost holding hands with lethal here as he takes him down and it's been an interesting road to this grand finals for sentinels as well i know you've all seen the grim reaper meme where he's knocking on the doors where They've beaten Optic. They've beaten 
phase that we just saw. And now if they can take down Cloud9, they're certainly knocking on the door. It would be a story in itself here. Stella picks up one, though, as a conversion looking to take place here on C, as numerous members of Cloud9 are going to be here to finish things off. But he's going to be turned over, though, by Sentinels in the meantime. So Sentinels almost one step ahead at the moment. Yeah, right now looking very good here, 47 to 19. And we've seen, keep in mind, we've seen Cloud9 drop game ones uh, throughout, not just today, but previously. And if they're a team Frosty. that knows how to bounce back, it's certainly that Frosty winning a battle. He certainly should not have won down there on B. And it's plays like that on set that could be the difference maker. Yeah, that was a triple kill for Frosty as he managed to get the stop onto B as well. So 63 points and rising here. Finally, Stella is going to slow down the progress of the man we just had the interview with. But he's been playing some lights out Halo in the moment. And so is this man over recent weeks in my opinion stella has been the standout for c9 which is a crazy thing to say considering how well the likes of renegade have been playing as well exactly to be a standout player on that roster really says uh, something about how well he's playing here as we go over to renegade trying to stay alive against frost he's got the help though so should be able to stay alive from this closet angle and going to be more points on the board here it's a great start for sentinels though 72 to 33 however you do have cloud nine back in control sniper in control and scoring once again yeah trying to be aggressive on this a Stronghold as well. Formal will pick up one. Penguin will trade it out almost immediately, though. But two players do fall. And look at this. Frosty sliding across your screens. He's going to be taken down as well. Penguin, last player alive as Formal will be coming off the respawn screen. He does have the weapons to play with here, but look at this. Sentinel's already recognizing where Penguin is. They saw it on the death screen. They know where those deaths happened, but Penguin's oh still alive and still managing to do some damage. I mean, huge damage, right? He goes into A. He's able to finish A as the last player alive. He also has Sniper and Heat Wave, and then he gets a kill on top Sandbags. You cannot let Penguin get away with things like that and continue to just rack up kills. It's Snake Bite with a double, and the kill, kill feed might give an opportunity for Sentinels to push, but big plays here for Penguin. Penguin picks up one. This is the snipe on two. Formal tries to whip that one back onto his visor, but not going to happen for now as Lethal will pick up the camouflage. Two dead as well for C9. And BC still in the control here of Sentinels, Andy. This has been a great start for Sentinels. There's no other, no other way to put it. Even though they've lost numbers a few times, they've managed to hold control as Frosty once again looks to put on a highlight reel for us with a snipe. Yeah, right there, tries to hit the repulsor at the end. That will not connect. But look at the board. Triple cap momentarily. C is being flipped, but not before the damage is done. 125 to 41. Sentinels control once again. Mangler camo for lethal. We'll see if he can nest bridge jump up here as well. Sneaky Mangy play. Eco's going to fall, you would imagine. Finally is taken out. Now the push comes on to B. Renegade will be taken out as well. Once again, just great job here from Sentinels of making sure that they control and rotate around that B stronghold. And now they're making the push onto C when they have the numbers. Lethal on the flank though. Look at this. He might be able to get the stop onto A as well. There's two members in front of him. So he's going to back out and just try and stay alive. Yeah, nice job there, though. Gets a lot of damage there. He's gonna doesn't get the reset, doesn't get the stop, but instead gets the damage he needs. He's gonna slow down that C9 push, and guess what? He just gets to loop around once again, start with help with the teammate. Now they're gonna force, they're gonna lose B, but the right away they're gonna flip A. So Sentinels, as you said, on set perfectly, one step ahead. Ethan manages to get into B, but there is a player behind him. Grenade's going to come in as well. Stella picks up the kill. Important there to get Lethal out of that stronghold. Two dead here for Sentinels as well. But Frosty, Whoa. my goodness, just whips the heat wave around and absolutely chunks the player off of the back of the green. That was almost like watching Gears of War, not Halo. I was going to say that heat wave is hitting different today. Something about that thing is absolutely connecting in a way that my heat wave certainly does not. Eco now going to grab it and head to the back of the tower. Now they're down by quite a margin here, over 100 points. We'll have to see what C9 can do to bounce back in this game. This is a great flank though from Eco and a great move from C9. You can see that B and C are in, uh, B and A, excuse me, are in their control and C will be as well. Stella picking up another kill. He's going to secure it. It's a triple cap here for C9. Lethal trying to do what he can, wins a vital battle. Formal's going to be there with him as well to try and force Stella back and get this conversion onto C. And while all this is happening, Lethal does the work over here at C. The rest of his team are moving on B. Yeah, great teamwork there to make sure that they clear out C. They needed to send two players. That was the only way they were going to get that flip on C. They do it. They're also working on B. So once again, we're seeing great resilience, great work out of the side of Sentinel Cellar, though, with a nice Mangler drop with that camo. So he's going to pick up another kill and try to keep things alive on a sandbags. Yeah, great shots from Stellar as well. They ain't easy shots to hit from that kind no. of distance with the Mangler. Those aren't easy shots to hit against the camo player if you're frosty as well with the four shot. Renegade moving in, though, to clean up both of the kills and the damage that was done. However, as he picks up two, Sentinels exchange two. So he'll be chased out now by Lethal. C9 on the back foot. This is an opportunity now with the kills going down for Sentinels to try and get inside one of those strongholds and convert. Yeah, Sentinels needs to make sure they keep the foot on the gas. The second you slow down, C9 will strike. They will get right back in this game, and they will close the gap and start to run away with the series if you let them. Sentinels, though, if they keep playing their game, they certainly have a good chance at closing this one out pretty quickly.
Lisa picks up one on Eco. Snake Bite picks up another on Penguin. So the move will be made onto B. And it looks like Frosty and Formal both have the cutoffs there towards Tower. Snake Bite will sacrifice his life to get that conversion onto B. Formal with the green gun. Once again, how many times have we seen the uh, plasma pistol in play today? Oof. Picks up yet another kill. Renegade has the sniper rifle on his hand. But look at the pressure now coming in from Sentinels. Not allowing C9 to feel comfortable. Stella now last alive. My gosh, the coordination, the timing from Sentinels waiting for each other off the spawns, always making sure they're sending at least two players to each stronghold. It has really paid off. The scoring's going to be slowed down. We're going to see an AB hold coming in from Stellar. But once again, Bees just starts to flip right in front of them. So Stellar needs to get around there. They will get the kill. They will get the reset. So maybe a moment here where we're going to see them bounce back in this game. It's an 80-point game, but C9 right now looking like they're getting a little bit momentum. And if you're a fan on the side of Sentinels, it's a little bit worrying. Yeah, you got to remember the Sentinels just come off the back of a huge series. And Eco and the rest of Cloud9 have kind of been sitting watching for a few moments. So it's going to take you a few rounds of kills, a, a few moments, a few minutes, if you like, to get into the feeling of this game. But now they are starting to, but those shots coming in from all of the Sentinels players were important for Frosty to get that camouflage, but it's extinguished almost immediately stomped on as now you're going to see c9 move on c lots to talk about their great shots from lethal to win that battle but renegade comes in to make sure he gets the double and burns the camo it's a, certainly at a pivotal moment here as there's not a lot of room for error for the side of c9 right now bc control still in favor of sentinels and ah. eco needed to make a miracle happen in the 1v2 sandwich but he can't been joking about Halo Infinite being a horror game, but it's been a few times today. We've almost had jump scares happening as players just appear from round corners. Renegade taken down as well. And look at this, a triple cap now for Sentinels. Sentinels, excuse me, 216 and rising. And at this point, Andy, they're almost doubling the lead now of Cloud9. Lethal goes for the quick 180 repulsor jump. A little bit hard to hit with the momentum of that direction. But like you said, scoreboard damage is certainly done. 235 to 128. They will flip C, but still scoring in the favor of Sentinels. And now double kill comes in from Penguin. B will start and C9 needs a run. They need it now. They only have a 12-point cushion. And that's why Hoaxer says that Penguin has one of the best battle rifles in the entirety of the Halo community. You've just seen him take down two players there, top middle. Not easy to hit those shots. Frosty makes the rotation over to C here. But here comes the push from C9, and there's Eco. He needs to be taken down. The reset will be attempted now. Snakebite has the heat wave, needs to pick up the kill on Renegade, at least force him down to the low ground. Sentinel's holding on here, but managing to hold on. And now they're just 10 points away from taking our game one. Yeah, right now, with their position right there, it should be good because they're going to put pressure on A. They're going to hold B throughout this, and let's see if A can get flipped. That's the only hope that C9 has right now. They will get the flip, but B is already being worked on by Sentinels as well. It worked on, but kills have fallen in the favor of C9. Lethal with the drop shield gets the beat down as well onto Stella. Traded out immediately, though, as Snakebite now tries to make the sneaky play towards A. They get A, but look at C. C9 are there. It's going to be a battle, a war around green and around B now. Stella, though, is going to take one down. Frosty has the camo though and sentinels are also inside of b but the reset comes in again for cloud nine renegade this time making a play frosty pushing ahead of c while c gets capped this likely will be a c flip it will go but at the same time a goes as well b being worked on by sentinels let's see though if sentinels can flip b if they do they might be able to continue scoring as in yes indeed they will continue scoring they're also locking down b and c this should be the end this might be the game Snakebite gets the kill on C, and Sentinels continue this run of form. They go 1-0 up here in our grand finals. And you just got a feeling, Andy, we're going to have a little bracket reset on our hands today. Hey, I'm here for it. I think we're all here for it. It's been an amazing month of Halo so far, week after week. Amazing Pro Series gameplay, and if there's one thing we want to see, it's more Halo, especially in our final week of the Pro Series. Sentinels starting off spicy. It's a big, big win in our game number one. Strongholds 250 to 154. And everybody just sharing slays across the board here. One player not having the best of games is Eco, though. 10 kills. We highlighted him before the series got underway. 20 deaths as well. So not really contributing a huge amount to the team as far as kills are concerned. And unfortunately, finding himself maybe on the receiving end of a heat wave and a sniper rifle more often than not. But here's some of the highlights here, Andy. And again, I think that it was about out rotations a lot of the time coming in from Sentinels there. They just seem to be one step ahead at all times. It really did. You identified it right away. Sentinels got out early where they're getting the right spawn rotations. They're also getting the right uh, stronghold rotations as well. And it really let them have the upper hand. The second they started to, for example, lose C, 
They're already on A and they're already flipping it and able to provide the exact amount of pressure. And the only way to do that is if everyone's on the same page. You heard Frosty mention that in his interview. Great double kill there that did come in for Stellar. Lots of moments of greatness, unsurprisingly, from C9 during the game. But you heard Frosty talk about we're all on the same page. We all know the game plan. The only way that you control strongholds as successfully as Sentinels did is if every single player knows what you're actively pushing in each given moment. It was a uh, Asian at its best there for Sentinels to take home that first map, and it needs to be. And it's not just a case of it needs to be now, it needs to be for the entirety of this series if they do want to reset the bracket, but this is just beautiful. This is just setting us up for Anaheim so, so nicely as we move now over to Recharge Slayer. Sentinels said themselves, they ain't very good at this map. Cloud9, they're pretty good at this map, Andy. I, I've got to say, you favor Cloud9 looking at what we've got in front of us now as our game number two. You do uh, Cloud9 5 and 2 recently, 71% win rate on this game type. You go on the other side, if you take a look, instead of the side of Sentinels, they're going to be only 3 and 2 on this game type. So a little bit lower, a little bit less games played total. C9 certainly with a slight edge. We'll have to see, though. Sentinels right now, lots of momentum on their side and, and, and not really a flash in the pan. This team has looked good all day. As you said, Grim Reaper style, they have wiped out the elimination bracket, just taking down anyone in their way. And uh, that game number one, if it's any indicator, they're ready to play here in our grand finals. They certainly are riding the momentum as well. And now Cloud9, what have you got? Can you answer back? They've already been through the ringer a few times today with some of the series that they have had. Let's just take ourselves back. You remember they won 2-1 against Space Station? A close series. Against FaZe, a crazy close series as well. And now they find themselves down in our first game. But a long way to go, as we all know, for Sentinels to call themselves the champions here. Cloud9 not only have to be beaten once, they have to beat them twice. It's a long road for Sentinels, but they're ready to do it today. And like we said, they're really here with nothing to lose, uh, looking to maybe get a different seat if they can win both series. However, nothing to lose in these games, just a little bit of extra practice. And like we said, a final lap with the substitute formal before Royal 2 does resume for Anaheim. Here we go, game number two. Point of view of Stella is how we're going to start, and he's not going to have to fire a bullet to get his first kill. However, some bullets will be fired as... He helps out Penguin, and what a start this is again for C9. They'll get the camo for free. Frosty's trying to make a flank. An interesting play from him. I actually kind of like that from Frosty. I like the idea behind it, but the only problem is it's one thing to have an idea on paper. It's one thing to execute, and Cloud9 shut it down almost immediately. Stellar gets hit by a plasma there. Looks like a friendly plasma based on the angle that it was thrown and the hit, hit ticks there in blue as well. They're going to finally clean that up, so he will narrowly get away, but it's a very, very strong start. Six to two here for C9. Yeah, that is the uh, the strongest of possible starts. And now you've got Stella with camo and a shock rifle. This is not looking good here for Sentinels at the start. You can see across the board, Frosty and Formal both sat on Whoa. donuts as Lethal gets sat on his backside by that shot coming in from Stella. Renegade picking up another one, and now the collapse is coming in here from C9. They look pretty pissed off that they lost that first game, Andy, and trying to be as aggressive as possible. I was going to say, C9 is a bounce-back team. How many times have we seen even today alone when they drop game number one? They've lost a lot of strongholds with these blowout game ones, and right away they just answer back. Somehow Frosty slides underneath the tag of Stellar there with the shock rifle, but they really do. They get ticked off after game one losses, and they come back with huge numbers in the follow-up games, and then they just seem to run away with it after that, and certainly showing up in game Game number two. Snake by somehow alive here, finally gonna get taken down. I have to say, even though it was a really strong start here from Cloud9, Sentinels have responded. Stella picks up the kill and the killing spree. So a great start here for B as they find themselves up by 13 to 7. But considering power weapon control, positional control, you have to say Sentinels have done a pretty good job to keep this close. Uh, they certainly have, especially when considering Stella right now has grapple, shock rifle, sword as well, just continuing to rotate. Seven kill games, certainly something Sentinels could bounce back from, but we're not too far away onset from this getting out of hand, depending on how these next few kills go. Are we going to see our Ger uh, Geronimo? Oh yes, boy. we are! Geronimo as he goes in with the grapple and the sword. Three full in quick succession for Sentinels. Cloud9 really started to put the wow. pain onto Sen hit. That's a clinical push there, like you said, just all ends there with the grapple, picks up a double kill in pipes, and that's what we talked about. Depending on how those kills go, they trade four for one. They're going to be very happy to do that. Even more extra grapple for Renegade in a second. He's going to wait it, though, and he's going to bait it. Picks up the back whack, 19 to 9 now. Yeah, I said Sentinels were keeping it close, but now Cloud9 have said, that's close enough, boys. Shock Rifle going to go into the hands of Renegade as well. 20 to 10, make that 21 as Penguin picks up another kill. Last two players alive here from Sentinels are trapped as well. Renegade We'll wait for that camo to come back, but it's actually, oh my God. actually run out now. And now he's just going to go grappling forward. He's doing Tarzan impressions. He's just destroying everyone in his path. 
Talk about not giving a, an expletive. Just flies in, does not care at all. It's 24 to 11. There's three people in back elevator. He just grapples right in and gets free kills. And guess what? When you have a team like C9 controlling the map like this, you can do whatever you want. And that's exactly what Renegade's doing right now. Might finally get taken down here. And it uh, looks like it's the help almost trades there. A few kills go in the way of Sentinels, but it's almost too little too late. It's already 27-14. C9 just absolutely destroying in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't, uh, Renegade doesn't give a shit. It's as simple as that, and if, you know, it's, it has to be said sometimes. Frosty is going to be moving through to try and get some semblance of something going here for Sentinels, but it's just been a vice grip so far from Cloud9 in this game. Frosty down. Lethal is going to be taken down pretty sh shortly as well as he can't get the kill to his name. Formal picks up one, but at this point, I think C9 are just collapsing too quickly. I don't think we've seen Sentinels 4 alive at any point since around the two-minute mark on this game. And we really have now 31 to 18 here, and it's just like we said, when you have a team supporting this well and on the same page like C9 is, answering back in game number two in such a huge way, it allows each player to have such comfort, such a, what the Frosty somehow avoids the G, nade there through the Geo, doesn't clip over the wall. That was miraculous, but still a 12-kill deficit for them. Yeah, we're very close to getting fined a couple of times in this series already, which yeah. is uh, always a good <laughs> sign, to be honest, as a viewer. Not so much for the uh, the bank balance, but never mind. Eco now trying to stay alive around the sea stairs. And Sentinels have at least managed to get some sort of semblance of respectability back in this game. There's a shot from Snakebite as well with a shock rifle. Maybe that's what they need. Just one weapon, one little bit of momentum starting to go their way. And look at this, C9 what? recognize it and Renegade just sticks him in the face. I mean, th that doorway was heavily guarded to say the least. We had plasma grenades, we had swords. No one was coming through that doorway on the side of Sentinels without getting blown up. And that's his, oh my goodness, Frosty just flies in <laughs> with a grapple, Kalabunga commando bonanza, flies in there with some beautiful shots in the back of Elevator, makes very quick work of his opponents. And even though this is an 11 kill game, Sentinels is still putting up a fight. Yeah, that's a trademark of Andy Dudinsky, AKA Bravo. Uh, if anyone else in the uh, esports community dares use that phrase again, then you will be finding a letter from his lawyers coming through your letterbox at any point. But now we're gonna see Frosty now trying to move on the pipes. The trade will be all that happens, but 10 kills the difference between the two teams. And even though I was saying, you know, this is looking like C9, it just collapsed too quickly. There's not much that Sentinels can do. Having seen what's happened recently, Andy, it's very silly to say that. I think we've learned whoa, that whoa, as Formal whoa, whoa, says goodbye. Oh, oh my, talk about your boy having your back. Sellers <laughs> hanging down bottom sea crates and Eco just repulsor nopes his opponent right off the board, says, you don't have to worry about this, I got your brother. Takes him down and I think that sums up this game pretty well on set, the fact that we just saw C9 just absolutely making very quick work of their opponents. It's 44-29. Now the only question is, can Sentinels avoid the stake dip? In a C9, they only need five kills. Sentinels need a couple just to keep this away from the dinner being served, so to speak. Camo's gonna be popping as well. Lethal and Snake Bite pick up two, so that is gonna be the steak dinner avoided for now. If Sentinels win this one, Andy. No. I'll Don't take you out for dinner. It. How about that? Which you're taking me out more than out for dinner. <laughs> you're taking oh! me out for dinner regardless. Double kill here for Frosty. Not done yet. 35 45, 10 kill game. Really should be a Sentinels, vic excuse me, should be a C9 victory, but Sentinels not going down without a fight and a performance. Here we go. Formal does have the Mangler. Frosty still has the shark rifle. Renegade trying to push in. There's a player from C9 Wait. in front of him though. Oh, oh, oh what? 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 Frosty manages to trade out a lease from a very unfortunate looking position. Oh now Formal picks up. I tell you what, everyone's worked this out now, haven't they? That everyone's <laughs> using this thing ridiculously. Oh! Formal, what? Stop it. 49, one kill to go. Finally, the madness has ended. It was almost like it was a race to 50 for both of those teams as Cloud9 turned up in they game number two and managed to tie up the series. Felt like there was a rule where you had to end the game on the shock rifle. It felt like yeah. a, a gentleman's agreement that you had to get the 50th kill with the shock rifle because everyone was just aping onto that weapon to try to get it in their hands. And in the end, C9, it was certainly an interesting game, but once you have a team like C9 with a 11, 12 kill lead, it kind of just becomes a victory lap for them. They'll close out game two with a score of 50 to 41. Hopefully we'll see um, some semblance of order restored in our next game of the series. I don't know. That I was, don't know about that. Because <laughs> that was played a thousand miles an hour. There's no other way to describe it. We'll see the stats there from uh, all the players across the board. And 
to be fair to Sentinels, that last run they put it on made it look a lot closer than maybe it was for the majority of that game. I was going to say, realistically, that game will be remembered as more of a 50-30. Uh, but in the end, like you said, great shock rifle play, great last-minute effort there from the side of Sentinels to bring the score to an even more respectable final score. But here's a look at the highlights. Yeah, I mean, the shock rifle is going to be featured in quite a few of these as well. There's a sword. That was the, uh, the official first Geronimo that we've seen in quite some time as the sword combines with the grapple to get the kill. Hiko manages to stay alive here, bottom tower, to pick up some... Uh, easy trades but i mean there's gonna be shock rifle kills everywhere everywhere that we look i mean it's pretty impressive to be honest we found a highlight package that isn't just shock this. rifle kills but this Ooh. there's no worse feeling as a player not only to see someone repulse you off the map but have a teammate of his watch you alongside him yeah but how about to have your boy just repulse for someone who's on your back it's like get oh, off of his back it's a good feeling 50 to 41 your final score though as we said Felt like a little bit more damage was done by the side of C9. They will tie the series one to one. And how fitting we're going into game number three with a tied series. Yeah, a tied series. And I said uh, there will be some sort of order restored. And there's no other game type to do it quite like capture the flag on Bazaar. Because nobody has a choice but to have a semblance yes. of order restored. Due to the fact that we need multiple slays of teams to get that flag across the map. So a chance for everyone maybe just to grab their breath for just a few seconds here as Maybe. the teams get into the next game but with everything we've seen today Andy it wouldn't surprise me to see a 5-4 inside 7 minutes between these two 4 and 3 for Sentinels 57% win rate on this game type let's take a look at C9 9-0 and on Bizarre CTF they have not dropped this game type in recent tournament memory we'll have to see if that holds true here's the opening rush here we go then First kill goes to C9. Opening strategy certainly been in their favor for the majority of the games we have seen so far, Andy. It looks like C9, not surprisingly, just a little bit more locked in on what they want to do off the rip. Penguin gets overshield, and no one has grabbed grapple yet. He gets the grapple and the rockets as well. Now he's just flying into the back of the base. And I don't know how, but he gets essentially everything for free. Lots of support from teammates there, without a doubt. And again, picks up the kill on the snake bite as well. The flag decides to get stuck in the roof, as we see it do so many times. Penguin now running this with the power weapon in hand. Wouldn't surprise me to see this thrown out bottom middle, but he doesn't really need to, to be honest, because if you check the kill feed for just a few seconds there, all of Sentinels were dead. Snakebite is the only player alive at the moment, and this has been the quickest and most devastating flag run I have seen so far in Halo Infinite on this map. It was absolutely flawless from Cloud9. Penguin not taking any damage. I could not agree more. Like we said, it felt like Penguin got everything for free. He actually got the overshield, walked across top middle as if to advertise himself to the entire map, then grabs the grapple, pops up, grabs the rockets, walks in, runs the flag back himself. You will not see that very often. And the only way you see that is because he had such great support from teammates off of the opening. Remember when I said I don't think this game's going to be quite as fast? My bad, everyone. My bad. Penguin now. <laughs> oh, what the grapple the as we what see. Is uh... <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> This is absolute. <laughs> I, I was about to say, as we see, but I've got no idea what to call it. Uh, it's the double grapple jeopardy. This is swinging some Cirque... 60s. I don't know what's going on. Something out of Austin this is Powers. Some Cirque du Soleil, uh, absolute circus acrobatics going on here. You, you very rarely see two grappling players crossing like ships that's, in the night, yes, but that's exactly what meme, we... It's a meme, but with both Spider-Man midair <laughs> instead of just pointing at each other. Yeah, exactly. Wait, you have grapple? I thought I had grapple. One to zero still in favor of C9. Ooh. And as we said, if, uh, this, if we thought this series was going to slow down, it certainly has not. It's an overshield grab now for lethal. We'll see what Sentinels can do. All right. Is lethal with the overshield. Manages to Ooh. pick up one. There's going to be some help from a teammate as well. Penguin, though, unfortunately, I think that might have been a teammate onto lethal that takes him down in those few moments. Excuse me, another teammate as we're now on board with lethal. And now Sentinels do have some sort of control. There's, <laughs> There's Renegade going for the headbutt. <laughs> Was there? Not, not going to connect as he's taken down. And now Penguin has to play some defensive moves here with the AR in oh hand. Boy. It gets a little bit windmilly, though, as uh, it will be Sentinels making the push. Just tries to hold there like a, uh, a solo player just holding the Testudo formation. Didn't work too, too well for him. Eco trying to win the battle on the double doors, but it's Frosty that wins that one. Not over yet. Finally, it will be Stellar that comes in, but essentially two dead for both sides, so teams will be resetting here. Yeah, Snakebite's first alive on his team as well, so he'll be trying to move up mid-map. You can see the Rocket's going to be popping in a few seconds, and look at the pressure coming in from Cloud9, though, but a huge amount of praise needs to give, be actually given to Snakebite there. He managed to stay alive in all of that. You saw that his teammate was there, and somehow or other, Snakebite and the rest of his team have managed to, in a very, very dodgy-looking position, get out of things with the Rockets in their hands. 
Plenty of time on the clock as well. Look at that. Nice. Oh, my God. Oh, geez, you can't sir. track Ow! these grapple players. Stellar finally gets taken down. Tried to grapple in. Snakebite gets good splash damage off the wall to take him down with a double as well. Renegade looks like picked up those. Maybe shot the last rocket in the kill feed as well. So I was going to say for a moment, it looked like Sentinel's maybe getting a little bit of control. But when you have Stellar just absolutely Tarzaning in like that, it starts to shake things up a bit and things will slow down just a bit. Maybe a little bit of a reset. Too dead now for the side of Sentinels. Too dead. And you can see the Eco is trying to hunt down Snakebite here. It's a battle around the Antennae. He's got better reception. At the moment, it looks like it's going to be Snakebite who manages to tune in a little bit quicker and win that 1v1 battle. Overshield popping as well here, Andy. Snakebite goes full 5G, picks up that one. Also going to pick up another one bottom mid. It's going to earn him an overshield. So that relationship with the Cell Tower certainly paying off here as he has some great reception off those last few plays. Now moving in through HUD as well. Going to look for those spawners and he finds them right away. I think we're going to be taken down though you can see the shots are coming in but there's teammates here to help out as two four for c9 now the flag go. is moving here through the treehouse for sentinels they've managed to get this across halfway but are they able to convert in such an effective way that we saw cloud knight it looks like two players have already fallen though for sentinels the overextension also coming in here from cloud nine so snake has got some difficult decisions to make here he gets the ticks with those grenades but you can see the flag is away penguin and eco pick up some kills and it looks like this might have actually turned into the favor of c9 yeah, let's see what Stellar does. If he stays alive here, it will maintain the advantage for C9. But if he dies, we'll kind of go even. We'll have to see exactly how this goes. And ooh, what a play there. Penguin somehow stays alive and Stellar just waits and dipsy doodles around the pillars. And they're going to bring this home. I mean, this is that was absolutely genius from... Uh... I think it was Stella. Actually, we yeah. were watching, knowing that Frosty was above him, knowing that, that he was not going to give up that angle because of there where the flag was, just waited and baited and got all of the time he needed to double up with his teammate. And from there, Cloud9 counter cap, they're up by two. Stellar, yeah, like you said, such a great job. Just waits for Penguin's help. And as you saw in the kill feed, it was two kills that went in favor of C9. So Stellar just played the numbers game. As long as he stays alive, they'll be able to continue that run. He stays alive long enough. Penguin knows to come help right away. You know there were great comms in the background as well. That will secure the second flag. Formal trying to get that flag moving as well from the Cloud9 base. You can see the situation on the map at the moment is it's pretty even as he somehow manages to make that fight, which was not even, turn in his favor. Eco managing to keep cool and keep composed in that battle rifle fight to make sure that he picks up the kill but two dead now either side snake bite gonna be bottom middle grenade's gonna be tossed here and a nice shot to clean up that kill oh as well formal unfortunately is once again gonna fall to the palpatine not the first time we've seen it today this time he falls booby dooby probably thinking why didn't that happen for me a little bit earlier yeah, sometimes you just get double dynamo, and it's never a good feeling. Here comes the full send. It's with the overshield. It's with the mangler. It's with the grapple, and C9 pushing in once again. Renegade, there's one guy who knows how to do this. It's him. He flies right in, gets another kill. Killing spree for Renegade. The flagpole starts, but it's a stop right there on the doorstep for just a second. Snakebite managed to get the kill and managed to slow it down, but that's all he's managed to do because the flag has managed to get through the treehouse because Snakebite wasn't in a position to challenge. And look at the kill feed. Stella has the rockets. Stella picks up two fresh kills. Formal last player alive. And once again, Eco is just going to waltz home through the doors here with that flag in his hands. Kind of. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Eco. Take that one home. Put yourself up three to zero. Nice job, though. You might have noticed that he slowed down on the bridge, and anyone who's played enough Halo Infinite knows that you have a little bit of half cover from that bridge, a uh, little doorway right there that uh, just shuts down the angle for anyone who's pushing in from the opposing tree. And he's able to play that and just slow play as it goes and lets his shields recharge. During that time, his team's able to get the right damage, the right kills around the opponent's tree. And just like that, he's able to punch in the third flag. Lethal versus Penguin. Both players back down, showing the respect as they couldn't get the finish. Renegade now going to be buddying up with Penguin inside of the bar now the one thing for sentinels and any team doesn't want is two players inside of your own bar so many angles and so difficult to get them out of here on respawn andy absolutely and right now penguin once again just looks like he has a free pass into the enemy's base because look at the kill feed it's renegade picking up kills with the bulldog as well as a melee finish there that double kill is going to pave the way eventually former will trade out but look at the pressure that's coming in as c9 runs this back three dead once again two fresh spawners that's such an important grenade that came in from formal as well it's such a big play overall he actually spawned inside of the hut or the lockers whatever you want to call Oof. it as penguin put snake bite on his back the battle of the animals is ended but managing to stay alive there, Formal picked up one, got that grenade too, managed to take two players down to no shield. But from that, it looks like Sentinels aren't able to capitalize. Penguins through the double doors. He's got that flag back to the base, and this is looking like it will be three flags being added to that one. And it's now four for Cloud9 as they move one flag away from closing this game now.
And you might have noticed, noticed, excuse me, moments ago that we didn't really have anyone that was standing out in the kills category. That has changed. Renegade is now 22 and 11 in this game. Penguin, 19 and 8. Big, big game. Lethal struggling a little bit in this one as well. He's 8 and 18. Although he has been playing some lights out Halo, some of his best Halo so far that I've seen in Halo Infinite from Lethal. And this game, maybe not one that he wants to look back on as one of the highlights for now. Stella now moving this one across. Keep your eyes on the feed. Frosty goes down. Renegade picks that up. And that means Stella is going to be able to move forward as Eco picks up another. We don't yep. see this very often in Halo Infinite, everybody. Let alone in a grand final. But it's going to be five flags on the board here. Cloud9 go up two to one. Wow, and they do it with three minutes on the clock. You hear so much talk about how very rarely do you get games that go to five. And they're always ending on time. That one ends five to zero with three minutes left. That tells you just how efficient, just how effective C9 is on that game type. And they now move their record to 10 and 0 with a 100% win rate on Bizarre CTF. Just relentless. A lot of teams will hold mid map. They want to hold your side of the base, your third of the map, C9. It is just stifling. And the speed at which they jump on those respawns, Andy, is just so, so impressive as well. Five to zero. Something you won't hear a lot, like I mentioned on Bazaar Capture the Flag, but if anyone can do it, it's Cloud9. Renegade 23 and 11, Penguin 19 and 8. These are crazy numbers. Shows on the scoreboard, just an amazing job from the entire side of C9 to take a look at damage as well. And these are these are different categories. You got players on, on essentially three players on 5,000 damage plus Stellar there on 4,000. As you could just tell the, by the damage, it tells the story of what was happening in that game. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of that third map of the series as well. And it's going to be all the side of C9 as they were absolutely dominant, to be honest with you. I mean, Snakebite did some pretty good stuff here when the Rockets were coming up as the first player alive, but I'm not gonna lie, the first the first 10 minutes, uh, first 10 minutes, the first sort of 15, I can't speak, the first 10 to 15%, that's the word that I'm looking for, of that game just seemed to feature more grapple plays than I've seen in the majority of games full stop, Andy. It did, it really was. It was the highest flying acrobatics we've seen in Halo Infinite. Uh, plays like this too, Renegade just soaring in here and eventually, like you said, he does get stopped by Snakebite on that doorstep, but it didn't stop the run itself as they punch home flags three, flags four, and eventually the fifth flag as well. Penguin, once again, getting frenzy. frenzy for him. We did not catch that in the feed, but you can see on the replays, a strong performance from Cloud9. And without doubt, one of the best teams in the game, a bizarre capture the flag. But now we move into what could be our final game of the day. And for Cloud9, now they find themselves one map away here, Andy, from going back to back to back to back for, to sweep the NA Pro Series. Oddborn Streets is where they could get it done. We're going straight into it here as uh, don't even have time to break down what we saw in those in those first few just because C9 is so quick on these game types. How many times have we seen them drop a game one and then just continue to sweep? Right now, they're poised to do that here. Map number four is their opportunity to do so. Sentinels versus C9. Of course, Sentinels must win to stay alive. Sentinels need to match that aggression, but also the element of control is something they've been pretty good at controlling in this particular game type. Oddball has been one that Sentinels have been able to play pretty well so far today, but are they able to play it well enough to beat C9 here and send this to a game five early? It's going to be Renegade who picks up the Rockets, picks up some kills as well. That's going to be three dead here. Lethal, the last player alive! As he's taken down as well, and that's how quick they are to react to that final player. Everybody converging from Cloud9. Now they have the Oddball in their hands. Man, look at the coordination. Look at the teamwork there. They knew exactly what they had to do to get all four players dead. And even though it took them a few players themselves, and they traded out about four to two, they knew exactly how to get those final kills. And Stellar is very happy to trade with those Rockets against Lethal on Beast Terrors because he knew it would lead to this tram hold. Penguin now going to have a flank onto Frosty. The Bulldog, though, just not quite in the right perimeter to do the damage that it needed to do so staying alive here frosty for now stella drops that odd ball off and picks up the bulldog instead to make sure that he can defend it with his life lethal picks up another in the feed as well lethal doing a huge amount of damage here to c9 wow. finally gonna be taken My down God. stella and penguin last alive but stella gets a kill Dude. to slow things down on the push but that was a great push from sentinels stellar is nuts the way he played that he goes outside c which is kind of risky right finally thrust back uses a few uses a few slides picks up another kill but as you say it's answered back by a very good push they get three dead for the moment and now sentinels will put some points on the board as well essentially a tied game off of the opening sentinels will go into the lead but you can see lethal already under the pressure here from penguin and eco has the stalker rifle in his hands frosty will pick up one onto eco which is going to buy him a little bit of time snake bite with a second as well and the oddball in his hand so pj really doing some good work here but there's the push from renegade manages to pick up the kill onto lethal but the rotation already yes. here from snake bite towards pd very nice rotation here from snake bite find safety in the police department 
and we'll now take a look here at back A, but look at the pressure coming in from Neons from the side of C9. C9 pushing. Lethal's going to be there to match it, though, and you can see Snakebite dropped that ball and recognized that the 2v2 fight was something they had to take. The only problem is, having taken the fight, the Bulldog was there in the hands of C9, and now the Oddball is also in their hands, so even though it's 3v3 on the map at the moment, C9 managed to break through and get the Oddball, but were they a little bit overzealous there at getting that in their hands? You got both teams just trying to take their toys and go home. You got you have the side of Sentinels running at the BD like, no, we want it over here. Right away, Eagle's like, no, I'm bringing this thing way back to Tram. We don't want any part of this. So Snakebite actually, based on the spawns, is going to have to actually rotate back to Tram himself. He'll be happy to do so, though, because he has the comfort of some spawning teammates. But pressure, once again, right away from C9. It's almost, it almost reminds me a little bit of Midi Ball, to be honest with you, the way that this game type is developing, right? You, don't want, you yeah. hold it in a base for a certain amount of time. As soon as you see the spawns, you're moving. You're rotating that ball away, and you're... You're trying to collapse onto those spawns from different angles, and the more we see it develop, I think we might see it start to play even more like that. There's a thrust from Snake Bite, but the only thing he thrust it into was the wall, which wasn't enough to throw the reticle off of his opponent. But Sentinels do have somewhat of a considerable lead here. 53 to 22, the score. Plenty of time left for Cloud9, though. As you can see, that oddball will be picked up, or is it just trapped it inside of the bin? It's actually wow. in the bin. In the, it was in the most precise play ball I've ever seen. Wow, they actually tried to throw the ball in the garbage, which is pretty remarkable, which turns out is not a play ball in the game. But I, like you said, I have never seen a so delicately placed oddball. We thought for a second it might have been glitched in the map, but no, it was just so perfectly placed in the garbage bin that uh, will finally be picked up now. And as you said, a lot of points here on the board for Sentinels. Onset, what we need to see from Sentinels is they have to play this game type the exact same way they played Strongholds. They need to make sure they are super objective efficient. And when they have a chance to put points on the board, they do exactly that. They cannot give Cloud9 a single opportunity to bounce back in this game. Look at this play from Stellar. I thought he was dead to rights in that situation. The Brute Nades didn't do the damage that I think the Sentinels player thought they were going to do. And then he managed to back out and with the AR coming out, maybe the guy just got to clean up this kill. He's going to be weak, right? He, he hits every single shot that he needs to. But even though Stella makes that play, at the wow. moment, it's Sentinels who have a foothold in this game. And not only that, they are out slaying Cloud9 at the moment. They've got the Rockets in their hands. Snakebite's got them. But more importantly, they've got the Oddball 2, 76 points and rising. And if Snakebite picks up a couple of kills with these Rockets, this could be the round going to send. It really could be two dead still right now. It's 2v2, but Rockets are on the front door. Now only one alive. Whoever challenging on dumpsters here is going to be the one that can finish. Nice job by Snakebite to prioritize those kills perfectly, and they're going to cross the 90-point mark. Lethal just going to be able to chunk that grenade. He's barely got any health. You can see more grenades are coming in as well. Doesn't go for that oddball play, though. As you can see, his teammates might be in a position just to scrape these last few moments. There's the microwave. It comes in from Renegade mid-map as Snakebite will have to trade things out. Where's that oddball, though? Who is closest? Formal last player alive here. C9 have got a hold. Four dead there, but it took a while for C9 to get the ball. And we'll have to see how Sentinels plays this. They just need, as you know, one push. Doesn't even have to be an all four dead. They just need one push to kill the players around the ball and a grab. They're only four seconds away from closing it out. Sometimes you can get a little bit overexcited, though, in these situations, thinking ah, it's only a few seconds, it's only a few yeah. points. And you throw away a few kills. You throw away a little bit of map control, is. but not Snake by Too experienced for that. He's been around for far too long. Round one goes to Sentinels. Very, very strong performance from Sentinels there. Great work from them, great timing on their pushes. They close it out, and right now trying to send us the distance. They're one round away from maybe sending us to a game number five. Now, can Sentinels answer back the opening strategy, excuse me, of Cloud9 a little bit better than they did in that first round? Snake by with a double kill. He's certainly going to make sure that that is the case. There's another one. This time it's in the hands of Renegade. So two double kills for either side. There's Frosty, though, and there's a left cross as he fires a blind rocket, just hoping to connect. If that one hit, that would have been nuts. However, I don't know. more importantly, he's got the rockets in his hand. He's also got the oddball back to his teammates. Three consecutive double kills. I don't know, you know, you and I have been doing this, as we said earlier, a long time. I don't know if the last time I saw three consecutive double kills like that. That was a wild opening, just big swings from each side, back to back to back in those moments. But still, Sentinel scoring our first 15 points on the board. Snakebite got the most relaxed view of the entirety of streets at the moment with the oddball in his hands. There's carnage happening all around the place and he's just sitting there going, yep, you keep going, boys. You keep chilling. You keep... Nice work, everyone. Keep fine. Keep it up. I'll, I'll be back here. in my hands. He could now make it the push, though. There's Snakebite, unfortunately, is looking a little bit more uncomfortable for him, but he did at least get the play ball. Cloud9, though, can they scrape this ball back towards the tower? Formal picking up a kill, though, is going to make this a little bit uncomfortable, but look at those respawns. Coming in over a cafe, that means Eco should have a few seconds here. Yeah, you have to wonder. I mean, you have to wonder. I mean, I don't think Snakebite had much of a choice. He obviously got naded in A. That's why he played the ball, just hoping that someone might have an angle, but unable to get any damage. They get the ball right away, so already points on the board here for the side of C9. They're also going to get three dead again. They're going to continue scoring. Looks 
like maybe a tram rotate based on Penguin's location. Eco bringing this one back to tram, like you say, Andy. Renegade picking up a kill on the feed is going to make things a little bit more comfortable as well. He gets the information the two players are pushing. Can he survive those grenades? Yes, he can. And somehow manages to survive yet another one as well. I swear, when I play Halo Infinite, one grenade that lands about 30 feet away from me will take me down to zero shields. But Eco knows better than I do. Eco with this hold and C9 with this hold are starting to come back into this game. They have a considerable lead and they're looking like they might want to close out this round in some style. Yeah, Eco even go see Balk for a second, which just tells you how much control they had. Very rarely can the ball carrier just poke see Balk and kind of look off of his uh, kingdom and look over his domain to see what's going on because you had three players dead. But finally, two players will fall. Looks like Cloud9 will be forced to maybe it's kind of a clunky one, but it's a play ball in the end. As Stellar, though, does get those rockets. He's got one left. Everything I do these days is clunky. It's <laughs> age, <laughs> age is really starting to become a factor, but Stellar will be taken down. The rocket not connecting. Bulldog in the hands of Frosty, though. See that man's been grinding away with that new shotgun skin as well. Now throws the ball off to his teammate. Eco, though, he's going to catch him off guard here inside of the red room. Look at this positioning, though. Wow. And look at the trust in a teammate to clean that kill up. Frosty doing it all. But that play ball is going to have to come in soon because two members of C9 are going to be behind State by here. He doesn't have the ball in his hands, though. He tried to throw a stalker rifle off instead. Which is a lot harder to do, especially because it's a different set of buttons there. Just tries to play the ball, as you saw bottom middle. But like you say, jumps out with the stalker rifle without the ball. That thing, as we said, it's a bit clunky. It's a bit heavy today and not able to be played. So that ball will stay in red room. Score is 65 to 37 in favor of C9. Stankbite picks up two, though. Renegade going to be taken down as well. So three dead here for Cloud9. Now, Eco, last player alive. What can you do to disrupt this potential rotation coming in for Sentinels? Lethal not quite connecting, but connecting with the battle rifle a little bit more effectively to pick up one. Traded out almost immediately by Penguin. Up or down in Arcade at the moment. And that is a risky place for everybody because, as we know, grenades and death usually wait around. What a strong play from Stellar here. Just staying alive, just dancing around B stairs. And you have to think... They did not have the control that it's they needed around Red Room. My God, just knowing where to be at every single moment. And even though it looked like Eco and Stellar were going to have a hell of a time coming up driveway, somehow they work together. Eco trades out, essentially, and then they go get B. Biller's control forever, and, and Sentinels just was not there to get the ball out of Red Room. Penguins pick the ball up as well, and this is going to be now just 10 points away. One final push here for Sentinels. But look at this flank that's coming in. Eco manages to pick up the kill, though. C9 stay alive. I think it's Lethal who's managed to sneak behind him. Yes, he has. He keeps the game alive here. Cloud9 will pick up the Rockets, though, and Cloud9 will pick up the Oddball. And with Lethal falling to Renegade, that will be the round going to Cloud9. They only need five points. No one in position here from Sentinels to get across the map quick enough. They tie it up at one to one. And we're going to round number three. 16 and 8 from Renegade right now, by the way. You have no doubt that he's a huge factor in that round number two as they win that one handily. And like you say, right now, Cloud9 only one round away from closing out this tournament. It will be their fourth sweep of the NA Pro Series, their fifth consecutive win, or will Sentinel send us to a game number five, one round to decide it? couple of kills fall across the board for both teams again, but it looks like this time it's going to be Sentinels who find themselves with just snake bite alive, and that means Rockets in the hands of Stella tries to predict left. Unfortunately, it was a 50-50. And Snakebite went to the right. Snakebite going to be trying to use that second rocket and bait it out. However, Stella gets the damage needed to take him down. Oddball not being picked up by anyone at the moment. Eco finally going to drop down on the objective and try and bring it back to Tram again. Too dead for a second, and Eco thought about going tram, but Ooh. knew that the B rail angle would be a little bit tough, but he gets challenged once again in ball spawn. So these teams really going to look for a little bit more slaying control before they try to run away with this game. There's a little bit too much on the line here in our round number three. Penguin taken down. Oddball retreats towards tram, though. Lethal down here for Sentinels, but it's a 3v3 elsewhere on the map. Snakebite's managed to sneak in. And he'll be chasing down that Oddball with Renegade getting the kill over by Arcade. You can see the rotation almost immediately coming in, being met by a hail of grenades here. Snakebite, he made the right play. The difference was C9 just knew it was coming. Absolutely, Snakebite using the thrust wisely to stay alive, but eventually he does get collapsed on, and Stellar now going to be here in Red Room around the water cooler, and he's ready to be rotated if he needs. Take a look. He's just seeing exactly where the opponents are coming from. He's able to drop it. Shoot, Jeez. look at the plays like that from Stellar. That is enormous. When your ball carrier is voluntarily rotating and scouting out the opponents and then can drop and just for a player like Snakebite at back PD, that is enormous level plays that's just going to open up the game for your team to continue scoring. That's why I said I think he's been the standout player in the NA Pro Series at the moment. So many times he does it without the power weapon in his hand. He just does every single thing right. 
for Cloud9 and for Sentinels. You need to wake up in this oddball round three because they're down by 43 points at the moment. And with oh that God. beat down coming in from Stella again and the oddball down, maybe he can do something else. Finally, it's taken down. Nice little four kill spree there coming in from Stella. And like you said, the man was doing it all. And because of it, Cloud9 now leads 43 to zero. Just about halfway done with our round number three. Three dead though for Cloud9. Stella first alive. So Snakebite's gonna have rockets and Tram will be in the control now of Sentinels. No. Snakebite taken down to almost no shields though. He is actually no shields. He's barely got any health and Stella, who else but Stella is gonna pop up and take the rockets out of his hands. I think based on Snakebite's movement there, he did not know where the opponents are spawning because very rarely when you see nobody at Tram, do you just fly across bottom mid to go over to ball spawn there, maybe trying to get away with something, but gets caught out there and the rockets will fall. Renegade taken down as well. So good stuff here from Sentinels prioritizing the kills, and that's going to be Eco and Penguin first spawners here. Frosty picks up the kill with that Stalker rifle, and now they have the hold that they want. They're going to close that gap, and by the time the C9 get across the map here, you would imagine we're going to have a tight game. Yeah, you got to watch the first kills. Penguin now spawned 4v4 battle. The first kills really well determined. Renegade goes down first, so Sentinels just about to tie up this game. Here we go, tied at 43. They take the lead, and if they can keep this up, they're going to pick up another one. That's two dead again for C9. Sentinels right now might be able to do it. Frosty dropping the ball. Two dead, four Sentinels. Renegade with those grenades might take him down, stays alive for now, tries to retreat towards his teammates. Most importantly, though, that is a big play ball Good coming ball. in from Frosty. He doesn't get that ball out. There's no chance for Sentinels to get involved in any kind of fights and keep the ball out of Cloud9's hands. Look at that play ball, and you thought maybe for a second Renegade was going to pick up a, a double kill there to the left at the bottom of Neons, but he can't because the pressure comes in from areas like Tires, bottom A, and the ball spawn, and Sentinels gets away with the ball again. That's an enormous play ball that you will not see reflected in the stats. Great and rotation Snakebite. from Sentinels. Snakebite, like you say, a great rotation again, just saying, hey, this is really cool. You guys keep fighting. I'm out of here. I'm moving away yep. from all of this carnage. I'm going to relocate from the city to the suburbs and have a little bit more of a relaxed atmosphere around things as lethal and frosty pick up kills for him now once again the rotation comes in where are the spawns though for sentinels because you know the snake is gonna be looking to find them but it's gonna be penguin he finds him first with the rockets penguin got the boom booms there as we take a look at renegade on all the way very rarely do you see a, a um back smack all the way up on pd bow but renegade is able to get it he will clear out that area knows that someone is around the corner and somehow lethal will get taken down looks like maybe with his own splash damage so just like that 63 to 43 it's a 20 point game in favor of sentinels Favorite Sentinels is a great comeback they've managed to make in this. Remember, they were down by around 40 points or so in this game. They managed to turn things on their head. Stella, though, Big is going to go up against State Bite. State Bite does damage onto Eco as well. Two root grenades are going to slow things down, but there's a frag grenade coming in from Formal. Lethal manages to pick the ball up. A break coming in almost immediately here for Sentinels. And that's big for the Mandy. If you fail on that push, then all of a sudden C9 get into that position where one more hold, they get pretty close to winning the game. So Sentinels had to break, and they had to break quickly, and they did exactly that. Two were dead again, but right now, two dead for the side of Sentinels. Oh, no! it's a big kill from Lethal. Very, very big kill. Going to reset things just a bit. There's two dead for each side right now, 80 to 52. Lethal, that is vital. They need to shut down Stellar as quickly as possible, though. Eco, excuse me, is going to be the player who needs to be shut down. I saw the respawn coming in from Stella. Renegade now moving in as well, and he's going to try and do some removal work at the same time. Stella picks up a kill in the feed. As Renegade tries to just scrap that ball away, but there's a player behind him. Renegade manages to survive and get back into Tram, though. Wow, incredible. Oh, my God. Incredible work from Renegade to know that he could drop front C. He jumps back up C stairs, sees someone, and knows that he had the cover there. Still, though, a battle for back C. Whoever's able to control Tram right now is going to get the next time on the hit ball. 2v2 on the map. Eco, though, will turn it in the favor of C9. Three players down for Sentinels. Oddball in the hands of Penguin. And with those plays and with those kills, we're going to see ourselves going into a tied game. Renegade with a kill on the feed as well. Rockets coming up. Sentinels need these to stay alive. Yeah, they really do. Let's take a look. Those rocket grab, that might be the decider of this game. They're still up. Looks like they were just grabbed. Might have been by Eco. Yes, Eco grabs them as well with three dead for Sentinels. This should be the end. Formal picks up one. Eco needs to play bodyguard. 90 and rising. Picks up the kill onto Formal. Picks up a kill onto Lethal. And with that, Cloud9 go back to back to back to back. Four in a row for Cloud9. Unbeaten since the start of the year, heading towards Anaheim. And proving they're the best in the game.
your undisputed champs, not only for the month of January, but now for the past five total tournaments. It's Cloud9, they're on top of the Halo world and they are showing no signs of slowing as we get ready for Anaheim in just a few weeks. These guys are on top of the world. I think the most important thing to highlight here is, yeah, Cloud9, amazing. Take nothing away, you deserve everything as far as the plaudits are concerned, but what an event Anaheim is going to be, everybody. Yes. We'll take a look at the stats from those last game. Formal dropping 41, Renegade Jeez. dropping 39. And I just want to quickly highlight as well, what a performance and, and what an effort Formal has actually put in for this Sentinels roster over yeah. the last couple of months. Uh, very difficult shoes to step into, but he's done an amazing job. Yeah, I got to give a huge shout out to, to Formal, of course, a very long time Halo player. Many of you might know him from Call of Duty, but the man, is a Halo player with Halo roots, and he showed up. Look at the 10K damage dealt for Formal. He's in a category of his own. Can't wait to see what happens with Formal, with his future in Halo Infinite, but right now, all the credit is due to Cloud9. In the end, they close it out. They lose game one, then they sweep with the score of three to zero. But we gotta take a look at the highlights from that last game. And it wasn't easy, Andy. That's one thing we have to say. Every single team they played today put up one hell of a fight. You look back on the Phase series, you look back on this series, and it wasn't just a case of Cloud9 walking their way through without dropping a map this week. It was anything but that. They had to work as hard as possible. As we see the final moments here of round number two where they tied it up. Sentinels with a good performance in that first round, managing to take that home. But that play from Stella is just, that is the definition of perfect Halo. Yeah. A rotation, recognition of a player coming off spawn, dropping the objective, and then just forward him. I mean, that is crazy. That that There are good objective players, and then there's players that are commanding a map like that that can drop and shoot and hit the perfect four, like you said, and just continue to scoring. Amazing stuff here from C9 throughout the entire day, but you bring up a great point. We saw C9 have their stiffest competition today, and despite the fact that you see a lot of blue on this board, amazing tight matches, not just with C9, but if you look at today's bracket, a lot more two ones, a lot more three ones, three twos. Very different, very little. You're seeing the gap close a lot in Halo Infinite, and it sets us up in a pretty exciting way heading into Anaheim without a doubt. It certainly does. And we're going to bring everybody back in because it has been an amazing tournament today. I think everyone's had a smile on their face for every single match that we've had, Lottie. And uh, C9, the, the end of the day, they are the ones who are unbeaten at the moment in the NA Pro Series. They are indeed. And I think, honestly, just being challenged by a lot of our teams here just shows how resilient this squad are. And the fact that they can continue to get themselves out of uncomfortable situations in a series. And they do have the ice to, to clutch up here, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, I've got to say, it's a highly contested series is exactly what we want to see. Clutch, you know, looking at C9 right now, I know they've had a bit more of a bumpier week than we're used to. You know, usually they're pretty damn flawless in their series and their map counts. What do you think that comes down to right now? I, I know that obviously they're not always going to be perfect, but you know, what do you think the shaky legs were for them in, in some of these series? I mean, it's like, it's pretty ironic that we like are, are trying to point out the flaws no. and the struggles <laughs> of a team that's four peated. But yep. I mean, I, I guess it's the only thing we can really do with the conversation, right? Cloud9 did show that potentially maybe in the future we can see an upset. But today, I mean, it was just another representation of the amount of ice that this team has. And it's, it's like, I, at first when Renegade said, I have the iciest teammates of all time, it was kind of a joke, and I was like, that's an odd thing to say about your teammates. I get you guys are clutch, but like, that's that's a weird perspective to have. But I mean, it has come true so often as watching this Cloud9 have the success in this four feet that they have throughout our pro series. And every bit of it was needed today, especially in that series with FaZe, even in the series against Sentinels. I mean, it felt like every single time Cloud9 was getting pushed to their limits, but every single time they are able to thrive in those situations. Yeah, they, they do indeed thrive. And, and talking about thriving, I just got to say, Bizarre CTF, that is some of the most flawless gameplay on Halo Infinite I have ever seen. And they've done it quite a few times now. 5-0 and back-to-back. Oh, -back. Absolutely stunning across that map. You know, Brav, when it comes to Bizarre CTF, it's a really hard CTF map to play. Yeah. And they play it so damn well. They are so strong. They're pretty much untouchable. And i got to say, I just love the flawless flag runs coming out of this, this roster. Talk to me about the way that they handle Bizarre and why, you know, other teams really can't compete there. Yeah, what I love about C9 that we just saw is they play 
full send to Bizarre CTF. They get the Mangler, they get the Overshield, they get the Grapple, and they fly right into your base. And guess what? When they get the kill in bar, they're not done there. They don't reset, they don't wait. What's going on in tree? No, that player who gets the kill in bar goes straight across the bridge. He takes a look at the flag. He just starts shooting and they play it in such a fun way. It's not even like it's, it's boring because they're putting on such a clinic. They literally are grappling. You saw it. Mark and I were just like hysterically laughing because what we're seeing, just insane grapple plays. But that's what it takes to fly into your opponent's base, put on a show, get a double kill, start the flag run. And meanwhile, everyone's also destroying over on Rocket side. We don't even see that because it's happening off screen and the flies get run home. So I just love the way that they play that game type and they play it in a really fun and exciting way where they just full send and it, and it pays off for them. I gotta say, the spider men moment for me yeah. was one of my highlights it's throughout true. the entirety of this process. I was lost for words, so my yeah, only you job is to so have good. words. I, I, that's so, all I yeah. had a grapple, yeah. It was, it was so, so good. Uh, on set, let's just quickly talk about one guy that I think you come off the back of this series and you can't help but, but have him at the forefront of your mind. That's Stella for me. Stella, I think, in previous iterations of Halo, has kind of obviously been there and been a, a dominant force, but I think right now he is forcing you to watch his POV. The stuff that he's managing to do across these series, on these maps, he's a huge game changer for Cloud9. And that says a lot, because Cloud9 is just damn good. So, you know, having Stella with the shock rifle on Slayer, just some of the stuff that this guy is capable of doing is insane. You know, I, I just wanna, I just wanna basically, you know, hype him up a little bit. On set, what do you make of him? He's the most well-rounded player in in Halo. He's the perfect Halo player. He's the perfect yeah. teammate. He is what you want on your team. You don't miss shots. He makes the right decisions. He's not afraid to be objectively efficient. He's not afraid to throw away his life if it means it's a bigger play for the rest of the team. Like, he's everything you want from a player. And I think that one yeah. small play that we were talking about, Andy, you and I were so impressed with, he rotates an odd ball away from an on-rushing team, right? He picks up a kill along the way and then he drops the odd ball and he just falls someone. Like, he, yeah. he makes an individual play to then keep his team in it. If he doesn't make, like, all of those things just add up. And he's a very quiet and unassuming guy, right, Stella? But his gameplay is speaking so loud at the moment that you can't help but talk about him. It's so exciting to watch this young man play. It is indeed. Yeah, he's very loud when it comes to his gameplay, for sure. Well, I'll tell you what, gents, that's going to do it for our fourth Pro Series. It's been wow. absolutely amazing. What a way to send yeah. us off in the Pro Series. It's been ridiculous. But of course, Anaheim we soon. do have eight other teams that need to qualify for Anaheim as well. It is happening this weekend. This is your chance right now, folks at home, to register. Head over to that link, get yourself in, get the team in. You could be one of those eight heading over to California as well. And speaking of, we do have Anaheim coming up. Feb 11th It's going to be lit. We have another LAN. It's going to be live. We're all going to be there. I am so damn excited for this. So uh, I hope you guys are too. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been absolutely ridiculous. Pro Series week number four is done and dusted, but we do have LAN coming up. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you guys in Anaheim.